while you're racking that up, I just got to bring something embarrassing up and uh, just be done with it. So I get a FedEx at my house yesterday. It's from uh, Scott Einziger from E. Yeah. We have a whole crew that works in the back room and has, and we have robot cameras in here so that our television show can be taped daily. We're so lazy that we won't go out and do a separate, you know, television show. So we just tape the radio show, and that way we have a television presence without doing any work. So the guy who, uh, one of the guys who puts it all together is this guy Scott Einziger, who's a real nice guy, real talented guy, and I really like him a lot. I and you would say he's the main guy. Yeah, he, I think he's the producer of the show. Yeah. Not but isn't Robin... Not, not the executive Isn't producer. Robin Radzinski also a uh, producer? I think she's a producer. She might even be associate producer. I know John Ryber's the executive producer. I yeah. Think. Well, John has that, but he doesn't do anything. And then Scott's the producer. Right. Scott's the one who's here every day. John just calls me from California every once in a while and goes, I gotta tell you, you got fabulous ratings last week. <laughs> That's the executive producer job? Yeah. He sends me notes. Yeah, he's like no nice notes and stuff, yeah. you know, about what a great job I'm doing. His handwriting's way too neat. <laughs> he's one of those E men. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's totally heterosexual. I know he, he was even married, had kids and everything. He's got girlfriends. But he is so effeminate. <laughs> they worked him. They worked him over when he got there. Yeah. No doubt. Any guy oh, who you works. Think he was more manly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He was a professional wrestler before he got a hold of him. <laughs> Better be. Totally straight guy, but so effeminate. When so you sensitive. every guy they hire over at E, they turn into a woman. <laughs> Women think that's evolved. Yeah, I mean, even Scott Einziger, who I really love dearly. He's more like a girl than my wife. He's got to be a man because he's so hairy. I know there's a guy there. Yeah, but he acts like a girl. <laughs> give away. He's like, hi, bro. <laughs> That's how he calls me on the phone. He goes, hi, bro. I'm like, hey, dude, don't call me bro, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to talk like a guy. Hey, bro, I'm thinking of running the uh, show tonight with Richard Lewis. What do you think? <laughs> well, bro, and I love Scott. I, I think Scott's a great guy. He's a great guy. And Scott makes my life easy because he's super competent. In fact, all those E people are super competent. I wish my radio crew was like, I wish, Gary, you were as competent as I, Scott Einziger. I learn from him every day. Good. Keep studying him. Guy knows how to do his job. I predict big things for him and everything. He picks up on things quickly. Yeah. He's a smart guy. So I get a FedEx at my house yesterday. Yeah. Why I had to come to my house, I don't know. Why I had to be a FedEx. Uh, inviting me to his wedding. Oh. Did you get one? No. It's coming. Oh. Is it really? Yeah. Do you know I, that for a fact? I know everybody. Do you know? It is out. Originally, I thought it was just. I wasn't sure if we'd be invited. Then I thought it might. I was be hoping just, I would. Just be. like the, what I call like you know the core of us, like you know me, you, Freddie, Jackie, Billy, and John. Yeah. But then I found out that Scott had a um, conversation with his future father-in-law, who's putting on this wedding, and said, "Hey, it's a party. Invite everybody." So I think I I believe. No, like, it's a party. Let's get some celebrities there. <laughs> I think that like even like Ralph is invited, and I think Ganji and Gorilla might be invited. I'm not sure. Really. Oh, now I'm really not going. <laughs> so anyway, so I get this invite, and it comes to the house, and it's all wrapped. And look, it's beautiful. Mr. Oh, yes, and Mrs. Those, uh, invitations. Mr. and Mrs. Stern, and, it, and the envelope is, is silken, woven into the envelope. Oh, look at that. Satin. You yeah. know, it's going right in the garbage. Wow. Wow. And return envelope with stamp and a black tie affair at a country club. Ooh. It's a black tie. Yeah, you got to wear a tuxedo. Yeah, well, I ain't wearing nothing. Because I ain't going. <laughs> so, I, anyway. You'll be in your undershirt in bed. Yeah, I'll be home. Of God. <laughs> and in 1995, at 8.45 in the evening. By the way, I, f I found out that you, you won't see dinner till close to midnight. Yeah, well, it's I, one of those nighttime weddings? I will see dinner exactly at dinner time, 5 o'clock. <laughs> I hear the wedding's going to be a six-camera shoot. <laughs> you know what's going to happen. You're not going to want to go. And no, it's here's the, get no, here, no, here's the point. Let, let me let me take care of all embarrassment right now because I already talked to Fred. Fred got his invite, and Fred's not going. Well, Fred's really funny because Fred came in here and Fred had a great excuse. He thought, <laughs> yeah, thought. it was a totally lame excuse. He goes, well, you know, too bad, you know, we're going to be on vacation. Yeah, I go, no, I like that's that's ne that's two months from now. Right. So that's Fred goes, oh, well, I can't go anywhere. <laughs> 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 I was that was part because I love Scott. I really think he's a great guy. I think Scott's a great. guy. Let me say something, Scott, because I want to okay. get this all out of, out of my system. And I want to talk, and I don't want to be interrupted. Okay. <clears throat> I really like you a lot. I consider you a friend and co-worker. All right? I mean, you're. I see you every day. We right. work every day. We talk to each other on the phone. We see each other. There's nobody who is more dedicated to the television show than you. You're always thinking. You're always putting your energy into it. And you make. And he's one of the guys who makes the show good. Because, you know, like, 
like we're putting together a video now for Scott the engineer mm -hmm. to you know you know that stupid song of his. <laughs> <laughs> and like Scott's out there shooting video and all kinds of things, doing it right. I never have to worry about Scott. And you're a real good guy and everything. I like it, but I don't want to go to your wedding. I don't, want any, cool. I don't want to be there stared at by your friends, by your father, your mother, your... Uh, who is this? Uh, by uh, Deborah Lynn's parents. I guess that's your fiancé. Yeah, Steele and Harry. Yeah, I don't want to be... Uh, yeah, I don't want Steele. Steel. and Harry? Oh, boy. I don't care about Mr. and Mrs. Harry Silverman. <laughs> Steele and Harry Silverman. I don't care if they see me. I don't want them to see me. I don't want my wife yelling at me before I have to go to your wedding. I don't want to sit there. I don't want to wait for dinner till midnight. Life's too short. How could I not invite you, though? Yeah. I'm glad you invited me, but I hope you realize I don't want to go. I'll get you a gift. That's cool. How much is appropriate to gift him? Name, okay, your, uh, name your price. A, gen a decent, generous gift for two people at a wedding these days. I believe a, a generous gift is around $200. That would be pretty generous. No, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you three. Okay. <laughs> Just to get rid of you. <laughs> I'll donate 300 to your your impending nuptials. Impending nuptials. What are you high? Getting married, man? You're a young guy. You're good looking. You <laughs> you're gonna you. get laid a lot off TV, man. Just walking around with that camera. What are you doing, you schmuck? Women well, care. Still will, I'm glad I'm Don't you realize at some point your wife's not going to look like the way she looks now? And at some point, all it's going to be is her nagging personality. Mm -hmm. You're crazy. Get out of it. <laughs> Welcome to the club, Becca. <laughs> yeah. But don't you want to be like Baba Booey and have children? There you go. <laughs> Eventually, he thinks he does. <laughs> oh, I'll change. Hey, you'll, so you'll have children. <laughs> Proving he's not a homo. Is that what you're trying to do? Prove you're not a homo? No. Don't marry her if you're a homo. Oh, Just go dating guy. Geez. I'm glad I'm getting married. I'm real glad. Really? Yeah, sure. yeah I hear you're oh. pussy whip, man. She's like uh, the robot of Lost in Space. I'm glad I'm getting married. He's got a, he's got his fiance. Uh -huh. His program. First of all, when when Scott uh, has to make a big job decision or something, you have to go through his girlfriend. Ooh. That's not That's, true. Oh, come on. Bull. That's what I heard. That's what Ryber told me. Don't even bother oh, to talk no. to Scott. Talk to yeah. her. Remember when Scott left to take that bad wrestling job? Right. And I said, hey, why don't you guys get Scott back? You know, I said, within reason. I mean, try and get the guy back. Yeah. And I really went to bat for him. And Ryber was like, oh, God, I got to call her his girlfriend. Oh, no. no. no, no, no I go, no. what do you mean? They go, yeah, she's the one who controls everything. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly don't what happened. Don't spare me, please. <laughs> the, the night that John called me back. I don't know. This is the word I got. Which was like 72 hours after I left. Yeah. I was uh, working real late at WWF. I don't edit every night. <laughs> what a job you took. Uh, he, left, he left our show to go work for the WWF. <laughs> like, 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 after editing Worldwide Wrestling Federation tapes? There'd be a demand for him. Yeah, like, like what would you go on to? <laughs> a different wrestling federation? Hi, it's Letterman Show. We've seen your tapes and we need you. Yeah, we need you to edit wrestling tapes. <laughs> So so he called. I wasn't home. So Debbie answered the phone, and so it was a conversation. No, I've heard. I've any... heard that you got it, no. like, and you check in with her and everything. Doesn't she? She we has a, nice... a beeper, right? She has a beeper, and I found out what it was for. It's so his girlfriend can call him at yeah. any time. <laughs> that's not true. Well, oh, I that's true. Just for her to call. Uh, that's what I heard. I heard she's beeping every. As soon as you get off of here, she's oh. going to start beeping you. <laughs> Follow. Me. I know that she evaluates his appearances on the show. Yeah. Everything's been. Is she real no good looking? <laughs> yeah. Is she? Yeah. She's got a good body. Very cute. Yeah. Yeah. Because right, I came to a party at my house once. Who's cuter, him or her? <laughs> um, it's they know it's Ty. They're both real. I mean, she oh, got a really good body. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I figured yeah, she, she must be something special. Really I'm sorry. What? She's, she's really thin. She's yeah. Got a great body. And you know, a lot of the women at K Rock think Scott's real hot. Yeah, Scott's a good looking guy. Thank you. We try getting her on the air, but she refuses to come on. Oh, she does. <laughs> no, well, it's her problem. It's too good for us. No kidding, man. You're really going through with it. You're stupid. I'm well, telling you, man. The invitations are printed now. He's in. When's the last time you had sex with a different woman? Like, how long have you been going with her? Uh, I don't get you guys. Like, a couple of years. Like, you haven't gotten laid from a different girl in, like, a couple of years? Yeah. And she's so great in bed? Yeah. And she does it all because, man, that's it. That's all you get in the rest of your life. I know. And she moves around yeah. and everything. <laughs> Gets up on all fours, the whole deal, huh? <laughs> Well, your wife doesn't move around. Mine doesn't. My wife hasn't moved it during sex in a long time. Howard was taking what he could get. Get my wife to put her knee above her head was a major accomplishment. I can't believe a prerequisite for you is she moves around during sex. See what, what I, I don't do? get when she I think she's trying to get away. Yeah. 
I have you to sedate him. Raymond, did you ever tell Gary you were getting jealous of him? What do you mean? He came in and one day told you about his uh, Valentine's Day celebration with his wife. Yeah. Where she cooked him this romantic meal. So Baba of course I told home, him. And there's a beautiful meal and candlelight. Yeah, I don't get that. It's actually, I used to get that when I first got married. But you see, you see, I know why I got married. <laughs> I had no hope in life. <laughs> My wife is way too good looking now, for I've, a guy who looks like me. I've heard you say that no, you're, let me that say he's your soulmate. No, that's all a bunch of... I say that in front of her. That's the Tom Hanks speech. Yeah, please. Oh, let me tell you something. I could be soulmate. If Robin spread her legs We're right now, soulmate. she's my soulmate. We're soulmates and I don't spread I could have legs. a soulmate right now with Sally Kirkland naked in a hotel room. Okay? Oh, you're terrible. Whole mate was what I said. <laughs> all right, listen to me. What happened in my case, and I, this is why I don't understand you guys, and I'm being serious. The thing that I don't... What happened to me was I was 19 years old, and I really had a hard time getting laid. And Allison came to my life, and Allison's really cute. I mean, she looks great, you know, and, and I'm talking when she's 19 now, all right? I'm not talking about the woman you know now. I'm saying she looks great now for, you know, but she's 41. How do you, know, you know her age and not your own? She's had her day in the sun. <laughs> so, you know, she's, she's getting older. <laughs> she's over the hump, is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, I'm saying, she, listen, she, she, she's no spring chicken. Oh, Howard, you're not I saying, married a 19-year-old. You're not saying she's hit any wall. <laughs> no, not her. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm lucky. I'm one of the lucky ones. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, right. So listen, when I was 19, I could never get laid. Never. I mean, if it happened, it would happen like on a fluke, like a, a freaky chick. When I say a freaky chick, like a weird chick. Not necessarily ugly. You don't ugly. have to explain. We've met them. Yeah. Like always freaky. Always, always LSD or alcohol involved. Right. Or, or lewds. <laughs> and always like a drug thing. And, and then all of a sudden, like, they were with me one night, and then they came to their senses, and they didn't want to see me yeah, anymore. Yeah, as soon as they sobered up. <laughs> and the ones that wanted to see me anymore, you wouldn't want to see. <laughs> I had one follow me around. I swear to God, like a, like a dog. I mean, like, like a dog face. Was this in college? Yeah. It didn't matter. High school, college. In high school, I never got laid. I had one girlfriend, and I had to go drive to the Bronx to get laid. And then when I got to the Bronx, she didn't want to have sex with me. Why just go to the Bronx? Because that's where she lived. He couldn't find a girl in his own neighborhood. Yeah. And when he was in college, he was driving all the way down to Princeton. Yeah. Yeah. Because one girl was willing to have sex with me. Had to go out of state. Yeah. And then she dumped me because I had a small penis. I mean, I've, I've suffered some really bad humiliations, and then I meet Allison, who's really, you know, pretty, and she sleeps with me every night. And she's really nice. She doesn't hassle me. You know, she seems really nice. And I was like, man, please marry me. I was ready to marry her a week after I met her. I said, I want to grow old with you. I was, re I was already like a leech. I'm surprised she didn't dump me. But she like really loved me. But you married her because you, could, you felt you could lock it in for the rest of your life? Right. I wasn't like, giving that up. It was like a good mortgage. It wasn't even yeah. like locking it in. It was gratitude. Yeah, I mean, and also... I was so grateful that he, this woman would have him. And now I didn't have to go to any more parties and try and stand there and pick up girls while every guy got laid. I used to go to parties where every guy I knew got laid and I'd still be sitting there. We go to ugly girl parties, ADA <laughs> parties. And it's, all, it's filled with just ugly Jewish girls. Are you saying that when all the rejects, all the other rejects were taken, you were still standing on the yeah, wall? Yeah, well, I would go to parties. My friends would say, hey, we're going to this ADA party. I go, what's that? He goes, it's just like a real, it's just ugly Jewish girls <laughs> who are dying to have boyfriends. And, and we can go in there. They'll and we'll, take anybody. We'll charm their pants off. I go, really? So, you know, I get all dolled up. I go over to the party with my friends. They all go there, and, and like I walk in, and there's a room full of pigs. And I sit down, and one by one, each one of them's going off, and we're all laughing and goofing on the other guy. Goes, Look at the pig he's with. And meanwhile, I'm sitting there, and then by the end of the night, I'm on the couch, and, I, and there's not one pig even talking You're to me. You're pigless. I'm, yeah, I'm the biggest pig in the room. There's still girls without dates. Yeah, they're goofing. Yeah, and they're goofing on, not even talking to me. <laughs> so you know what that felt like? So, so like Allison rescued me from a life of having to go to parties. And, and being rejected. goofed on and rejected. Yeah. And now I go to a party with Allison and be like, hey, F you. <laughs> and Allison wasn't even interested in other guys. Wouldn't even look at other guys. She was like totally in love with you. Totally into me. From day one. So how could I not get married? And who would have predicted I'd even be big on radio? I mean, I, I was awful. I, I, as a disc jockey, I was one of the worst disc jockeys ever. <laughs> so had I had no voice. I had no delivery. I tried to introduce records. I couldn't even get through a sentence. So had you been 30 years old, say it's 10 years later, and you meet Allison and you care about her a lot, but you're dating a lot of different women, you wouldn't have seen love in her? I might have, I might have really dated her for like a couple of weeks, but no more than a couple of weeks. I would have been on if, if I had the power over women that I have now, I wouldn't get married. 
And you guys, in a sense, Baba Booey, as my producer, was getting well, laid a lot. The one thing you can say about Gary is he did sow his wild oats. Yeah, okay. I guess, but... I know, guess he got tired of it. I don't buy that concept. Really? I, you know, I think the day you stop sowing your wild oats is the day you miss it. <laughs> <laughs> and Einziger carries around a camera, and, you know, he's always ordering people. He's sort of in show business, and he's handsome. It's all the opportunity you're going to miss. You're so damn pussy-whipped. What are you afraid for a minute? You want to have a, you, I mean, you got to be with her. at 19. I'm t almost 29 years old. Big deal. Wait till you're 50. <laughs> See, like Frank Gifford's age. Then go get married. Plus, you're going to be doing good in TV and stuff. I mean, you're pretty talented. Don't you believe in yourself? Yeah, no, I do. So now it's going to cost you a fortune. You're going to get a good job. You're going to have to get a divorce. <laughs> You have that stupid beeper going off. You're in the middle of getting laid at some hotel. <laughs> You'd be full of guilt. <laughs> what kind of life is that? Stupid. I'm telling you, man, you're making a big mistake. No, I'm not. Think of all the romance that you could have, man. Like the first time you meet a girl and she slides her hand down your pants. <laughs> man, you're never going to have that again. I, I haven't had that in 20 years. I want a new girl to hire. I just want to hire a girl to slide her hand down my pants. Now, when you go home tonight, what are you going to say? To who? The woman you live with. I love you. <laughs> and I'm getting married was the smartest thing I ever did. Just kidding on the air? Right. Just kidding. Oh, you. I love my wife. There is no better woman on the planet. Most guys never would have even encountered this kind of temptation that I get. I'd still be the guy nobody would look at. I have a fluke situation. But so do you, dude. You're in TV. <laughs> and you're a nice looking guy. I, if I was as good looking as you, I'd never get married. What? He's trying so hard. He's not going to back out. I'm now. just trying to save him, man. If He's someone had done this for me. back out I, now, I, and they tried to do it for you. They did. Every one of Allison's <laughs> uncles came over to me and said, you are an a-hole. You have oh, no well, idea what you're doing. Our family? Yep. <laughs> yeah, her uncles came over and go, what are you doing, dude? You could you could go out. You could date. And I was like, I don't want to date. I'm in love. I could care less what you guys think. Every <laughs> guy tried to warn me. that feels right now. I, I appreciate You're a fight. douche. How long ago did you meet her? I've known her for ten years. Really? We knew, yeah. We so you haven't gotten together. laid in ten years from someone? No, different? no, no. We were we were friends first. I, you got a picture of her? I got to see what it is that you're so worked up over. Uh, no. You got a picture? <laughs> I'll bring her by. I'll bring her by. She better be a penthouse pet. Oh man, dude. So what? And why are you getting? You know what I hate to? What? what? You should know better. First of all, why are you making people go out and buy a tuxedo for your stupid wedding? What? You're so important. If You're a not, stupid producer on a d and bad channel. It, e. That was not my decision. Do you think Scott had anything to do with that? Wait, who decided that? Your wife? What's her problem? Oh, she oh, thinks she's royalty. They're making they're making a really nice wedding. You know, if I had it my way. Oh, they're paying for it and everything yeah, like traditional. Of, so, I mean, they're doing a nice thing. And why do you have to eat at midnight? Well, you don't. Have I hate that. Dinner. No, I have a wedding. cousin who did that. I wanted to take her and her new husband and throw them right first, through a window. I go to first of all. You know how rude it is to do this. Let me let me explain something to you about weddings. And I hope everyone listens to me because I know everything. Not everybody has your schedule, home. No, some but, people are out for a no. good time. Let me tell you something, <laughs> I, and I'll tell you something because you don't think other people. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I read your book. <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> I'll get married at midnight. <laughs> So here's the thing. <laughs> when a guy and a, and a woman get married, and a lot of their young friends say, Ooh, wouldn't it be romantic to have a midnight dinner? And it, you can understand something. The majority of the people who come into your affair are older folks. Do you have grandparents? Yep. Does she have grandparents? Uh, no, they're not alive. Oh, good. <laughs> you already killed them all. Because they saw you. <laughs> <laughs> and. First, I have to pay three hundred dollars to rent a tuxedo. Yeah. So I can go to just watch much. Scott get married and eat at midnight. <laughs> Auschwitz was better. <laughs> and I'm going to sit there and watch the nuptials of of King Scott Einziger. Right. And I would then say these are what? Broadway productions. These people, this is at one time. They're starring with roles. Yeah, my cousin did this. She gets she gets married and she's going to have the dinner at midnight. My my aunt, who is her grandmother, uh -huh. almost passed out from exhaustion. <laughs> My parents are old. Most of the people older were like, oh, my God, we just want to eat. We want to go home. We're tired. Mm -hmm. And people get hostile. Sure. They're sitting there hostile. But there's food before And my that. cousin comes out, her and her husband, and they're in big wicker king and queen's chairs. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to have a big no, wicker? No, I don't want that. Are you going to sit at your own what? table? He has no say. What do you mean? You I don't imagine I'd be sitting. Tell me how it's going to go down. What time is the wedding? The wedding starts at 845. I think when you get there, they serve you some snacks. Before the wedding? Yes. Like so. what kind of snack? Canapé? 
Like a rug, like <laughs> canopy. <laughs> no, like ruggler. It's a canopy. Like ruggler. No, come on. What are they going to serve? Think, Those are called hors d'oeuvres, Alex. Like little snacks. What are you? Are you a Jew? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to serve a ruggler? Yeah. What? He's in a blanket. And your wife's a Jew? Yeah. Small boy. Then there's the, the service. Be some party in that bed. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a service. I think it starts at 915. Should always like, marry a guinea or a speck. Oh, uh, why, why? Because they go out of their way. Right, Robin? No, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> Spanish person will take her tongue and put it where you wouldn't was, believe. I thought that was Filipino. And an Italian girl knows how to move oh, and swallow. Wasn't that a Filipino, though, with the tongue? <laughs> Uh, Philippines, or oh, Filipinos will do anything. <laughs> Give their father 12 bucks. <laughs> Come on. They'll do all that, then they'll, clean, then they'll clean the house when they're done. Yeah, right. Oh, please. I would marry a Spanish girl or an Italian girl. Oh, boy. They love it. Forwards, backwards, from well, behind. Well, listen to you again. You didn't wait for your uh, Spanish girl or Italian girl. Why should he? No. He wants to be as miserable as you. Needs a Jewess. <laughs> So, so what's going to happen? You're going to go to the wedding, and we're going to wait till 8:45. We're going to eat canapé, and then Ooh. you're going to. The ceremony's probably 20 minutes to a half hour. All right. So now and we're looking at 9:15. Well, I think we're looking at a 10 o'clock finish of the service. Do we all have so wait, because the rabbi will see me in the audience and start droning on. That happens too, by the way. Auditioning. These rabbis love to audition for me. They see me. They all of a sudden they perk. They perk up. Yeah. Ooh, I've got to do my best. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to give a big long speech about how uh, how Usually we should be nice I, to people in the world. I cut this short, but yeah. now I'm going to make some remarks. Yeah. Now I'm going to comment, and it'll be directed at that big gork with the long hair. Seen a rabbi look at you and give oh, you a please. And he's changing it, it as he's going. Rabbis, on. they love to talk. They're like lawyers. I get the speech from Exodus. <laughs> we have a responsibility not to make fun of Israel on the radio. There is enough bad in the world. Right. <laughs> there is evil in the world. Jews are persecuted. If you want to make fun of Schwarzers, go ahead. But Jews are persecuted. All right. So anyway. So then, okay, we're going to have a big wedding ceremony. So no. And is your wife going to have a big formal gown? Is she a princess? Is she marrying her prince? Marrying Prince Scott Einziger. Prince Scott? I'll be Mrs. Scott Einziger. <laughs> <laughs> of course I have to wear full veil. <laughs> Rule over Scott's fiefdom. What is it, Stuttering John? Well, you know, the worst part about it is black tie event, you know that? You're going? Yeah. Fred, you're not going, right? You've well, already recluded the coin. I will send a gift. But you know, I'm going. Thank you, thank you. You are, I'm Definitely. not. But you know, like, so you have to wear a tux, all the interns go get tuxes. Yeah, I mean, who's going to go do that? <laughs> and I'm not going. Scott, yeah. I swear I love you. I love yeah, your wife. I love you. Man. I think you're a great guy. I want to work with you a long time. I just don't want to go to your that's wedding. Cool. I, I understand. I don't want to sit around and let people stare at me. Cool. So, well, you get married. Well, that's not very nice. Jackie, just, Jackie just, no, who no. pays for the taxes? <laughs> so, yeah, I assume you're going, Robin, if you get an invite. Oh, I'm not. I don't care about people, but you say. Are you going? Are you going? I don't even have an invitation. I'll you're tell you invited. what it is. You're invited. <laughs> you can have mine. And I'm not going to see an invitation. <laughs> why mine had to be FedEx? I don't know why I couldn't just come here to the station. Sure. Billy's actually invited, too. <laughs> why? Because I like Billy. <laughs> yeah, but something's unclear about the party afterwards. Billy will go. No, I mean, we got an invite to your wedding, and it says something about, you know, going to the temple where you're having it done. Well, the reception's at the temple. Oh, it's, oh so where's the, where's, the, where's the wedding? At, at the, the temple. temple. Oh, it's all, all happening at the temple. Yeah. All in one place. Yeah, yeah. if I'm stop place. Hey, Billy, you're short enough. You could stand on the cake. You could be a human <laughs> groom. <laughs> this land is mine. <laughs> Why would you want all of us at your wedding so you'd be embarrassed while we sit there and goof on you? Yeah, you know you've yeah, never I, I, hear the I, I, I can tell you one thing. Maybe it's not such a good idea having them all there. Yeah. Exactly. We goofed on Baba oh, Booey. Oh, man, was his wedding great? <laughs> we had a tape of, you know that Baba Booey, Baba Booey? Yeah. In the middle of the ceremony, we just hit the tape and went, Baba Booey, Baba Booey. And then, during the ceremony? Yeah. And then Scott Salem sang Hands Up. That was pretty rough. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Oh, boy. But remember, all the while, Gary thought we were going to really disrupt his wedding, so he was nervous. You didn't invite Scott the engineer, did you? Yeah. You did? Oh. <laughs> now, I know he's got a tuxedo for all his gigs. Yeah. He looks great in it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he really so then, adds something guys, to a party. I, I, you know, I'm here every day. I see you guys. Yeah, isn't that enough? Up. No, Why don't you just have a private thing for your family? We don't really care that you get Yeah, married. I mean, we don't really know anybody I, if, else if, you know. If, if, we don't even know your wife. We've never even met her. If you don't want to go, I won't be offended. Okay, you know what? I do. I, I'm really happy for you and stuff. I just don't want to go. Okay, that's cool. And so I hope that clears the air. And please... Don't hold it against me. I'll oh, give you a really no, generous absolutely. gift. I really think that's wrong of you, though, Howard. You're not going either. <laughs> I really think you should go. I would actually like to go if no one else was there. 
<laughs> what, what if you just went to the ceremony? Why? Why do you need me there? So what, so your family could say, hey, there's no, his, no. his celebrity friend? He really does no. work with Howard and he's close with him? <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I'm not into that. Don't you think you do have an obligation to Scott? No. <laughs> I really don't. I think Scott has an obligation to me. <laughs> Can't you just show up so you can take a picture with the bride and the groom? No. The no. I'm not okay. going. It's I okay. really don't want to go. Right. It's just awkward and That's stupid cool. and, and everyone expects me to do Are dumb stuff. Are you just saying this on the air and you're really going to go? No, I really don't want to go. And I never <laughs> want to talk to you about it off the air. That's okay. All right, I'm going to send you a, a generous up. check. Thank you. <laughs> Baba Booey says send 200, I send 300. <laughs> Baba Bull High. I'll write the check right now. You I'll should. give you the cash. Where's my wallet? <laughs> I don't want to go. I don't want to go to that. I guess you're going. going. I'm not going. Yes, you are. No, you're going. No, you're going. Jackie, you going? Yeah. Well, Jackie will go. Jackie loves the parties. Free food and free food. Let's get wine. Nancy, let's go to the... Uh, We're all going. Let's rent a limousine so that when we go, we get really drunk and we don't have to drive home. Yeah. Dariani moved the gig already. Yeah. Yeah. Really, well, oh, the go. fish that they eat. You got to go. For Christ's sakes. Loosen up. I'll, I'll be your wife for a second. You have to go and so does Rob. I'm not going. You have to go. You I don't want to go. go. I don't want to eat at midnight. You have to go. There's a cocktail hour, so there's no germs. Mm -hmm. Hey, you! <laughs> Jackie, you like that. Don't we always have fun when we hang out together as a group on weekends? Yeah, but, you know, Scott's a good guy and everything, but I'm not going to his wedding. <laughs> I like Scott a lot. I like him better than most people. You don't want to sit at a table talk no. to Scott the engineer? No. No. <laughs> and neither do you. And his wife. Some well, that was some ceremony, wasn't it? It was very beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I love the quotations. Excuse me, honey, can I get you a drink? Watch <laughs> Scott be polite to his wife. Would you like a Jägermeister? 7-Up now! <laughs> Would that be a 7-Up, darling? <laughs> <laughs> or a Rob Roy? Who else did you invite? Um, Not Chisano, did you? No, it's basically like your, sta you know, your staff. Oh. Kathy's invited. Oh, yeah. Um, Richard's invited. Just Richard. Everyone who I work with. Richard picks carrots out of a garbage pail. Wow. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to worry about <laughs> feeding him. It should be a special night for him. You just take him by the garbage pail. Invite the guy that brings the food in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Janji, too, you invited? Yep. I'm not going. Did you invite Tom? No, no, Tom's not. What about the other E people? Like, is yeah, they coming the, in from the, California? Fran, Fran was invited. I don't know if she's Fran's not going to go. Marta was invited. She's not going to go. Uh, <laughs> they go to Palm Springs every and, weekend and, and have their and, nails done. And John. Yeah, John. Ryber? Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys have a lot in common. <laughs> 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 You've both been totally pussy with by E. Get out of here, you disgust me. <laughs> Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I got to meet this prize of yours. Right. I'll bring her by. If you go to the wedding, you could see her. My wife uh, saw her. They, she ran into you guys oh, yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. My wife said, yeah, she's really cute. And I, I said, well, I'm not going to take your opinion. <laughs> I'll bring her by. I'll look her over. Okay. All, right. All right. Good luck, If man. she's Thanks. good looking, will you go to the wedding? No. <laughs> Don't you think it's the obligation of a boss to go to his yeah. employee's wedding? I'm not his wedding? boss. Yes, you he know. is. I'm not his boss. Yes, he is. Absolutely. And you go. <laughs> we'll see if you go. If you go, uh, then I'll look at you. I don't have anything we'll have to do with Most of Scott. the weddings you've been to been a disaster in terms of people. I just don't want to go okay. anywhere. I just want to. I want to have a nice, quiet weekend. I don't <laughs> want to. I don't want to be stared at. I don't want to get dressed okay, up. I can no, but I can ask that for Howard. I've never yeah. heard you come back from a wedding and say, "Boy, did I have a good time." Yeah, yeah. I, it's, it'll be a disaster. You know what? I like you too much to go to your wedding and ruin it. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. All right. <laughs> I really think that this is wrong etiquette. I got the invite and I was like, oh, how am I going to deal with this? You know what? I'll just tell him on the air. <laughs> so, Robert, that means you're coming. I'm not. I don't know Scott. I don't know how he would invite well, me. You want to do the truth? I hardly know Scott. <laughs> I just work with the guy. <laughs> All of a sudden, I got to go to his wedding. <laughs> Which I don't even agree with. I think the guy should stay single. <laughs> Is that your protest? Yeah. He's going to jump up mistake. when they make that statement. Speak now. Yeah. Douche. <laughs> I love you, though, man. Okay. I'm happy for you. I hope it works out for you and, you and your wife. Thank you. All right. It'll be all exciting. You'll have the same last name. <laughs> Good. Is she taking your name? Yeah. The Einziger name? <laughs> What's her first name? Debbie. Debbie. So she'll be Debbie Einziger? Yeah. Oh. Uh, What's her name now? Silverman? Silverman. Oh, so she'll be Debbie Einziger. Yeah. <laughs> that is a big difference. People won't be clear on if she's a Jew or not. Does everyone have to wear a yarmulke during the wedding? Mm -hmm. Even Jackie? Oh, you gotta go. Yeah, we discussed that yesterday. You gotta go. <laughs> Conservative temple. Oh, really? Jackie has to wear one? Yeah, Scott, yeah. Scott's thrilled when he gets to wear a yarmulke. <laughs> Makes it look like he has hair. Oh, he can keep it on after the ceremony. Mm. I can glue this to my head. Yeah. <laughs> he gets a black one. <laughs> like to comb my yarmulke. <laughs> <laughs> Just puts on that toupee. Yeah.
glue, glue the yarmulke to his toupee. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be pretty funny. You got to go. <laughs> Just tape it. I'll watch it tape. Okay. All, right. All right, we got to uh, take a break. We'll be back right after these words. I wanted to take some phone calls, and I wanted to uh, do a bunch of things, Robin, but I see news time is here, and I'm really trying to keep to a schedule. Well, you know how you could do that is just by accepting invitations. <laughs> What do you mean? If you hadn't spent a half hour saying, yeah. no, I won't go, you could have done all those things. Yeah, well, I feel kind of bad, but... You should, because I think it's wrong what you're doing. Gary just bet me off the air that I will end up there. He bet me 50 bucks. Yeah? And so I said, now... I'm not going. <laughs> I said, I'll go. I Fred will be there before I will. He couldn't believe it's a sure thing, only betting 50 bucks. Yeah. He's a little nervous. <laughs> but I think it's wrong for a person who works with you so closely. You should be there. Such a liar, because you know what you said to me one day? If somebody you work with really liked you, they wouldn't invite you to that crap. Oh, oh, that is not true. Did I say that? Yes. That's what you say off the air. <laughs> you know, they know that you don't want to go, and you know you don't want to be there. So they just leave you alone and say, listen, don't come. I don't know. I, I changed my mind. You know me. The only fun aspect now is just watching Jackie and Nancy make a spectacle of themselves at the party. <laughs> Nancy comes in braless, low-cut top. Little short skirt. And as the evening wears on... You get a dance with her, you feel her ass. <laughs> <laughs> she gets good and loaded. How can you miss it? She gives you bedroom eyes. <laughs> Jackie's wife. So why don't you want to go? I can do that. I can just call her up for a date. What do I have to go to Scott Einziger's <laughs> wedding for? <laughs> She's as hot as a pistol. Oh, you're terrible. You got her last night. Did you? Sure. Got it. She's your wife. No big deal. That's yeah. not getting, is it? No. Or whatever it's called. <laughs> She's got a good body, his wife. Super thin with big breasts. Hmm. Dynamite combination. Me and her? No, me and her. <laughs> Is that super thin with a big load if you're talking about Jackie? And yeah. <laughs> That's her exercise is to carry Jackie around. Keeps it trapped. Real good body on her. Always wearing a bathing suit, thong, whatever. Still gets away with it. How old is she? What's she, about 35? 34. Yeah. Looks yeah, good. Yeah, got a young one. Yeah. Well, Jackie waited to get married. Got, that was about as good as he was going to do. Is he? Well, Jackie, I think, cheats on the side. She's beautiful. I think Jackie That's nails her and gets other girls, too. So? That's always been my feeling on Jackie. <laughs> and no one will ever convince me otherwise. I got done with her last night. And went out. Jackie has no guilt. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Jackie still plays bad comedy clubs. God's punishing him for cheating on his wife. <laughs> better yeah. career yeah but he's that's, been cheating in my mind that's what god's little punishment is <laughs> has to live in howard shadow the rest of his life has to go to slapstick yeah for easy zanies pickin'. in chicago easy picking yeah well at least i ought to get a lot of different girls sold out <laughs> why you think jackie's faithful you know every time you say all this stuff to me and you make me believe it but when i see them together I oh, just can't. He has a great time with her. But he has a great you time with a lot of people. Yeah. You would too. No, she doesn't trust him as far as she can throw Well, him. I know she doesn't trust him. And with good I reason. Just, I mean, he does care about her. Cares about her like he cares about Fred. <laughs> <laughs> he cares about everybody. <laughs> he cares about his cat, too. Sure. <laughs> he loves that cat. Yeah, but he's yeah. pet at others. Yeah, no. He's he's gotta, he's gotta, <laughs> he loves them all equally. Fred, his wife, and the cat. <laughs> no, he has no guilty conscience. He's got a great uh, He's got a great attitude about it. Free spirit. It's only sex, I suppose. Right. To him, it's sex, and sex he has with his wife is he's the best. He's in love with his wife. Yeah, he loves her. Eating ain't cheating. Eating ain't cheating. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Come to the wedding, we'll swap. Man, that's all right. <laughs> You'll be there. I bet somebody in the hall, too. I bet Genji. Go ahead. I ain't going. I thought Heinziger's wedding. <laughs> sit there and be stared at by his parents. It could be rough. Yeah, and I'm going to wear a tuxedo. Oh, That's one thing he could have stood up for us and said, wait a minute. Not only that, I, if I do go, I ain't wearing no tuxedo. Well, you never do. You no. went to Trump's wedding and didn't wear a tuxedo. No. Nope. So well, why you did you wear wearing, one for Einziger? If you're not wearing one, then we don't have to wear one, right? 
absolutely you don't have to. You can wear your same stupid baggy black pants with sneakers. Look like a clown. Why don't you just put a red nose on your face? Lay off me. He should wear his wedding outfit. Yeah, you can wear giant shoes and a red uh, <laughs> red clown nose. <laughs> you don't have to dress up. Bring a boombox oh, with my no. music. Hey, you don't wear one. I'm not wearing one. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Parade! <laughs> and Jackie could get really drunk and insult Scott Einziger's parents like he insulted Gary's parents. Yeah, I mean, as what? the evening goes on, Jackie will tell more and more racist yeah. jokes. Oh. The, last, the last time I went to a wedding <laughs> was, with, was at Gary's wedding, and Jackie was at the table. Gary's father comes over, and Jackie just turns and goes, Hey, your teeth aren't that funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that <is> nice. <laughs> And his father's like destroyed and is like, you know, what are you making fun of my son's teeth for at his wedding? <laughs> Jackie thinks he's really going over big. Uh, <laughs> he's just loaded. I always think I'm and like, if, if anyone had any balls, they'd just punch Jackie in the stomach while he's loaded and watch him vomit in the corner. Yeah, you know, Petty Jack Davis, him up. Petty Davis thought he was being particularly cruel. Jackie's like that all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he tells the president's daughter that her father has uh, Alzheimer's lost his memory. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Hey, I'm just trying to be funny. <laughs> oh, I gotta gotta read that book. I gotta read. What's that. up? Yeah. There is one great thing that came out of this entire discussion. Yeah. Uh, guess who called, offering uh, their services for Scott Isaac's bachelor party? Ooh, scores? Yes. Yeah, we gotta have a. Uh, hey, we oh, do no, have to no, have a no, bachelor no. party. That I'll no go to. Bachelor party yeah. if you're not going to the wedding. When is the bachelor party? As soon as possible. <laughs> no <laughs> bachelor doing? party unless you go to the wedding. Stay out of it, Robin. <laughs> well, she can keep talking. It's all right. <laughs> He's going to go I'm anyway. I'm going anyway. <laughs> I turned around 10 seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Black tie affair? <laughs> sure. Ah, just go get black cool. ties and just wear them. And you know, Einzig will be out of there in 10 minutes. I was going to say, I would say Einziger should boycott, but it wouldn't matter. You'd go in. I'd go to his bachelor party whether he was there or not. <laughs> if he died, we'd go do his funeral. Yeah, maybe in a couple of weeks we should arrange for a bachelor party. Will so. he back. come? Bring him in. Yeah, he'll come. Oh, boy. Beep, beep. That's a tough one. He goes for like 10 minutes and stares at a girl for a second and leaves. Really? Because he can't stay there. That should be a good sign to a guy not to get married when you see a bunch of married guys standing around like <laughs> dying over girls pulling their pants down. To go to your bachelor party. Yeah. It's a good indication of what your life's going to be like. Bite all his in-laws. Yeah, have his father. Oh, dear. We saw one guy, Jackie worked a bachelor party oh, where God. this guy gets up and uh, Jackie was the comic. And, uh, the hooker took him by the hand. Yeah, so the hooker in front of the guy's dad and the guy's future father-in-law right. got and up on stage and brother-in-law got up on stage and pulled the guy's pants down and gave sodomy to the to oh. the uh, bachelor. Lied to him down on the stage. Like, yeah. Yeah. right in front of the future father-in-law. The future father-in-law with a big smile on his away. face. Yeah, the stage was like you know four inches tall. You yeah. say he was smiling? Yeah, during this whole thing? get him married. Yeah. He was proud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I married the hooker. <laughs> I had to take a hooker to a hospital once after a bachelor party. Yeah, I remember that one. That was pretty funny. She was all bloody. Yep, we wrapped her up in the sheets and dropped her off on the front steps. And she oh. goes, is anyone going to come in with me? No. No. I'm going to be with a hooker. What, did you believe a sign on her and say, please take care of my child? Hey, let me tell you something. Her whatever, he just left her the all. Pimp. Yeah, he left her all together. <laughs> we were nice enough to drop her off somewhere. <laughs> yeah. near, near a surgeon. Oh. So you, you'll come to the bachelor party? Yeah, the bachelor party I'll be at. Okay. All right. In fact, that's Howard's gift. Yeah. I'm throwing right, you a ba you. I'm going to throw right. you a bachelor party you'll never forget. <laughs> Did you have another one planned, Scott? No, Lonnie had mentioned to me that he was probably going to do something. Oh, was that he? Was nice. Lonnie's the man yeah. over at Scores. Yeah, that's nice. Scores is a weird place. You know, I'm looking in the newspaper today, and A.C. Cowling's, who I'm no big fan of, <laughs> but A.C. Cowling's O.J.'s pal. Yeah. Uh, he was over at Scores last night, and he got pissed off because they had a photographer over there, and they were taking pictures of A.C., while he was, you know, getting a lap dance or something. Or the girl was dancing for him. Right. And he was like, hey, I don't want a picture of me in the paper at Scores. Did you see that, how he got in, though? He used OJ's Scores card, but it expired a year and a half ago. Yeah, I don't think Lonnie cares. But I, that's always weird to me. Like, shouldn't a guy have his privacy? No, I figure if you're going to go out and do things like that, you might as well have a picture taken. Get lost. No. You don't even think no, I, that. I agree. I agree with you. Of course. The guy's here guy's partying. He wants to like, spend he, the money. If he's paying his good money and he's right. there, just like, why does, you know, you won't show pictures of everyone. Maybe he wasn't paying money. Yeah, I told Lonnie. Lonnie figured he oh, was owed something. I told Lonnie, ever see any pictures of me coming out of that? I'm never talking about your place again. Are you ashamed of what you're doing? Of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty shameful. I'm a married man with three children. <laughs> Sitting here looking at naked girls. <laughs> Hoping to rub against my leg. You want me to keep going? Yeah, yeah. Here's another. Here's more funny money. More funny money. I think that. Do you think that we can? The beeper will be going off in Scott Einzger's pants every ten minutes. Uh, do you think that we? 
I'm sorry. Do you think we can actually break the bank on this one? Every time we've gone, You've we started out with. Andy. I remember we, we were like, "Wow, we got three thousand dollars in funny money," and the next time it was five. And I think the last time we went to close to fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Each time we spend more and more money. A million dollars. Yeah, it'd be a million dollars in funny money. And all of this happens in about a two-hour two period. Oh. Yeah. We go through fifteen <laughs> grand in uh, two hours. Plus shrimp and lobster and. Well, okay. And the goal this time should be less guys at the party, yes. more money. Yes. Lonnie from Scores is on the phone now. No. But it should be, you're absolutely right about that, Howard. There's too much dead wood at these parties. Hey, Lonnie. Hey, Howard. Hey, Lonnie, seriously, how does A.C. Talling's picture end up in the newspaper? Well... That's not cool. You better never take a picture of me. Well, as you know, we've never, ever in a million years even considered taking a picture of you or notifying anybody or... Thank you. Uh, A.C. was an unusual situation because we agree with you. O.J. is guilty. Right. A.C. knows it. A.C. Oh, was not a nice guy. It's a oh, political statement. Oh, it's a political statement. Okay, then I'm with you. All right, Lonnie, say no more. What is the picture show again? It's just A.C. sitting there with a girl, her, her, her beautiful ass, like, like, like to the camera. And uh -huh. She's shaking her uh, boobies into his face. Oh, I got it. O.J.'s guilty. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what? I never argue with Lonnie because Lonnie's the guy who gives us the funny money so the well, girls do stuff. I am not looking for anything from Lonnie. I can say whatever I want. You know what's real embarrassing about how much time we spent at scores? Entertainment Tonight did a piece. You know, Demi Moore went down there last week because yeah. she was doing a movie. Yeah. And they were interviewing all the strippers. And I'm sitting on the couch with my wife. And she goes, recognize any of your girlfriends? And I recognize all of them. Yeah. I'm like, I know her. I know her. We know every one of them. <laughs> by name. <laughs> yeah, they got some good-looking girls over there. So, Lonnie, you're saying we can have the Scott Einziger bachelor party over there? Of course. I spoke to my boss, Craig Carlino, and he basically says, Howard, uh, anything for your people, and on the odd chance we might even get you, anything you ever wanted. Hey, can you do me a favor? Don't keep it so bright in there when we come. <laughs> Cut the cable. He does want to see what you're doing. <laughs> That's really funny. We I went to room. It's pitch black. We like it. He yeah, well, one thing, Lonnie has a bunch of guys there hanging around and watch me. Yeah. And I, I told him, no more watching me. Well, we want to make sure that absolutely nobody gets in your way, but we'll we'll keep them at a far distance. Yeah. <laughs> and Fred has to see the stairs so he can fall down. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. no, I stay down. Can you pull all the fuses in the place and we'll bring flashlights? <laughs> we'll provide our own light? <laughs> I thought that the last party, though, I agree with you, Howard, I thought the last party was a little crowded. You mean but too many girls or no, too many guys? Too many guys. Yeah, me too. Oh, but that was a Super Bowl party. Well, it's different because it should be only Scott's closest Scott's close friends. friends. And I think none of his personal friends, just guys he knows professionally oh, like yeah. us. Well, see, that's what I was going to ask. Is this going to be his real bachelor party where his friends get to party with no. him? No. This is his K-Rock bachelor party. It's going to be me, Gary, Jackie, Fred, Billy, and Scott. That's and that's it. That's the perfect party. That's it? That's yeah. The perfect party. <laughs> what? What? Man, no. you don't need them. No. You don't want Eric and Scott? No, no. Nah. Eric likes to dance for the girls anyway. Yeah. Scott you want it, You want those guys? More we guys, less guys. girls. Or are you going to have like a homo? And it's only two more guys. All right, and you know who else? we got to have Neil, because he's fun. Oh, no. But then what about... What are you Neil's, gonna, these are my you're friends. Gonna get yeah. what are you going to get Gay Rich again? Gay Rich is good, because he doesn't take up the girls, and, he get, and, and Neil always ends up pulling down his pants. <laughs> now, what are you going to do about Gorilla Gaggy and John? Don't need them. Okay. Extra go garbage. <laughs> baggage. 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 All I know is the guy keeps bugging me for funny money. What do I need him there Gaggy for? Gaggy puts money down and like eats with the girls and chats with them. Let him do what he wants. He wants to act like a homo. Let him do what he wants. Look, that's as close as he gets to even talking to girls. I want to talk to the strippers. <laughs> so, how'd it go when you were dancing? <laughs> yeah, last time at the Super Bowl party, Ganji did his best interviewing at scores. Yeah. <laughs> and tell all the girls that they have to tell me every five minutes that I have the biggest genitals. Ah, <laughs> They've got to be coached. Okay, Lonnie? You got it. Yeah. Every five minutes they have to tell me I'm the biggest. They're into fantasy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was great. That's how they get all the money out of me. They start telling you about your... They go, your... you're the biggest. Look at the size of your feet. Look at the size. Look at... Mm. <laughs> I rub my knee against you. Look at that. Ooh. And your pockets just turn themselves yeah, inside and go, out. Keep saying it, honey. Here's another 20. Oh, Robin, I got to tell you, Howard is very popular because it used to be Charlie Sheen was the girl's favorite, Sean Penn. But lately, it's been Howard. No question uh, Those about other it. guys haven't been in town. Huh? That's my problem. I always want to be popular wherever I go. I'm always trying to please. With Lonnie's money, I'm the most popular. Oh, yeah. All right, Lonnie, we're going to be over there. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, That's very guys. generous of you. Lonnie from Scores. <laughs> 20000 in funny money. <laughs> Six guys. <laughs> Six guys, 20 grand. Oh, I want to see what happens. Oh. Yes. <laughs> like pigeons all over. I can't over. believe you're saying too many guys. They always have, what, 50 women there? Yeah. Perfect. That's yeah, but, right. But, but it's, it's just like the jungles. There are some guys who get all the money, and they keep coming back for more money, and then they say, okay, you five girls. First of all, 
20 of the girls go with Howard immediately. Yeah, and that's, you know what? That overwhelms me. But still, there are 30 girls left for the rest of you. Yeah, but you want some variety. Some of the girls you don't want to, you know. Right. Oh, yeah. so you're so you the best girls? Yeah, well, quite frankly, I'm the, I'm the guy holding about 10 grand in funny money. <laughs> Three of them converge on you at once. you got to dole out the money. Yeah, and you right can't away. even enjoy them. Yeah, right. <laughs> the one at a time. Yeah. Billy, you're easy. Yeah. <laughs> Billy sits down, it's the same girl each time, and she just stands there and... He just out. gives one girl all yeah, the money. all his money. I love you. Love That's actually cool move. Some of the guys, there's like three or four of the guys do that. They get yeah, one they get, girl. Like, they get wives for the night. Because exactly. Ronnie's <laughs> like that. You take, you bring in Ronnie? Yeah. Because Ronnie gets one girl, right? Yeah, Ronnie goes, I had the best girl. I go, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, I kept her all night. I'm like, yeah. But it sounds like you're married, douche. To me, you go to a strip club, you keep them coming. <laughs> the variety is the name of the game. Yeah, you want, you want monogamy, go home. Lap is the name of the game. <laughs> right. <laughs> it all centers around my lap. Lap. <laughs> lap. Next. 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 I need someone to attend to my lap. <laughs> <laughs> the world's most important lap. Yeah, right here. It's got 20 grand in front of it. <laughs> that should be our next promo. The world's most important lap. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, man, it's great. Well, anyway. Now you're glad he's getting married. Yeah, now I'm happy you're getting married. <laughs> See? Oh, he's right. changed. When do you guys want to do the uh, bachelor party? Today. <laughs> Seriously, come up with a list of guys, because, you know, it, it, let's keep it tight this time, huh? I, I'm sick of all the riffraff. I mean, do we care that he's getting married? I mean, does when, he get, when he's getting married have anything to do when with it? When is he getting married? May 20th, so should we do What's it? today? Today's uh, March 29th. So let's do it next week. <laughs> yeah. What if he cancels the wedding? <laughs> yeah, don't cancel that wedding until we have the party. So what do we do it like middle of April? We'll do it in like two or three Fridays. Okay. Well, a Friday's good, right? Friday's always good. Okay. Gets me nice and relaxed. That way I go home and I hate my wife for the weekend. We'll do it next Friday? <laughs> what about the Friday before vacation? Next Friday? Sounds good to me. Next Friday's great. No, the Friday before vacation is not that good because we actually have stuff to do the next day. Yeah. Okay. We need a day we can recover. Don't want to have a tired lap. You know what? Why don't you wait two Fridays? Because I'm still kind of sick. You want to be recovered. I don't hand, want to give the girls any On the other hand, won't this make you better? Right. That's what it I was going to say. Wouldn't this be a healing experience? I'm just afraid I'll miss it. <laughs> if all the girls lay their hands on you, it will heal you. Yeah. You know, but he's going to have a hard time convincing his wife that it's okay for him to go if yeah. he's sick. Yeah, good point, Robin. <laughs> She's starting to think like I do. <laughs> yeah, honey, I didn't even want to go to a scores. It's Einziger's fault. I don't even want to go to scores. It's because of Einziger. We have to do it. <laughs> that way we don't have to go to a stupid wedding. Good fault. Yeah. All right. We've got to take a break and do the news. All right, Einziger. There you go. You're going to have the best bachelor party. Thanks. Thanks, boy. Four guys, 900 women. Ooh. That's what you live for. You really... Have you seen him at one of these things before? Yeah, he's a big pussy. Oh, okay. He's in love. It's like, <laughs> I, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. <laughs> Do you you stay what? Maybe a total of ten minutes? No, I stayed longer than that last time. What? I stayed longer than that last time. I stayed longer than that last time. <laughs> I swear. I'm telling that. you, all these e guys who talk like women. <laughs> did you stay longer? Did you get a dance? Yeah. You did. Mm -hmm. Did you like the girls, or you're not really that interested? No. Yeah, they were nice. Yeah. Did you get aroused? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Okay. All right. He's okay. lying. Of course I did. They were splendid. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> It's the best 11 minutes I've ever spent. I like to sweat off her. Oh. Is that the list? The list is done. Yes, sir. Let me see the list of guys. Uh, Howard, Gary, Fred, Jackie, Billy, Stuttering John, Grillo, Ganji, or they're out. We have, I thought we'd, we'd decide. And then Ronnie, Neil, Scott Einziger, and the two guys back, and he gump into pace. All right. <laughs> Why are we calling him gump? Every, I don't even know his name anymore. Yeah. Everyone calls him gump. He looks, like, he looks like Forrest Gump. Really? But that's what everyone calls him. Yeah, that's nice. He answers to it. <laughs> Does he? Oh, yes. He likes it. All right. And what about Gay Rich? He doesn't take up any room. Well, no. you know, let's, let's, because then you open it up to a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, because Neil needs somebody to goof on. Yeah, exactly. who's going to dance for Neil? Well, I, yeah. I like to throw yeah. Neil some fresh meat. <laughs> <laughs> so get some other gay guys for Neil. <laughs> All right, Gay Rich will move we'll, we'll on. All right. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with the real news. Howard wasn't here, so I jumped in the chair, and I took over the show. I want to be the star. I'm funnier, and I love my wife, Nancy. Hey, Jackie, give me back that microphone. Oh, you're here. Too bad. I'm doing characters now. Ah! 
That's my sidekick. Hey, good morning, everybody. Ah! I just want to say that uh, Robin Radzinski is our co-producer of the e-show. Co-producer? You got her title wrong, did you? I didn't. Baba Booey did, as usual. He doesn't know who anyone is. Oh. She's all upset back there. See, on the e-television show, we have Scott Einziger, who's getting married. He's a producer of our television show. Mm -hmm. And then with equal importance is Robin Radzinski. Ah. Or Robin Radzinski. You don't even know her name? No one does. <laughs> no one can pronounce it. <laughs> Now, when did you find out? Uh, yesterday morning, she said. You you said that I was an associate producer. I said, I didn't say you were anything. Gary came in and said you were an associate producer because Gary always likes to give information that he doesn't have. Mm -hmm. Gary always likes to seem like an expert. No, boss, I believe she's the associate producer. <laughs> nice guy. So where's Robin? I make it correct. Yeah. I'm actually are you of, the are you the senior producer? I'm actually one of the executive producers. Oh, you're the executive producer, and Robin's right the producer. Yeah, Robin's the yeah. producer. He's uh, Scott Einziger is the real executive producer of our show because he's here every day and makes decisions. Mm -hmm. But try. And then there's Fran Shea, who's listed as an executive producer, but she just. You know, she runs the place, so she puts her name on there. And, right. And John Ryber's pretty good, too. He, he's an executive producer, but he was real good in the beginning, but he's never here anymore. He just comes in for like two weeks and sets stuff up and then Well, I'm leaves. sure he has other things to do. They're very busy at E with programming. Yeah. They got a lot of original programming. But I speak to him every day. He oh, knows, do you? He knows everything that's going on. All right. Yeah, but you pretty much tell him what's going on, right? Yeah. You could even lie to him. He wouldn't know the difference. That's true. He just listens, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, so you're you're listed as an executive producer. Yeah. And Robin... Wait, there's your girlfriend. She's beeping you. Uh, and, uh... Robin gets the first credit on the show. It comes up, producer Robin Wazinski. Yeah, because she works real hard. Yeah. She works harder than... Yeah. She works as hard as anybody on the show. She cuts a lot of the shows and does a great job. Yeah. Is she Polish? I don't know what she is. She's queen of all Polacks. Oh, oh. That's what she is. She's the queen. <laughs> and she's built a lot better than you, Einzige. It was so funny. I got Scott's uh, invite the other day in the mail. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know his name was Scott Lewis. <laughs> I know. Isn't that weird? Like, why is he Scott Einziger? It's like, <laughs> Scott Lewis is marrying... Deborah uh, Lynn. Deborah Lynn. <laughs> yeah, you, Rob, you can tell it's two Jews. Did you get Scott Lewis and Deborah Lynn? Did you get the invitation, Rob? Yes, that was uh, what we're talking uh, about. I didn't hear that. <laughs> Scott sent me a wedding invitation. I told him I'm not going. But that whole idea of eating dinner at midnight is just so foul and wrong and so disgusting. But there's food before that. Yeah, I know, but people want to eat the dinner. Blame the Jews. Blame the whole Jewish that's race. That's not full crap Jewish race. That's not a Jewish thing. If anything, that's a, a what, Gentile. You no, have to eat at midnight? No, because you no can't No Jews start. eat at midnight. I never heard of this. It's a conservative thing. temple. You can't he, start the service. So then get married on a different day. Go to a, go to a temple that isn't so conservative. I've never heard of that. I have cousins who did that. They got... they. They had the dinner at midnight at so their wedding. So what's the deal? You can't have the service until late on some days? Well, Saturday is, I guess, the Sabbath or right. something. But meanwhile, they have bar mitzvahs on Saturdays. And they're in the afternoon. Of course. Einziger's full of it. He he thinks he's royalty, and he's going to be special, and he's going to get he's married. He's got to get married in prime time. Yeah, he's got to get married. At, <laughs> he's going to get married late at night, and the dinner won't happen until midnight, so people will start party till four in the morning. I'll force everybody to wait. <laughs> you know, who wants to have a weekend where they, you know, they got to go to this wedding? It starts late at night. You, who eats dinner? Who do you know that eats dinner at, at midnight? midnight? I mean, no who? One. Not even party goers eat dinner at midnight. People maybe eat as late as eight, nine, ten o'clock, mm -hmm. but midnight. And it's just so pompous. It's like, you know, hey, we're Prince Charles and the lady die. Controlling other people's lives. Yeah. Lose that, dude. No one wants to eat at midnight. If I serve dinner earlier, we Jackie, you, Jackie's like a party guy and up for you anything. You haven't eaten dinner by 9 or 10 o'clock. Like, what's, what's, what's the you, point? But you could essentially make a dinner of all the food that's going to be at the cocktail hour. Yeah, no, we understand that. But, but you're you saying people have to stay for this dinner. If, if I wanted that, I'd no, go no, to a happy Scott, hour. A somewhere. lot of people know that you've gone to some I, expense I, I, to, I, to make a dinner. People are going to fill up on cocktails and, and cocktail hors d'oeuvres. 
and then they're going to be wait, they're going to say, "Hey, listen, we can't leave because the guy's going to serve dinner. He's yeah. first serving dinner at midnight." I, I agree with you. I th I think it's too late too. But you know. So did you say anything? Yeah, I said it. Sure. Um, and what? You, what are you totally pussy with? No, you, just, you can't. You, you, well, your your girlfriend's get... beeping you. You better go get that. <laughs> and after you eat, you don't feel like dancing or partying. No, you ready to go? Especially at midnight, you yeah, want to go to bed. All I'm saying is, I have a cousin who got married several years ago, and you know, she's from Brooklyn. She's no princess. She's a girl. She's a nice girl from Brooklyn. She's not. She's not a queen of England. She decided she had to get married at midnight. You know, have the dinner at midnight mm -hmm. because all her friends decided that that would be great, and all her friends did that. Right. So all the people who were, you know, especially the people who were like fifty plus, sixty plus, and there was a lot of them. Like Jackie. <laughs> yeah. Well, like like my my aunt, you know, who's the grandmother, and yeah. you know, it was a lot. And they were all sitting there. They were all exhausted. They all wanted to eat dinner. They, they wanted Everybody it to be over. Go you know, <clears throat> at, a, at around 12 o'clock, you should be deciding whether you want to go home or not, not whether you want to eat. Do you have a lot of old people coming? Yeah, there'll be some old people. There. Like who? Grandparents and stuff. Yeah. I mean, so what are they supposed to do? Stay up and eat dinner be at midnight because your girlfriend has some idea that she's royalty? If they if they want to leave, they'll leave. They'll, you know, a lot of them are coming in from out of town. Stay, there's hotels locally, so they'll be okay. So in other words, you'll serve this dinner, and a third of the place will be gone. Perhaps. No. Is that your plan? <laughs> no, that won't happen because people aren't rude, and they will stay, and they will, you know, want them to feel good. Because my wife never lets me leave before the dinner is served. Is that right? Yeah, because sometimes these people drag out the day. I've gone to weddings and bar mitzvahs, you know, big affairs, sweet sixteen stuff like that. Where they drag out the day by waiting for the dinner, waiting, waiting, and they know people won't leave until the dinner's mm. served. In fact, I, nobody I, ends up eating a cake. I, I mean, yeah. because because your cake is probably going to be served about three in the I, I morning. I left weddings early, you know, because I've been tired. All right. Well, who, everyone's going to be tired by the end of the service. Yeah, it's sort of rude to leave before the cake. Actually, now, you, don't be, have to, you don't have to eat it, but you should just wait for it to come out. Yeah, but you don't because I'm telling you, he won't. His cake won't wheel out till three in the morning. We they beat you into submission. You have to go. It is probably the rudest, most obnoxious thing you can do is to have the dinner at midnight. It's, it's obnoxious. We were discussing this out in the office, and we we're saying that Scott fell victim to something that a lot of guys fall victim to. Oh, bull! Which is his wife has had this wedding plan for years, and she, he just happened to be the guy that she's, you know, he, that, that's getting married. He has no say in it. No, he has say. No, you you walk in, let me tell you something. I always had a say. You walk in, he just has no interest. He's oh, just okay. going along with it. But you walk in and you say, you know what? You come to your senses, ladies. This is very, very rude. There's a lot of people who want to be there for the whole wedding. They want to have the cake. They want to eat the dinner. They want to have a good time. But to do it at midnight is, 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 is torturing people. It's not... It's not about a good time. There are certain people who like to stay up on a Saturday night till 4 or 5 in the morning. There are a certain amount of people. I would say they're the minority. Very few of them are at weddings, though, yeah. when they're doing Yeah, that. they're usually out clubbing. It's like Ralph will be happy. Did you invite Ralph? Yeah. Yeah, he'll be happy to be there till 5, 6 in the morning. Be me, Ralph, and Scott. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know if those are the people that you really should be pleasing on your wedding day, you know? I don't know what to say, man. And you know what your girlfriend's saying? Oh, but this is a dream I had to be eating at midnight. And it's like, yeah, well, yeah, but so what? You know, I have a dream, too. I'd like to be driving around on a Rolls Royce uh, with th three 16-year-olds, okay? But I don't act on it. You're not getting it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting it. I don't get everything I wish for. God. You guys should be in the sack on your honeymoon night. You should be eating you at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> and that's always some wedding night. He's already been living with her for like five years. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, oh, come on, let's have sex. Mm. Gotta consummate the marriage, honey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My wife and I barely did it that night. That should have been a good indication. I, know, I think hardly anybody does it that night. Yeah. W where did you go after well, She got wedding. a period, and she was like, oh. I want it because we have to, you know. I said, honey, you got your period. I never touch you when you have You're a period. You're doing it to yourself. But it's bad luck. It's our marriage. It's our wedding night. I said, all right, real quick. Oh, you did? Yeah, I think Ooh. I did. And she, and she did it. And then she goes, it isn't quite here yet. It's just about to come. It's not here I yet. I lied to you. Yeah, and I, th I don't know. I remember it. I think it was there. Kind of messy. Yeah. Yeah. You do your girlfriend when uh, she does a period? <laughs> yeah, occasionally. Oh, really? Man, she must be hot. <laughs> so I'll bring her by for you. Yeah, I want to see that. She have a period. I want to see Today? what's going on with that. Oh, man. Yeah, but that whole getting married at midnight thing. It's really sick. And people will hate it. The only one who will like it is your girlfriend. And she'll be exhausted, too. But she don't care.
But you could have had all the meals of your day before you get to Scott's wedding. Of course. Uh, you know, I know <laughs> you, it Robert. seems Thank very you. special. You know, you're like, wow, we're so special, we're getting married at midnight. But you got to think that to everyone else who's going, this really isn't all that special. I mean, it's a wedding. I don't know why. I, you know, you're probably spending tons of money. It's a waste of money. It's a torture. It's a torturous night. And people go, oh, my God, then Sunday we're not going to get up to what? What, 4 o'clock in the yeah. afternoon? we got to go to work. Instead of just serving one meal, they've got to have all those hors d'oeuvres coming up to the meal. It's costing them more. I like the people who have these bar mitzvahs, and they, they're... Their little angel gets bar. You know, Friday night they have a service. Then Saturday morning they have another service. Mm. Saturday afternoon they have a big luncheon, and then later on Saturday night you have to get into your black tie and go on a ship or something oh boy. and celebrate. So it turns into Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. Yeah. I've, I've oh, I, oh man. Somebody <clears> just <throat> told me about some wedding they went to where. After the wedding ceremony, the bride and groom got on a yacht and then sailed around. Now, you have to stand and wait and watch. As they sail around. Sailing around. Oh. Yeah, what, what, I mean, how stupid. I tell you, uh, Woody, uh, my friend, just had his daughter get bar mitzvah. Yeah. I went to that. That was really good. I mean, he must have, I think he spent about $500 on the whole thing. <laughs> and you liked had, it. Yeah, it was great. It was like, there might have been like 15 people there. <laughs> the kid had a bunch of friends. Mm -hmm. We sat there at a little table, had a couple of, I don't know, it was a white fish or something. With these little mini bagels. <laughs> and then like a nice salad and a little something to eat. And I got out of there. Good. I was gone in two hours. <clears throat> That's what you should be shooting for, two hours yeah. of people's time. Yeah. But Einzinger's wedding is, you know, a, an entire evening into early morning yeah. into the next day affair. It will be, you know, daybreak <clears throat> yeah. a by the time you get out of it. A safari is less of a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> you know? We're going to get on a plane, go to Africa, shoot a couple of pictures of animals, and then come home. Because I can't even <clears throat> imagine starting something at 8.45. That's just the warm-up, my dear. That's if you're on time. And what's your what's your future wife going to do? Like she's going to get married in a big, authentic gown or something? Have you seen the gown? No, I she, seen want, it. Oh, she just wants to see it. it. Yeah, it's going to be a special treat. You've seen everything but the gown. Yeah. <laughs> He's seen her naked. He's, he's had her bent over the bed. upside down. <laughs> yeah, but you can't see her in the gown. It is kind of a strange concept. Yeah. <laughs> You know, people go to the movies, and generally a movie lasts about 90 minutes, and they can't concentrate toward the end of the movie. This guy's asking people to concentrate <laughs> on him for like 12 hours. And they really work on those movies. Yeah. Nothing going on. Right. Nothing going on. I don't know, man. I don't know what you're doing. I guess you're a pretty important guy with what's going on. And so it's just, she's going to get married in again, and then what's going to happen... Like when you two enter the affair, obviously you're going to get married and you'll disappear for a few minutes while everyone gets settled into cocktail hour. Right. And you'll be introduced as Mr. and Mrs. Scott Einziger. I think that's what happened. Right. right. And you'll march in. He like Kato. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, the two of you will be marched in as Mr. and Mrs. Scott Einziger for the first time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's please welcome the newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. Scott Einziger. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody's got to cheer. <laughs> and of course, that should make us forget about the fact that we're not going to get dinner till midnight for another four hours because now we get to view the new couple. Right, we can look at them for several hours yeah. before we get to eat. And we can all stand online waiting to greet them yes. as Mr. and Mrs. Scott Einziger. Right. We've never met them as Mr. and Mrs. Scott Einziger before. We hardly know them anyway. Yeah. We can stand in the yeah. line and wait to shake their hand. <laughs> Scott's laughing, but he sees nothing funny about it. That's a nervous it's laugh. It's a nervous, it's not even a laugh. I'm going to go to his wedding just to sell sandwiches. I'm going to stand out with a truck, a hot dog truck in the front and make a fortune. And you do good business. Oh, yeah, because everyone's going to be starving. <laughs> Stomachs will be growling. Like yeah, it's a zoo. Lot of, not a noise in that yeah, yeah, like a lion's den. <laughs> so then you'll be introduced as Mr. and Mrs. Scott Einziger. And what will she will she put on a... She, won't, won't she rip off a part of her wedding gown, like the veils and stuff, so that she can be seen more as a modern woman? Or will know. she have a different outfit? Some yeah, go to no. a completely different outfit. No, 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 well, what happens is they go to a completely different outfit later in the wedding. What, what, ah. To be introduced, they wear a 
A shorter gown? A shorter version of the wedding oh, apparel. I see. Oh, people do that? I've never seen that. Yeah, like well, they, they get rid of that long train if they've got yeah. one of those. Uh, the train comes off. Yeah. And now we're seeing her as Mrs. Scott Einziger, but a little more informal, a little looser. You know, a little hipper, a little yeah, younger. Cinderella a moment ago. Yeah. Before she was the Queen of England. Now she's just, you know, the modern day princess. And then, of course, as the wedding goes on, she'll want to um, maybe slip into something more casual for the around the dinner hour. <laughs> at, midnight, at midnight. Know. Big gold ring through Scott's nose as she pulls him along. <laughs> <laughs> By four in the morning, she better be in pasties and thongs. Well, I want to see. I want to see some skin. Got planned for all the hours in between. No, oh, I'll tell you how it works. You get married, then um, you have cocktail hour for a couple hours, two hours. No, I think an hour. An hour. An hour. Yeah. What? No, no, no. It'll be about two hours. Oh, okay. And then you'll have two hour cocktail hour, and then that'll be around eleven thirty. Then there'll be a whole big. I don't know. You know, there'll be dancing and all kind of crap. You uh -huh. sit at your table. I'm and there'll be a salad out there. Everyone will sit around waiting whether they should eat the salad. What about the time you're wasting? And then by midnight, you'll be uh, just first eating your salad. Uh -huh. uh. And you don't mind having people stand around miserable like that for all that time? It's, what it is is they're tired. They want to go home. But I'm asking him. He doesn't mind I, that no. people are going to be tired. I mean, no, because it's his day. It, <laughs> who cares what other people do? Everyone's so excited about Scott getting married that they're going to ignore the fact that their personal timetable is being completely screwed with. Yeah. It, it's a late time, but I'm sure everyone will have a, a fun right. party. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> the pussy whip. All right, dude. I got to get on with right, my show. All right. Okay, Scott Einziger, executive producer of the E Show, Robin Redzinski, producer. Now, are you saying if Scott's uh, wedding was earlier, you'd go? I'm not saying that. I'm just, I'm oh. just saying that I don't want to go because for a bunch of different reasons. A, I, mean, I can't stay up till midnight. B, I, I don't want to be gawked at and. And, and I just don't want to go. I hate going to weddings. I feel bad for the guy. Sounded like you enjoy them. You've been to so many. No. I, this is yeah, just, you're a real expert. I've man. only been to a few where I had to go. <laughs> where my mother calls up and goes, These are your, this is your family. You know all the intricacies. Yeah, I know all about this stuff. I've been to a million of these things. You know, and then you sit at the table for three hours with Jackie. He's all drunk. And we're discussing how angry we are. You know, because there's no food. Yeah. And we're waiting till midnight, and I want to go home, and I'm tired. You start kinda... goofing on the couple. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't yeah, want us there. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't come. Yeah, let me tell you something. You can put a real negative really? spin on your wedding. <laughs> All right, I got to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. What is it? Um, your dad's on the phone. Oh, yeah. I got to go talk to my dad. What's this about? I don't know. Hey, Dad. Dad? Yeah. Hey. I had to call in because I'm getting nauseous from this trial. I know. And I thought you weren't watching it either. I'd never watch it. You don't? i tell you one thing that does get me. First of all, Judge Ito never should have allowed this trial to be televised. Absolutely. He but has. you know that he can't resist the camera. Well, that's where he's, his big fallacy is. Now, the, the thing is, he had a chance to take it off when the cameras, remember the beginning of the trial, they, right. they panned in on the jury? Right. Yep. All he had to do at that time, if he was a real, true jurist, said, okay, that's it, because he knew it would be a circus. If this guy was born 50 years ago, he would have been a bur burlesque. Right. Now, what the I, just to say something about the motto. Yeah. What the motto said was not wrong. He used a, uh, you know, he mimicked. Right. And that's really what it was. But if you listen to the words he said and what a circus is going on, everything he said was correct. Right. And I agree with him, but uh, he shouldn't have tried to be a comedian. Let me tell you something. The only reason he tried to be a comedian because he was on that Jackasses show. Oh, I know that. And you go on that show, and it's so there's no humor. I mean, well, I just now is he, he got sandbagged. He got sandbagged. So but he, also, Ben brings up a good point. It doesn't matter what you say in this country. Nobody cares about the essence of what you say. They no. get all caught up in the uh, emotionalism of it. He made uh -oh. a point. I mean, this trial is being dragged out. And he's confusing the jurors because of all his different uh, findings and stuff. And, and can you imagine being locked up for nine or ten months? That's another thing. Mm -hmm. he, should, he should take. A, he should move this trial along. He's yeah. not moving it along. Where do you see a, a, ju a jury sequestered for nine to ten months? And I got no fear. Most of the jurors that went on there had their mind made up before they even heard the evidence. Of course. And they could have voted thing. before they sat down. Right. Let me tell you something that's unfortunate about the jury system. There really should be an IQ test given. I mean, for a, <laughs> no, no, he's not, right. Being funny. He is so for, right. For a trial that this is that is this intricate and involved. I, I mean, you really have to be smart to understand what's going on. Right. And 
first they get you give everyone an IQ test, which is I mean, not the meaning about that. Right. And then from that pool, pick out the people. Cause I be... guarantee you that that woman they released, I mean, I would like to administer, I will actually pay her to come on this show and, and be administered an Take IQ some test. Kind of an aptitude test. Because I, it is clear to me that she does not understand no. what the role of a juror is. She's worried about how the guy walks around. And right. Uh, and, and this one's too forceful. And uh, yeah, listen. Yeah, and, and and the other one cries too much. And uh, Denise Brown the cries. The prosecution is spinning its wheels. Yeah. Let me tell you, it's very sad that uh, this kind of a person, she should be ashamed of herself. She, as you were saying, Ormon, she has no understanding of what the jury system is about. It has nothing to do with with the type of people. That's a, hey, how you like this Judge Ito with uh, the clock? He's got clocks on his desk. His, uh, and I the, don't know. And I don't the computers. Hourglass. What he's doing is he's. Confusing thing. He's making a mockery of this thing. Yeah, he's got he's got to have a clock on his uh, these hourglasses. He collects hour, and then with the chairs, free chairs. They're and, worried about. And this admonishing of the of the of the prosecution defense that confuses these people with the low IQs. They don't know what the hell he's talking about. Yeah, it sounds like the, it sounds like the trial's over. I know, if you had a lawyer in the jury. Wrong is what it's yeah, of course. And uh, if they ever have another trial again on this thing. Well, let's hope they have twenty more trials well, so that OJ stays in prison. <laughs> But anyway, I just, I just had a sound off. Thank you. Uh, All Dad. right. Very good. Take care. That's my father who... Uh, On the O.J. Simpson track. And if you want to hear my mother's sound off, ask her about uh, Scott Einziger's Midnight Wedding. Oh. Hey, Dad, you what? hear this one? What? This guy I work with yeah. from the E! Channel. Yeah. Scott Einziger. Nice guy. I like him. Yeah. Competent guy, everything. Right. Invites me to his wedding. Correct. Huh? He's having a wedding. I, get, I think he thinks he's Prince Charles. Prince he, Charles got married earlier. Yeah. No, he's marrying Lady Di. Lady Di. Yeah. He's ma getting married. The service is Saturday night. Listen to this. Dinner is served at midnight. Midnight. How, how do you like that? I don't like it. Of course not. <laughs> well, because it's rude to anybody. Who eats dinner at midnight? I mean, why pick that time? You know why? Because they, in their mind, this is the most special event in the world. They don't realize, the rest of the world don't care that Scott Einziger is marrying his, his girlfriend. You have a wedding, 9 to 9.30. Right. Chow down, to have a lower derp from 9.30 to 10. Chow down at 10, go home at 12. Right. And that's late. And if anybody wants to stay past 12 and dance a little, fine. Exactly. And, and, and listen, this guy, he's a young guy. He, he must have some stamina. Right. Imagine somebody in their 50s or 60s goes to see him get married. They're waiting for dinner at midnight. You know. That means you're not out of there till 3 or 4 in the morning. What has your mother got to do with it? Oh, she's got plenty of feelings on it, I'm sure. <laughs> you didn't even have to ask her, huh? Oh, she, yeah, I know about all this. Okay. Right? Right. Is that all you're upset about? No. You got, another, you got any more agenda? No, I don't. I just I felt that I had to sound off about it. My poor father sits and sounds off all day in the house to, to the wall. <laughs> He's Nobody so happy. Answered. I got up this morning. I'm sounding off to your mother. She says, look, leave me alone already. <laughs> yeah, and, and thank God his son has a show that he can at least call in and sound off to more than, you know, one person. Yeah. Right. Because my mother doesn't care. My mother's a Pollyanna. She'll go, Ben, it doesn't matter. In the great scheme of things, we have to be friends with one another, and we have to get along, and if O.J. gets out, he gets out, it doesn't... Listen, you got to remind your mother, she's a purist. Yeah, she's a... She, you no, know what, I've been afraid to send my book to your parents, listen, because I, your mother I, is such I, a purist, no, I'm afraid a, it would be upsetting. I am so listen, glad you wrote this Robin. book. My mother, <laughs> my mother used to say to me, uh, Howard, what's uh, wrong with Robin? You, <laughs> I said, she's a wacko. And, <laughs> and she used to say, no, she's not. I, I don't see, Wait till she reads. <laughs> Robin? Yes? Yeah. Don't be a wiser now. I might expect to have that book soon. Oh, all right. You will have it to David. I was afraid to say that. No, in fact, you know... My wife kept saying, I gotta get a for a, for a loan of the book. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> no, wants a loaner. You don't have to borrow. It. No one wants to buy it. So I my, know. My sister said, well, Can I borrow out. it after we're oh, done? Don't be a wise guy. Yeah. It wasn't out. All right, take this it easy. It was three weeks ago. All right, go back to Judge Ito. Okay. All right. Take care. Have you ever watched the trial at no, all? No, I swear to God, I have never really? watched it. I, I will not watch it. In fact, I'm upset all the time with the news on it. I, I feel it's so demeaning, that whole thing, that anybody who watches it. I mean, it, it, it's just a travesty, and I will not watch it. I mean, it's painful. Right. I'd rather watch a Schwarzenegger movie than watch that crap. Right. There you go. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Is he on fire or what? Wow. I, I, he can't even watch it. Oh, no, he hasn't watched it. He watches uh, Kathy Lee with the sound off and his pants down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he watches. I see. <laughs> I swear to God, the man gets up every day, reads the paper, and starts screaming at my mother about all this stuff. And I said to him, you know, give her a break. She, goes, she doesn't care. He's but I home. like that. She says, 
Finn, don't get upset. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's not in the grand scheme of things. It's not that big a deal. All right. You know what? i, I got to take a break from Judge Ito and the uh, trial. We'll be back right after this. Next week's show, I'm not discussing OJ, and I'm not discussing anything else. Yeah, I believe that when I see it. I'm going back to just uh, fun. <laughs> i got to have laughs. <laughs> I can't be involved with court. Well, how am I supposed to avoid it? It is the news. Well, yeah. The news, you could do it. Actually, speaking of next week's shows, now it's a good time to remind all those women out there who want to get their breasts painted for Easter. Oh, next, yes. Next Friday. Very is good. Is Easter that close? Hey, what are we having Scott Einziger's bachelor party? Never mind all this I was going to talk stuff. to you about it after the show today. Why after the show? Well, I want to see what you can bring up now. Let's, let's have it today. I we, need it. We need a couple days' notice. What, Lonnie can't throw it together? No, he wants a couple. He wants to get the best girls... I see. You think ready. that there are girls there right now, Howard? We can do it next Friday. Okay. Next Friday it is. That's it. Yeah. All right, let's I mean, go. What's so, what's so t I mean, anybody busy? Easter party. Easter party. Yeah, is, Easter. Is that Don't you think Friday? Yeah, but who cares? Ah, you can't have it. <laughs> Don't you think that's a great Friday? Oh, good Friday. It's a great Friday. Right. Now, let Thank me, you. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Don't you think that we should... In other words, if oh. women are going to come up here and get their breasts painted, wouldn't you rather go to the club like a week later so you no. don't get it all at once? No. Nah. Sort of spread it out? I need a bachelor party. That's not for me. I know Einziger's getting itchy. He wants it. <laughs> he talked to you about it? I could, I could care less if he's there. <laughs> could be last Friday. Yeah, if he can't make it, you can still have the party. Yeah, and the guest list is as follows. You ready? Well, wait a second. We have to discuss this, too, because, you know, you, when you added Jeff Schick, originally he wasn't on our guest list. Right. You wanted to keep it limited, but That's I right. he's added now. No, I put him on because he's my pal. I got a guest list. I'll get it for you. All right, go ahead. Quickly get it. Now, I'm going to cross a few names off of there and add some other names. Dominic called me. How come I'm not going? I said, because you're a big fat pain in the ass, so that's why. It's already paid. He just wants to be where you are. I know. And you don't want a lap dance from him. He doesn't even get good lap dances. Okay. Now, originally it was Howard. Ball. <laughs> okay, it was Howard. Well, Gary, Howard, obviously. Yeah, Howard, Gary, Fred, Jackie. But it goes on. Howard, Gary, Fred, Jackie. Yeah. Billy West. Let me think. Billy West. He's always good. Yeah, he, cause he, he always, doesn't bother anyone. He only takes one girl. I know. Yeah, Billy's weird. Like, he gets to the club. He gets married when he goes there. He has a wife. Yeah. He's weird. <laughs> he sticks with one girl and gives her all his money. He, sta he sits in the chair. Girl comes over. It's usually the same one. And she starts dancing for him. He gets this weird look on his face. <laughs> and then, like, I disappear for a couple hours. I go to the dark room. We have a dark room and a, a room with lights. Huh. I'm always on the couch. Billy in the dark can't room. even move from that room. No, he likes it in the light. You got nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> I do. What are you doing back there in the dark? Oh, it's it, actually uh, probably nine times out of ten, um, uh, punching Neil <laughs> or throwing Ralph off the uh, couch. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the like guy stuff. But. Um, isn't it? You know what? To me, the most awkward part of going to scores and having these bachelor parties is the first moment the girls yeah. walk in. Yeah. It's like until we get started, it's always weird. It's one. It's, it's I feel like a like a horny old guy. You know what it is? It's one of those which things. I am. That's reality. Yeah. And then you forget. Yeah. It's a <laughs> junior of a party. It's, it's a junior, junior high school party. dance. Right. And the all the girls, girls are on one in. side. All the guys on one side. Yeah. And I, no one's talking. Could, could someone be in charge of sort of the initial ice breaking beside me? How would we do that? I don't know, but I always end up being the hey girls, how you doing? You know, I don't well, want to be Well, maybe it's guy. because it seems all the girls walk into the room, they go right for you because you're the star. No, they don't. Yeah, they do yeah, though. Wrong. I'm telling you what happens. I'm there. Okay. I'm always the guy who's sitting on the couch going, "Hey girls, come on in. You know, make yourselves comfortable. They Why really don't just you stand? They don't approach you guys. It's it's it, it's an awkward moment. I can't explain it. It's mm. very very upsetting. Why don't you just have the whole thing get going first and then walk? You know what's even more awkward? Just walking into scores and Lonnie and a bunch of guys are lined up. Like Howard, come on, right this way. We got beautiful girls. Uh, and it's like you know, oh man. I think it's that's when you really know what you're up to. <laughs> it's yeah, daylight. yeah, daylight really makes it look. Yeah, terrible. it feels real wrong. It always feels wrong walking in there. You know that feeling? You should go with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I was free to Why date, do you get over that feeling. I don't know. If I was free to date, I wouldn't have to go to scores. True. It's for married guys like me. We're on their last leg. Doesn't mean it's right. Oh, it's absolutely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so Billy's in. Yeah, of course. You gotta have Billy. Stuttering John. <sighs> Stuttering.
stuttering John. Now, he usually doesn't. I hardly ever see him there. You know what I mean? Yeah, he like, doesn't bother anyone. All right. right. Yeah, he's been on, on the good list lately. Gorilla? Gorilla, yeah. Okay. Gorilla's a good guy. Now, is Ganji out? Yeah. Ganji's off the list. And, and you know what? He was laughing in here because he, he knows he's going. He isn't going. Okay. Mr. Laughs. Ronnie the limo driver? Try Ron, Ronnie always. Okay. You can't keep him out. Uh, Neil? I gotta see Ronnie every day. Right. I think Neil's a lot of fun. That's okay. you want guys who are fun. I vote that Neil goes. Okay. Um, of course, Einziger and his two friends from E. Let me know the Who's guys. Who's the two guys? The, uh, Scott DePace and Gump that work in the back. Who's Gump? He's Eric, the tall guy with the crew car. Why are you calling him Gump? Because that's what everyone calls him. That's just what Gump? they call him. I, I listen. Him? I, that guy? Yeah. Does he look like Gump? Everybody tells him he looks like Gump, and they all call him Gump or Gumpy. And he answers to it. Bring him in here. I want to see if he looks like Gump. Come here, Gump. Eric looks like Gump? Well, because he's in the Marine. He's like a, you he's know, in he's the Marine. You know, he's got a funny he's a square haircut that oh. Tom Hanks had in the movie. He's a good-looking guy to me. Wish I looked like him. I just don't know what I look like. Let me see. You're yeah, better looking than I am. Take your hat off. Thanks. Not at all. No, of course not. I was told to bring these to show you. Forrest Gump? Yeah. So everyone's calling you Gump? Mm -hmm. It's because they're jealous. Because you're built and you're a good-looking guy. Thank you. Right, isn't you he? You didn't answer to that. I never call him Gump. I think that's just ridiculous. Does it bother you, Eric? Because if it does, I'll stop doing it. No, not at all. Why, it must be real neat when you're, like, walking around with a friend or showing them around and everyone's calling you Gump. Mm -hmm. Well, his sisters were up here next week and they had no idea. And everyone's Gump calling him Gump and they didn't know why. Oh, yeah, I mean, who needs that? I don't even know who they're talking to. You can be sitting around and somebody will say, hey, Gump, do blah, blah, blah. I'd rather and be... And then Eric gets up. I'd rather be dickwad. Ah. You know what I mean? Gump. It's like calling you a retard. Yeah, because I think of a stupid guy when I think of Gump, not... Hey, he was rich. I'll take the money. So you want to go to uh, the party? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that I think that Einziger wants them there because these are his everyday good friends. Yeah, who cares what Einziger wants? It's his party. It is his party. More guys you that, have to remember that. Oh, it's my party. The, wor the, the more guys, the less funny money you have each. Mm -hmm. They've uh, never gone before? You, you went to the last party? Yeah, yeah Super Bowl party. Did you? Yeah. All right. You didn't misbehave? Not at all. You don't even remember him being. You didn't bother me. You didn't look at no, me. No, he's limited. He's very limited. He only he only digs Asian women. Is that right? He, he hardly okay. bothers any of the others. Yeah. All right, fine. We'll get an Asian there for you. He Thank you. For Good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you're in. Bucks. All right, those two guys can go. <laughs> now, okay. Now we get. You know. You know whose name isn't even on this list. I just realized. Ralph. Yeah, we don't need him. Are you cutting Ralph out? <laughs> I would. I got to see the guy every day. You think I can cut Ralph out? <laughs> I knew you couldn't. Gary's face look. No, 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 no. <laughs> gay Rich. We said we want a Gay Rich, but yeah. we, we still want him. I like Gay Rich. Now, what about your IBM friend, Jeff Schick? Yeah, I told you. I got to have that guy there. He's taking Gangie's place. Right. And at one time, we had toyed around with uh, inviting our friend Greg, but yeah, I wasn't sure if you wanted to do that. Uh, Greg? I like Greg a lot. Right. And, and, he's he never never, been, and he never gets anything. He'd never been to one of these. And again, he, he would be no trouble. Yeah, Greg's okay. And that's our list. That's it. Let's wait a second. One, two, uh, 48. I can't think of anyone else. There's I'm 16 just names to think here, if but there's but, anybody missing. Okay, but it's now not, it's, it's, it's Scott Einziger's party. These it's got to be guys who know Scott. Scott the engineer. So, no. Uh, no, he can't go. He, he said he wasn't going. He can't That's go. That's why his, his like wife. That. His wife's got him completely. But wait a second. Work. What about the Wayne Siegels? Uh, what about? I like Wayne. I, but do you want him there? What about you know you have like a lot of friends, some of your lawyer friends. There's a lot of people what, that Dominic. Well, not only even that, but oh, a lot please, of, just getting out of hand. There's a lot of people that crawl out of the woodwork like the Thursday before, and they, they like, don't and then know you come Scott in Salem. and you say, Gary, you got to put I this mean, guy in the list. This guy in the list. Whatever his name is, Einziger. They don't know Scott Einziger. They don't know him. I, I agree. How can they be there? I'm, I'm just telling you what you're going to get. You're the one who gets it, not me. All right, that, please. Let's close. That's it. Right. That's it. That's it. Those guys got to be embarrassed to be there. So you let, uh, I'm sorry, what? Okay, yeah, that's it. We didn't leave anybody off. All right. The list is now closed. Somebody wants to get in. they got to do big favors for me. <laughs> now it's a pay thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> Could Dominic and Wayne end up there? Possible. They probably Hell, did. You know, if you don't, don't mention any more people, because you mentioned Dominic and Wayne, now they got to go. Dominic has true. been to these things. Yeah, he goes to all of them. Oh. Just, it, but don't mention any more on the air about it, about these people, about who's invited. This is the last discussion. So you're saying that those guys are in now? Yeah, because you mentioned them. How, how the hell can I leave them out now? Now they're going to think I'm a big dick. No, that's right. I can. Yeah, when you mention them, he's rejecting them. Gary, remember when you didn't invite Tom to your wedding? Right. Yeah. Now I got to invite those guys. 
But they don't yeah. know. But they don't know Scott Eisenberg. It's not his. It's not your party. It's yeah, Scott's sure. party. Okay, yeah, it's not my party. All right, good. Just go do it. Don't argue with me. Do what I say. And throw Town Car Jack on there. Go ahead. Get out of here. Oh, Town Car Jack? Yeah, I like him. <laughs> he makes me look handsome. All right. He stands right next to you. Yeah, he sits right next to me <laughs> while I'm getting lab dance. This was supposed to be the tightest list ever. Right. Yeah. This is just as big as it ever was. No one eliminated. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It's kind of weird when you, you go can't. in there and there's only seven guys. Right. You need a few guys. Yeah. You know, make you look less. Make it look look, look, lecherous, look you, less lecherous. You need a crowd to get lost. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I don't know why you have all these considerations. I think you like making yourself feel guilty and then doing it anyway. Right. That's <laughs> the whole thing you go through. I have to write a book about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You know what you ought to do? Take a break and do the news. All right. All right. We'll be back. <laughs> All the guys are mad because I said, boy, I said, you guys wore the war wrong thing for Scott Einzer's bachelor party today. Oh, what were you supposed to wear? I wear sweat, loose-fitting pants, see? Oh, I have my you scores dress out. for the occasion. Room to breathe. I have room to groove. Oh. See, Anything. they're restricted. They're wearing yeah. tight jeans. I go to Jackie, what did you wear for the bachelor party? She's wearing <laughs> jeans, and Fred's wearing jeans. I go... I got on my. I almost have my PJs on. Yeah, you're almost ready for bed. I was gonna put a pair of like like shorts with no underpants on under here. <laughs> this way, if any girl bumps into me, I'm gonna have maximum impact. Oh man, that's how sick I am. I actually planned this out. <laughs> you really thought about the way you dressed because of scores today. Th thought. I had Ralph come over to the house and pick out my sheerest underpants. Oh, look out! <laughs> he labeled them Scores underpants. I have a special pair of underpants that I only wear to Scores. That's, that's right. Planning. That's planning. I swear this to God, that's is true. A man I'll raise, on fire. That's a man on fire. <laughs> I'm gonna get to go somewhere. I'm gonna make sure it's fun. Remember yesterday we decided. Why don't you go get a buy a pair? Of, have one of the guys go out and buy a pair I of sweatpants. Oh, you did? Good. No, that's a smart man. <laughs> I just want to testify that's absolutely true. Yeah. Why? Why? What are you wearing? How are the girls gonna give you lap dance. I just figured you make have them work for it. I, I, I got boxer shorts I underneath boxer. so I could lose these. Yeah, oh. but he's not I a married run. guy. He could actually just take off his right. pants. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he doesn't need sweatpants. Do you remember we decided uh, how you could get to this, a new level yesterday? What was that? We don't want to talk about it. Did we want to talk about it on the air? Uh, oh, I know. Uh, oh. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what I want to say. I, don't know. Yeah, I, got, a wife, I got a wife who monitors the show. You don't want to talk yeah, about that. Close. <laughs> now I'm scared. What am I? Yeah, you, Ralph. Oh, you'll it. enjoy it. You'll find out. No, that's all right. I got uh, I got Ross coming. He's going to start it all. Oh, no. I told Ross he can come if he's the guy at the bachelor party who gets everyone somehow like you know. Stripped down and getting massages and towels. <laughs> Ross is great because no matter what you do, you don't feel dirty. Right. Because he's the dirtiest. Yeah. Uh, Guess who Ross might bring with him? Who? Celebrities allowed at the party? Mm, depends on who it is and if they're ugly. Flash? Oh, Slash can Flash. come. Flash? Yeah, Flash is in town. He I, thought, a... I heard he oh. couldn't do that kind well, of stuff anymore. Well, Ross was going to ask him. I said, he said, I'm going to be with Slash. I said, well, why don't you bring him? Yeah, that's cool. I would. That would be fun. Yeah, you'd like to hang out with Slash. Yeah. But yeah. You know what? Let's, let's, not let, let's not let Scott Einziger go, because he's not cool, and Slash will want to leave. <laughs> what are they funny, though? Is Scott coming? Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know if he can make it. Nobody's even asking he's coming. he's coming to his bachelor out. party. Oh. I can't wait for the big bachelor party. I think he's coming, because he looks very worried. Yeah. You know. No, I asked him if his fiance was okay with it. I said, yeah, she's pretty okay with it. Yeah. Pretty Which isn't, okay. she, won't, she won't be Monday. He's already pussy with. Hey, you know, I invited I invited Richard back there. You guys always leave him off the oh, list. No, no, no. I'd love for him to come. Yeah. I'd love for him to come. You've got to think a little for me. I don't. No, no, no. Uh, you wanted to keep the list. What happens is you say, listen, we're keeping it minimal. And then we get well, it we back. Are. Then we get back in the office and you add all your friends. Yeah. You well, feel bad. all i got to say is Richard's in my book. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't forget him. <laughs> well, I did. <laughs> so, uh... Gay Rich can't make it. He's got fun. Oh. oh. So who's going to be our gay guy? For Neil. Ralph. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Ralph will have to go coming. back to Neil. Are all the guys going to congregate here, and then we're going to go over? Yeah. Oh, good. So, you know, they'll bring <laughs> like him an in. Angry mob. Bring him in at 10 o'clock. They we'll get, they're getting here like around 11, 11, 15. So, can we late. expect we Ralph to wind up sleeping on the street again? <laughs> I don't know. But every time we have a bachelor party, it always ends up being good. we got to bring it to the next level. we got to somehow get into towels and get massages. Oh, God. The next I don't see why not. Yeah. Why don't you have a? It's your your bachelor. It's a toga bachelor party. Hmm. Toga bachelor party. <laughs> How do we do that? What is? What exactly are you saying? It's, it's, everybody has to wrap up in a sheet. That's all you wear. Just a sheet. Just you know, a sheet. 
That's a toga party. They were big in the 70s after Animal House came out. Theme. <laughs> Gary, go buy 20 sheets. <laughs> ah, I'm not kidding. If they miss all you wear to 40. your party. What do you mean 40? The girls no. got to be in them, too. No, the girls know what to wear. You don't want them no. in those same shit. No, you, you, you better get 40 because you might have to change them. <laughs> <laughs> here, get 40 sheets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gary, get yeah. down here. I need $5,000 of funny money and two more sheets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can get 40 sheets in case we need to change a sheet. <laughs> the case of tissues. Paper towels. Yeah. <laughs> I was smart last night. I did myself so I won't be too horny in front of the girls. How could that be? Now, how could you have done that last night and be able to regroup by today? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, see, I, I, thought, like, I thought the opposite. I didn't last night, so I was like a little Yeah, but you're single. Scarier. I'm married. I'll get carried away and break all, every vow. <laughs> right. But wait a minute. I thought you said that it wasn't good to do that too often. I do it every night. <laughs> so but don't listen to me. I do it every night, and it hurts now when oh, I do it. Man. I do it too much. What happened to that whole abstinence thing you were doing for a while? It was stupid. I can't do it. You know, he's he abstains when he's sick. That's what he Yeah, abstains. Yeah, it's like a smoker. They always give up smoking when they have a sore throat. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna stay off these things. Yeah, and then you get horny again. You're right yeah. back in. No, you have to empty the tanks, man, before you go over to scores. <laughs> but I can't understand how... Being how many guys are coming? About 20. And we got 40 women? Yes. That's good. You know why that's a good ratio? I'm, I'm going to explain my feeling. All right. Sometimes I end up with a backlog of women, and I have like five women all crawling all over you me. You still will. No, if I want you, today this is your job. I want you to just monitor her. Monitor. I would like once in a while have like one woman, and then maybe two. Yeah, they, I can't handle do you five. Move they line or up. Do you sit in one oh, no. Spot? I, I plunk down like a tree. <laughs> I plant myself. Roots actually grow out of my butt <laughs> into, the, into, the, uh, into the couch. Uh -huh. No, I sit in one special spot. Same spot every time. Does not so move. What is that? And I don't move for two a and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. Your legs Offer fall up asleep. some funny money for your, a lap. Your day. legs spread, and the girl gets there and dances for you. <laughs> and then what happens? Does she move off? No, no, okay. no. They go, do you want me to stay? In fact, and you got to drag them off. Lonnie told me to tell you guys one more time to remind you guys, don't let five girls dance for you at once. Don't let them push you around. I mean, they're there to have fun and to make money, yeah. but you're the one with the money. You should be telling them what to do. I know. What happens is five girls yeah. pile up on you, and then they all go, give me 50 apiece, yeah. and there's all your money gone. Yeah. There were these three girls last time. They were like an attack team. They go around everybody, all three of them, and they hit you, Yeah. and then they'd want like $150. I know. But I've been there with you, boss, and you know what happens? You get like almost like drunk, and I'll go, hey, Howard. <laughs> I'm a sucker. And, but I'll go, I'll go, Howard, you want me, I'll, I'll, I'll like, no, I'll go, Howard, you want me to get rid of this girl? And go, get out of here. Yeah, I know. It's so right. much fun. You get dizzy. So you don't ever change girls? No, no, they, they come, and, but I don't change, if once one comes over there with me, and then there's 30 by they the end of the night. They just up. Yeah, and then I can't even, and then I can't even breathe. <laughs> it's a gaggle. <laughs> the perfume. Yeah. You're just dizzy. Man. Yeah. Do you want me to, like, I used the only way to get rid of him is to fart a lot. You know, the fun, the hey, funny... Gary's not supposed no, to be having fun. He's supposed to be watching your girls. Yeah, well, Gary has his fun, but he can yeah. watch what my girls. I have, I Gary, used... just once in a while, like, pull the back three or four off me. I usually <laughs> have an opportunity to talk to the girls before yeah. they come out. Okay. Is there anything you'd like me to say? Like, should I say to them, <laughs> hey, Howard loves to have you guys, but you don't all have to pile up on him. You could all take turns seeing yes, Howard. Yes, I would, yeah, but do it, do it quietly away from me. So oh, I don't no, know. no, then how are you room? ever going to get into those extended conversations that you really like about how big you are? Yeah. But, but, <laughs> See, you know what? You know what? You know what, Gary? Don't even bother. Just let, whatever happens, happens. Okay. okay? You give that speech, then no one will come over to me. I'll be sitting there by myself. I'll be looking at Ralph. Yeah. I, you know, my funniest memory of scores is one time we were there, and there were about five or six girls around you, and mm. you just leaned back, you looked over at me, and you had this look on your face like you were drunk or high or what, and you go, yeah. I got to get out of here, man. I, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Saturation point, huh? Yeah. I'm going to go home and beat my wife. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. Here. Dance for me. All right, Ralph. Out. 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 There's another guy who's not funny. Your yeah. wife, Ralph. I know. Ralph's the least funny guy. Real unfunny. <laughs> Since we got Scott Einziger's uh, bachelor party today. Yeah. That's pretty exciting. And that girl is coming in today, right, who slept with her mother-in-law? Yeah, she should her be here. Her future mother-in-law? Yeah. And I'll get into a blonde wig and a dress, and she can reenact that with me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea what she looks like? Hey, it's Good Friday. Uh, you know what? It's Great Friday. Yeah. <laughs> great Friday. Very holy day. Oh, yeah. Man.
for us. Incredible Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we always try to make Good Friday a, an incredible Friday. <laughs> well, you're thinking about what happened on this day. Yeah. Oh. And it, it could be a bummer. <laughs> you know what? I don't think there's one of us who even knows what happened on this day. <laughs> Exactly yeah. what was it? <laughs> oh, that's right. Jesus got nailed to the cross. Yeah, wasn't this the day he died? Yeah. 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 He had already been nailed up there for several days. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have a sound effect for that, though. That was somebody building scores. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Well, he died for your sins. Oh, oh, that's Jackie, you've never really been to a scores party, have you? Yes, I have. Oh, you have? I was at the one where the uh, spin doctors were. Yeah, oh. the second Fred right. Beckler. But I only stayed for like an hour or so. But I mean, you never seem to really get into it. What are you talking? I don't. I mean, I don't really pay attention to you. You but... don't see any. You. you <laughs> All right. Know, okay. You can't even good. see you. Okay. There's such a crowd around you. You exactly. were sitting next to that crazy redheaded guy, and I actually tried to go over and talk to you a few times. The... Oh, you mean the lead singer of the Spin Doctors? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He yeah. came... All I know is he was running around naked. Between the two of you, there was like the girls like three deep around you. Seriously. Yeah. It was fun, though. He was running around. <laughs> I don't know. Somehow somebody stripped his clothes off and he was naked. <laughs> Wait a second. And I had that thing happen to me, too. With, At least I thought he was. <laughs> with the two girls where they come up and they both yeah. say, That's let us dance, and then they dance, and then they say, can we do another one? Then, and they take all your money. And right. Money's gone. Well, it's hard to bully them and say, no, just you, and you go away. Well, how's it work, man? Seriously. If a girl does it, you see, you know what I don't can't understand? When does a dance begin and when does song. it end? It's right. a song. Yeah, but I don't know. Do they play the yeah, song? The song they they the the same different songs in the song segue, but when you hear a song end, in fact, sometimes, when the song's over, the girl's like, uh, she's dancing all over you. And then she just comes to an abrupt halt and puts her, her top back on and like, walks away. No. That's right. I'll figure it out. But it, songs are what decides what a dance is. Okay. Now, why is it that when I read about Charlie Sheen and Cato going to scores, they say something about they had a wonderful time in a private room? That's where we are. We have our own oh. private party room. Okay. Yeah. And we have a wonderful time. Yeah. <laughs> we do. We're just like, oh, we, we can't stop going back. It's but embarrassing. We have to stop talking about this because we have to talk about girls who are in the lobby to get painted for Easter. Oh, oh. no, somebody's joking. All right, let me take a break. Well, I met a lot of different girls with a lot of different chest sizes today, some real, some not so real. And I got to tell you something, all of it was fun. And Easter's a great holiday. And this is what you... You never, never enjoyed Easter so much before. Mm. You know why I like these bunny ears? I think they make my nose look smaller. <laughs> <laughs> the bigger the ears, it takes away from my nose. <laughs> well, that was a lot of fun, especially Uzo, my African princess, who comes I in here. I don't get that. Wow, that's wild. She was shaking, Gary, said she just ran out. I wish that we could interview her to find out what's going on. She becomes totally incapable of speech. I know. I tried to say to her, what's going on here? Let me help you through this. We don't know anything about her. We, we don't, don't know nothing. anything about her. Howard? Yeah. I once had like a long conversation with Uzo. Yeah. And she was so outspoken. She was telling me how she thinks that blacks are stupid, or, you know, are, are stupider than whites, and how really, and how all black women have big butts, and she's like doing this whole thing. Yeah. Right? But then when she comes in here, she, she I know she gets she gets nuts. Doesn't make any sense. All right. Well, let's not try to analyze it. I like it. <laughs> Robin's books on sale. She had a big book signing yesterday. My parents were there. <laughs> Alex, should we go to the book signing? And then Robin was late again, of course. <sighs> I was not late. It was not an intentional thing. And uh, my parents start yelling at me because Robin was late. That was great. Thanks. <laughs> they called me after we had a great time. I wanted to call them to thank them for coming because I really enjoyed seeing them. It was wonderful. But if they're going to yell at me, I'm not going to. And my mother goes, do you think, Howard, we should go to Robin's book signing? I said, yeah, she'd love it. I mean, just don't be a pain in the ass. Go over there, because it's near their house. Uh-huh. Well, if you think it's okay... I said, of course it would be okay. I mean, she would love it. She's, she's looking for people to show up. <laughs> well, we're going to go, your father and all. I said, okay, go ahead, have fun. Little did I know I'd receive a lecture afterwards. <laughs> Call back. We had a wonderful time. We got there. And um, we decided to eat dinner. And this young man comes over to the table and tells me the dinner is paid for. And your father and I were so surprised. Then we went over and there was a big crowd. And we're walking in and uh, this man comes up to me. Your listeners love you. Tell the Spanish people everyone loves you. <laughs> 
You tell the Spanish people, hey, Gary, while I'm doing this, get the Department of Justice telephone number. I'm calling them. Scott, you're inspired. Yeah. Tell the Spanish people, everyone loves you. Thank you, Howard, for a good show, they say. And this man comes up to me and says, I love you, Mrs. Stern. I want to marry you. I want to date you. And I said to him, I'm too old for you. And he said, I don't care about age. I care about beauty. And then, then my father picks up the phone. Yeah, I said he should go date her. <laughs> and you know what I said to him? I said to him, shut up, sit down. They, all these kids went crazy. <laughs> and they're so well behaved, your fans, and so nice. And your father says, shut up, sit down. And they go crazy. <laughs> I said, yeah, I know, Ma. Then we get in, and Robin isn't there. It's already 5.30. It was called for... No, it was 6.30. It was called it for 6 o'clock. It was not 6.30. And we Stop get it. in there. She's not there on time. <laughs> and she should know. I said, Ma, you want to know the truth? I'm not responsible for Robin. If Robin <laughs> continues to be late to her book signings, hey, there's nothing I could do. Maybe it's... A, you know, I said, you want me to... So they're yelling at me. They're yelling at my father. Oh, goes, and I that's not right no because we got there. to defend me. Yeah, my father... She goes... And he goes... Well, there is no defense. He goes, <laughs> my father says to me like this, he goes, so we get in there and they, they, because we were causing such a scene, they had to lock us in a room. <laughs> I said, I wish I would have locked you in there for longer. I got the same rap from my mom, except it was more like, uh, it was like, what a sin. All those people waiting, 640, no Robin. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Man. And my then, father, my father. How long, did, wait, how long did you stay? I stayed l way till after eight. Oh, okay, okay. Did you sign everyone's book? Everyone's book. Yeah, but they had to cut off the line, so you, you could have signed more books. That's books. what well, I heard. Right. I don't know. But you know what? So I started trying to describe to my parents. I said, you know, maybe Robin's a little oh, insecure. Thanks, you're, thanks a lot. You're helping yeah, me. Yeah. I'm just doing whatever somebody tells me to no, do. No, you're not. You're the boss. <sighs> so, hey, shh. So I said to my parents, I said, hey, you know, maybe Robin's a little insecure. She's waiting to get there a little late because, you know, she, you know she's like, oh, my God, are people going to be there? You always worry right. if people are going to be What? Listen. She can't conduct... That's some way to conduct a life. I wish the people responsible she for this would call in and take the blame. Why should she be insecure? That's not a way... She should have gotten there at 5 o'clock... <laughs> To take care. Of course, people are there, and you leaving can't. Leaving at four thirty. I thought I'd be there at five thirty. No. Well, limo driver doesn't know what time to leave the city to get you to the uh, appearance. Did you, did you really leave at four thirty on the button? Well, actually, no. no. The limo driver was late. Oh. Right. So okay. I was down, and I had to wait mm. for them to come. Listen, that's you can't you can't piss on your fans. Now I didn't. That, I was there waiting in the lobby when the limo guy. You know what? Up. I don't even care if you piss on your fans. I don't want a lecture from my parents. Uh, I wish they hadn't gone. I, you know what? I really resent your saying that yeah. I pissed on anybody. Well, because I was where I was supposed to be when I was supposed to be there. They were late. And then we ran into traffic jam after traffic. Something really? happened on the Deegan. Mm -hmm. And then something happened somewhere else. And we so were finding second. one traffic jam after another. My mother even said, she should have left it too. <laughs> so then she says, yeah, it's called rush hour, Robin. That's why that's, there's always those accidents I on the I did Deegan. what they told me to do. I don't right. travel to and from right. that, the city every day. All right, all right. I don't know what the traffic is like anymore. Right, fine. I don't care. You don't understand. <laughs> I don't care. My parents care. And they're yelling at me. And, and it's like, I made sure to stay until every book was signed. Okay, so I'm sitting there going... I didn't going, know they were cutting off the line. Well... Nobody told me. Well, my parents told me everything. And my parents go, and uh, we get there, we're in the room, and then uh, she should be on time. <laughs> because the people were waiting, it was terrible. And if she's insecure, oh, that's not to be... That's Howard's interpretation. She should not be insecure. And there's going to be people... And, blah, 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 blah. and I said, Ma, I swear to you, I can't take it. I just can't take the call. I can't. I, I just can't take it. Then my father goes, then she comes, she's signing the books, and I sat down next to her because I was there for moral support. I, wanted, I really appreciate yeah, I wanted to give her support. And then uh, they came over and told me not to sit there because I was disrupting the line and that the people were stopping to talk to me. So I had to get up. And I think I did the wrong thing. I'm sorry I did it. I said, you're sorry you sat in a chair next to Robin? I said, Dad, 
What do you? Well, he did disrupt the line, but he didn't know he was there for moral support. <laughs> I'm just listening to this dumb conversation, and you know every stupid thing that happened to them. I was just like, I can't take it. I got to get out. I got to get out. <laughs> I want to be like that 18-year-old girl. Her parents abandoned her. Go move with your uncle. Who's yeah. A paranoid I want to live with a paranoid schizophrenic. I want out. <laughs> I want to know how I get out. <sighs> well, I was really happy to see them. I'm sorry I caused them pain. No, no, you didn't cause them any pain. You caused me pain. I'm sorry I caused you pain. And thanks for explaining me. Yeah. Maybe Robin's insecure. No, I didn't quite say it like that, but almost like that. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty close. All right, Robin, listen to me. We have a lot to get to. I, you know, I want to call the Department of Justice in a minute. It occurs to me it might not be open yet, but we're going to call. And the reason I am calling is that I, I was home yesterday getting incensed. Uh, I am really done with this, uh, the, the Spanish people being upset with me. I feel at this point what they're using it for is to get on TV mm -hmm. because they've never really been noticed before. And it's ludicrous. Every article you read, they are upset because Howard Stern made fun of the Spanish music, of Selena's music. I, I mean, let me tell you something. That is absurd. But the thing that really started getting me nuts is there's some justice of the peace. He's called the judge. He's down somewhere in Podunk, Texas. I don't know where Why in Texas. Why don't we know where? The guy, the guy has never heard my broadcast, didn't hear what I said about Selena, has no clue. We don't even know what it's near, this little no. town. The guy's name is Kanye Albano. I don't even know his name. And I'm reading this thing, and he makes a statement that he doesn't know what the fuss is. What is it? Your mother's on the phone. Oh, my mother? I I'm done with my mother. What? What is it? You're done with your mother? Yeah, I've talked about you already. Listen, I just came in on the tail end of a conversation. Yes. But I just want Robin to know that's not what we said. It's exactly what you said. No, it's not what we well, said. Well, first, before we do, highly... I wanted to thank you. That was very sweet of oh, you to come. We it was came, wonderful oh. to you. We came with all good intentions. All and my good son intentions. is now turning it into a terrible I don't happening. hear what he says. I was very grateful to see you. Oh, no. all right. That's you, you don't, have, don't, don't call me and start complaining. Now you're grateful? <laughs> What do you mean, call you and start complaining? You complained the whole calling. time. I was so excited. I was telling you what happened. Yeah, and you told me she was late, and you want to know why she's late. And you start lecturing me on why she shouldn't I be late. I don't want to know why she shouldn't you. be late. That's what her problem. You have I don't answer for her. Things. What are you, a troublemaker? Yes or no, was she late? She was late. <laughs> and did we talk about it on the phone? Yes. Okay. But it was one sentence, Rob. Oh, one sentence, huh? Believe me, I, I. you know what? It was a mishap. Whatever. And, don't explain it. I'm not I interested. Don't and you know what mind. your father just said? You what? Know what your father what just did he, he say? Said he's never talking to you again. Uh, <laughs> all right. So now, now how do I get you to stop talking to me? How do I get you to stop talking and to me? Now that we're on these subjects, I have something to say about that shindig you're going to today. Oh, who cares? <laughs> what do you mean, who cares? Our guy's getting married. I we have bachelor party. You, I just want you to picture this scene. If you were a kid and your father or your mother went to a shindig like that... Who cares? You would have cared. Let me tell you something. My father dreamed of shindigs like that. It's disgusting, and I want you to know that I think it's disgusting. Hey, guys getting married. What? I'm wearing sweatpants. And I once <laughs> told you that you set the tone of that... Of, of the people that work around you. Of course I do. And that's the tone that you said for all these married men. You want to know something, Ma? I've been married 20 years. You know that I think it's disgusting. And if you were my husband... You, I would never be your husband. I would never marry someone like you. To my house. I would never marry a controlling like answer. Oh. I would but never... No, but you would never come back. And you want to know something? I would never be married to you. I could not be married to a woman like you. Oh, you couldn't. My huh? wife is the complete opposite oh, of you. Oh, yeah. She's the complete opposite. She sure is. She loves She's not a controlling to yenta. She She's loves not jealous. Going to that part. Yeah, and what do you think you got there? You think you got King Solomon sitting next to you that all the women are going to throw themselves all over him if he goes to a party yeah, like are that? You King Solomon? No, I'm King just going Solomon to celebrate a guy's getting married. King Solomon. You mean Dad can't see naked women? Something. Oh, for you goodness sake! You got a big sake. mouth. If I was married to you, I would have shot myself in 1976. Oh, please! Oh. All right. I couldn't and take I just it. Wanted Robin to know. You think Dad's a man? I really appreciate. Thank you so much. Do you think Dad's a man? Is that a man? Pardon? Is that a man? Is that a man? Is he a man or a woman? What do you think? I ask you a question. Is he a man or a woman? What do you think he is? He's a woman. He's a woman? <laughs> yeah. 
He's a woman. He sits there and takes this crap. Oh. He should cut. You know what? I'm going to get him on the phone. I'll invite him to the scores. Yeah, yeah oh, invite no. him to the scores. He would never go to a thing like he that. He would die to go to that. Think too much of me to go to a thing like yeah, that. He don't think about you at all. Yes, he does. <laughs> And I want you to know what I think about it. Who cares what you think? I'm not married oh, to you. you care. You wish I was married You're to you. She's in love with me. Here. You're in love with You're me. You're a big shot with the microphone. That's right. I'll Who cares what you think? I'll let you know some more. Who cares? Okay. Keep your mouth shut with that stuff. You're That's ridiculous. That's a... Yes, I'm seeing her tonight. Talk to your mother. Keep your mouth shut. This is for everybody to hear. Listen, let me tell you something. At yeah. some point, I'm 41 years old. So what? I'm in a marriage. What does that mean? It's, it's got nothing to do you're with you, my marriage. You're 41 years old and you're stupid. <laughs> my marriage has nothing to do with you. You've got to understand that. This is my life that I'm, I'm living. I'm not talking about your marriage. My I'm life has the way you conduct yourself. Yeah, but it has nothing to do with you the way I conduct myself. Yes, nothing. It does. No, it doesn't. It absolutely does. No, I'm free of you. No, you're not. I left your house no, when I was 18. Free of me. I left your house. And listen. I, I, I'm glad I told you what I thought. What, are you washing something? Yes, I'm getting ready for tonight. I have things to do. So, I want to wish everybody a happy holiday. And uh, I'll see you later. You're not in charge of me. Huh? That's the way you chose to live your life. Locked in that house, staring at each other. Staring at I'm not gonna, I would not choose to live my life the way you do. Well, you can do what you want, but... The I'm, two of them stare at each other. They can't even watch a separate television program. I'm, my I'm giving my... Guess what I'm doing, Ma? I think I'm, giving Dad a, 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 I'm giving Dad a movie tonight. A movie with, with violence in it Wonderful. that you can't watch. Wonderful. She, she's like, she, and she's what are like, you trying to break and them don't up? make up stories about me. When you talk about me, you get me on the phone. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clip the umbilical cord right now. Listen, right. here it is. Here I go. There it is. Cut. Okay. Tell Dad okay. Sally Kirkland was asking about him. About who? About Dad. Yeah. Yeah. So. Just tell him. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I'm, I, you know what? Try to treat me like a friend. Come on, I have things to do. Uh, oh, later. sorry. Who asked you to call in then? Well, I just had to make a statement. Hey, get that on the phone. Let him talk about this judge. Who, this so-called judge. What about him? He's my father's on fire. About the justice of the peace? So, listen to this. A justice of the peace decides that he is going to use his office. Now, this is, a, this is an office that is granted to him by the United States government. You want to talk to your father? What? This is your father's domain. Yeah. All right. You want to talk to your father? What? <laughs> you want to talk to your father? This is because. your father's domain. All right. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? That's Fred. That's Fred, Ma. Being disrespectful, I don't believe Fred does. She hates when uh, the guys imitate her voice. <laughs> hates it. I love you, Mom. I love but you. Got, you know, I really do love but you. Sometimes you need a little straightening act. Yeah. You're a big shot these days. So you need me to... Yeah, they're that. all afraid I'm a big shot. I'm going to become a big shot. Wait yeah. till you see. Yeah, well, I'm not going to even take your shot. calls. To me, you know, big shot. Yeah. Yeah, that's her, that's her way of proving... Like, like you're no big shot. That's, that's her right. thing. And if she, that's yeah. right. Well, you certainly I am a big shot. She, does, she wouldn't uh, tell her opinion to. Hmm. That's right. I am a big shot. Okay. Right. Now I like to. I like you to know what I'm I want to be a big shot to everybody okay. but your mommy. Right. And I'm thinking. You, I'm very disappointed when I hear those things that you're carrying on. Oh please! I need an outlet too. I'm a man. Yeah. You think? I, Go look. home and look at your three children. You're not the outlet. I'm too busy. Too busy <laughs> with what? I'll see them later. I want to know what you're doing. Oh, I'm watching a couple of girls dance. I'm, a, I'm appreciative of the arts. Oh, that's what you're doing? Yeah. I have tapes of girls dancing. You can watch that. Not the same. Yeah. Mm. The problem, the tapes you have, all the girls look like you. All right. <laughs> Alex, my, mother's, my mother is very conservative. Did you want to talk to your father? Yes or no? Okay. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Ray. <laughs> Hi. That went well. <laughs> you know, you have a, a knack of putting your foot in your mouth. Hey, t do me a favor. T tell the truth. How much would you love to be at Scores this afternoon? Why are you looking? Make trouble? <laughs> <laughs> My father would die to go. I would invite him. I would have him down there. I swear to God. No, I don't think you want to be with your father when sure you're do. down there at Scores. Yeah.
I should be nice to be with my son. Yeah, really? that's true. My dad and I, when we were young, remember we went to see Barbarella together with Jane Fonda? <laughs> that's right. Oh man, I wasn't. I wasn't unhappy. You were uncomfortable. Oh man, was I uncomfortable? Yeah, you were. Well, you wouldn't have a good time at school. Listen, today. I thought it was party of sex education, but it didn't go over well. <laughs> Jane Fonda is running around with plastic over her breast. You can see right through. And, yeah. I, and I'm sitting here with my dad, and I'm getting excited. And my dad's there. I go, he must be getting excited. <laughs> Look over, my dad's pants are down. Oh, God. <laughs> it was in Radio City Music Hall, wasn't it? No. This is not. Barbarella didn't play radio. This was in Hempstead. This was in Hempstead. <laughs> oh, then he could have. Yeah. <laughs> so there you have it. That's Thanks. what's happening. All right. We got a bachelor party to go to. Scott Einziger's bachelor party. Very important party. It's a guy we really care a lot about, so we. I'm going to the trouble of throwing him a party. Who's the party for again? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Good pal. Good pal. Close pal. Yeah, close pal. Yeah. Have, has anybody here ever said more than two words to the guy? I do not know one thing about that nope. guy. <laughs> Me neither. I know his girlfriend beeps him every time he says something. He works down the hall. He's got body hair. He's going to be one of those guys who doesn't even look at any of the girls. <laughs> he's afraid that someone's going to tell his wife. <laughs> Scott, the engineer, can't even go because his wife won't let him. That's what I understand. Scott's such a catch. Yeah, I'm sure all the girls will fall in love with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame he's not gone because he makes us all look yeah. so much better. I know. I Every, like... Doesn't everyone who comes up here to visit fall in love with Scott? Heather Locklear yeah. get out of here. She's so in love with him. Yeah, she, she, it's just the spite she married Richie Sambora. <laughs> it was on the rebound. Yeah. Go dance in front of Howard. <laughs> He's going to get crazy if he sees you near me. Hey, where's Scott? Rub it in a little bit. Yeah. Jackie the Joke Man Marlowe, Jackie's Wild Comedy CD cassette, only $10 plus $3 shipping and handling. Joke Land special, buy two, get one free. Call 1-800-323-KING. Next Thursday, it's Jackie, April 20th at Rascals Comedy Club in West Orange, New Jersey. For filthy jokes and info, call 516-922-WINE. Remember, 516-922-WINE is not a pay service. And uh, Robin will be doing, a, I mean, Jack will be doing Robin book highlights. Yeah, my book is available. You can of course. Get it, you know. Absolutely. Uh, All the bookstores. It's already in its ninth printing. <laughs> go, make show, baby boy, your time. Go, 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 go make show, sleep right through your pile. Now, Wiki's for celebrating. Here to give you body waiting. Comes out of your ears before you're you're drunk. drunk. Yeah. It's an important song. <laughs> to order a signed copy of Stuttering John CD, call 201942. Ouch. And if you're planning a wedding or party, you need a DJ. Call Scott the Engineers Rocket Entertainment. It's 718 Bag 5040. <laughs> How's it feel to be so pussy whipped? I'm not. I could have gone. That you, I that have, you can't go to scores. I could have gone, but I, I have. Gone. What do you have? I'm what do you have? I'm going away for the weekend, so I'm leaving right. Sure. Right. Yes. Yeah, where are you going? Nowhere. You're going, going home. I'm going. He had to leave to go home. Yeah, I'm going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I treated Jesus. Better. How how upset are you that you can't go to school? I can. Why don't you be I, honest? No, I'm upset. So why don't you come with us? Why don't you I come can. over for an hour? Yes, you can. I have some. Can you come over for a half hour? Oh, wherever you're yeah, going, there's a deadline minutes. that you're getting. Deadline. There? Oh, Very Scott's not there. The whole place will fall apart. <laughs> where are you going? I'm serious. You're going away for what? Passover or something? Yeah, I got to get on the road. Oh, where are you going? For the rest of the Jews. Right. The Jews are going to clog up all the roads. That's right. No wonder New York hates all the Jews. They clog up the roads with your holidays. What is it? Only Jews drive? I guess. They leave. There's no traffic. That's right. Like cholesterol. Scott, wherever you have to go, it's probably not till dinner time. <laughs> no, actually, uh, I was I was leaving, you know, uh, right after. Where are you going? What state? Uh, I'm going to Southern Jersey. Oh, yeah. Southern Jersey. Oh, really, yeah. Uh, far. Oh, yeah. It? yeah. That's far from where you live. <laughs> well, it's about, you know, a two-hour drive. Sure. Two-hour drive. Uh, <laughs> So I have, I have no there. time. I have to be there at 6, so I believe at noon. I gotta be there when they blow the chauffeur. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be over with the girls, so have a good time. Hey, you have a good time as well. Oh, so nonchalant, like, oh, it means nothing to oh, me. Yeah. Well, you have a good time, uh, too. Uh, <laughs> I sewed my way over. Meanwhile, you, you're, you have to be here till noon for your job. I'm telling you, you can leave early. Come here at 11.15. Go with us at 11.15. Oh, 45 minutes will be at scores. Okay. Ah, uh, uh, look at him. He can't go. You know he can't. I look at the guy. So pussy with me. So <laughs> pussy with me. What's it feel like, man, to be so pussy with Not pussy with You are, man. I'm not. So once you come over, you don't have to. You officially don't leave work till noon. I'm telling you, you can leave 45 minutes early. Party with us for a half hour. Okay. So you're going to come? Yeah. Uh, All right. Sure. Uh huh. You're not going to, are you? <laughs> Tell He's the truth. Lying. I'll think about it. So you're pussy with No. Why are you saying no? Aren't you? I'm going. How am I pussy with? 
I'll tell you how unpussy whipped I am. I had Gary call my wife to make sure. Yes. That my afternoon was free. Okay. Because I told her I'm going to be at scores. You asked. That's your problem. You're fat, you're bald, you're pussy Even whipped. this 45 minutes that would be wor work time for him, and nobody would ever be, be able to discover <laughs> that he no. wasn't working. He can't go. No. Because he's pussy whipped. Oh, you mean I, should, have to I, I should sneak up? Sneak no, no, it. it's no. your time. But you don't have any time. It belongs to your wife. You're not a man. You're a woman. Fine. I'll accept that. But you won't admit you're pussy whipped. <laughs> If you want to, if I'm telling you at well, 11.15... his wife doesn't allow him to say that either. I, yeah, you're not allowed to say a pussy whip or your wife yells at you, I've right? I've done it many times in the past. Haven't I? Well, if he gets on the air and says he's pussy whip, yeah. he, he gets it, yelled at. He catches no, I don't. Don't so say it. Admit it. Pussy whip. You're, so why won't you go with us from 11.15 to 12? I know you like to look at the girls. I said I'd think about it. What is to think about well, it? If, you, if you've I'm done it once... Whip. Oh, yeah. See? Now, what did your wife say? If you've done it once? She, no, she didn't say that. <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> his wife, he was about to tell us what his wife usually no, tells him. No, if no, you've done no. it once. It's enough. She didn't say that. <laughs> I've done it, I, you know, I've done it more. Well, you're, I've you're done it many, you. many times. <laughs> Jackie can't even help me. Oh, it. Jackie. I mean, come great. On. Jackie's really going. Really Jackie's great. pussy whooping, not like you. It's a great... Uh, it's, it's Jackie, you're able to go, right? Yeah, no, what happened? Happened? I joke about this. Where all the guys die and go to heaven. Right. And uh, St. Peter says, all right, I want all the guys. Oh, uh, we're going to hear a joke. Oh, no, no, yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to break my momentum. <laughs> please, Jackie's all confident he didn't have now. Any he did a good book reading yesterday. Now he's telling jokes. St. <laughs> Peter, is that the gate? As soon as I hear that, I'm out of there. Ah. <laughs> All the guys die, and St. Peter's at the gate. And there's a black guy, a Jewish guy, and a Puerto Rican. Aaron on his shoulder. Well, and St. Peter says, All the guys who yeah. love their wives get over here. We're on 92 Wine Monday with Robin's book. All right. <laughs> And all the guys who hated their wives get over here. You'll get yours, Chris. <laughs> Careful. I got a forum. <laughs> He's on a roll. Uh, so Jackie's even going. Even Jackie's going. And his wife is totally he hasn't gone the controlling. Time. He hasn't gone No, the but he's going. Okay. That's the point. He's being a man today. Okay. Jackie that, breaks out and becomes yeah. a man every once in a while. Yeah. I'll, I'll go to the next He gets one. nervous because he's afraid he's going to be talked one. about. I told him I'm not going to talk about what he does. You do what you want to do. The next one. You walk in there. You're I don't tell what guy's doing there. It's I, like no, a secret society. It's you a guys boys keep club. Each other's I don't do anything anyway. So what is the? Uh, there's no exactly. You're just going to go there and eat something, and take a look. That's right. Eat. Looks like you'll eat a lot. <laughs> go for a free meal and. Uh, That's all. I will be at the next one. Oh, you can't. Why can't you go today between Why? eleven and fifteen? Because my wife has my genitals. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that. <laughs> Why can't you go from eleven fifteen to twelve? I got work to do. Okay. Well, uh, all right. I'd like to see that. <laughs> That's the first. Finally. What? That's the first. Is right. <laughs> are, you, are you doing a lot of spots? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm coming right back. So, all right. I mean, there you go. All right. Good. All right. We got to go. I'll see you. Uh, whatever. Monday. <laughs> right. I'll hear about the big party. That's good. Yeah. I'm going to school. It's good. <laughs> All right. So you, honey. Hey, are these microphones off? Hey, oh, I'm okay. going. I just didn't want to sit on the air. <laughs> and I'm also going to go on Prodigy. <laughs> By myself. <laughs> is, is Mike on? Oh, of course not. Oh, we, we done? Which is a bigger crime? Yeah, which is a bigger crime? Going to scores or going on Prodigy yep. yourself? There are. Do they have a computer at schools? <laughs> you break Imagine he goes to schools. No There's no crime. Because I know every time no he's crime. on Prodigy, you get somebody over his shoulder. No, not true. You know, Wouldn't that be great if we set up a computer at scores and, and Scott's on the computer while there's naked girls in the room? Oh, yeah. you're top, honey. We should make a little dummy of like a head looking over his shoulder. Yeah. Like... <laughs> so when he walks in, he has to wear it. That's why we always have a head on that shoulder. I don't know. For the e-camera. Okay. okay. Just put the OJ head right here. <laughs> you're funny, Scott. <laughs> All right. We'll see you on Monday. Baba Booey just got me nuts. He gave me this uh, letter from... Baba Plunky. A play, uh, from the representative of a Playboy Playmate with pictures. Like, this is her. <laughs> you got to see this one. That's her. I would marry her. I would dump my wife for her. Okay? Her. <laughs> and this is a picture of her doing a magazine ad or something. Here. Take a look at that. See that, guys? Well, she's right out there. Why don't you get her and marry her? This is her from Playboy. <laughs> Lose your family ah! and your fortune. How tall is she? How tall? Well, I'll give you her stats. She looks short to me. Think so? Well, we're going to find out in a minute. <laughs> 
What's perfect height for me? Oh, five eight. That's not short. No, oh. that's not short. Yeah, here she is. Look at that. That ain't short. Oh, she looks her height in that picture. Yeah. Oh, she's beautiful. <laughs> Says here that uh, there's a long weekend. What did they write you a letter about? Her coming in? Yeah, well, the guy says, well, this chick is hot. Oh, that's what he says in the letter? More or less. I present to you my client, Ms. Davis, for consideration to appear on the Howard Stern Show. In, please, in close, please find photos and resume. While meeting recently, I asked her what she would like to do and where she would like to appear. Her answer, the Howard Stern Show, anytime he wants me. She's good. <laughs> well, I guess this is the end of your marriage. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Gary, find out what we can do to her. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Like what do you mean, what you can do to her? Well, I mean, if she's going to come in, we got to have some agenda. This Poker is a respect. girl you're considering leaving your wife for. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to interview her as to her prospect for being a mother to your children. I really would leave my wife for her. <laughs> I really would. I would. Well, what does it take? What does she have to come in here and say so that that happens? Well, all she has to say is, uh, Howard, I need to. I want to discuss business with you in uh -huh. another room. Uh huh. And I go in the other room, and she pulls my pants down <laughs> and rapes me. I do. Yeah. Look out. And then you'll leave your wife. Yeah. Yeah. And I love my wife. She's a great girl, but. Love is what's love got to do? With yeah, I haven't had a different woman in twenty years. Although at scores, I had about nine of them. Oh yeah, the big bachelor party was a, on Friday. Hey guys, come on in here. Hey Einziger, everyone. Yeah, we had a big bachelor party over at Scores. I swear to I God, I completely forgot. I don't know how this guy Lonnie at Scores does it. I got to compliment this guy. You know, you know, we talk about in America how people don't care about their jobs anymore and they don't put their heart into it mm -hmm. there's a guy named Lonnie what's Lonnie's last name Lonnie Hanover yeah there's a guy named Lonnie Hanover who I gotta say at his all is that what you're saying all Americans should look up to Lonnie Hanover because this guy I, good, go ahead applaud you should I want to I want to point out an individual who loves his job yeah. who goes into work and does anything right when, when, when this happens in America you got to applaud somebody this Lonnie so Hanover. This must have been some great party. I got to tell you, Robin, I go over to scores. Now, first of all, understand Lonnie's obstacle. This was Good Friday. A lot of the girls are religious. They have to well, get they home. They have to get home to their family. Whatever. <laughs> hey, Robin, I thought most of them live at the bus station. Don't make fun. There, were, there was a girl that was in the middle of dancing, and then she looked at her watch. She goes, I got to go. I got to get a flight to Texas. <laughs> right. <laughs> a state I can't go to. <laughs> But anyway, so we're there, and here it is on Good Friday, and all of New York City is empty because uh, they're, people are hustling and bustling. That's absolutely true. There was yeah. no one in New York. All the Jews were on the road for their Passover seders. <laughs> the Christians prepared for Easter. Easter. And this Lonnie Hanover, I don't know where God <laughs> found him and how he made him and put him on this earth, but this is a guy who rounded up 40 women. And I got to tell you something. 40 beautiful. 40 be I tell you something. There was a blonde. I, I really have to get together with her again. We got to have a party on today. Let's have a party. Now, did you feel that you had a rapport with her? Yes. Because so did I. I with the big, the big blonde. Yeah, the big blonde. Hey, what's her name? What was her first name? I don't remember. I don't know. But this woman, she was as good looking as like I saw her in the in the light. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. She was like a penthouse pet. She looked as good as the girl you just looked at. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> how, how? You know who I mean? No, I think I know. I, I think I saw you hanging with And then there was one from Hungary. <laughs> where, where, she was unbelievable. Body That's shift Hungary. Of <laughs> Hungary. <laughs> Not Hungary. <laughs> right, from hunger. <laughs> but there was one from Hungary. And then the, I spent most of my night with a black lady. I saw her. Yeah. Or I saw her ass a lot. Yeah. <laughs> she was... She, hey now. Hey now. Wasn't she part of a one-two punch, the, the black girl and the oriental? I didn't see any Orientals. No. I had requested, I had requested no Oriental oh. at the party. <laughs> oh, well, one snuck in because it was a black girl and Oriental that were trying to double team everybody. No, there was this, uh, black girl no she was a Puerto Rican. What? That was not an Oriental, Jackie. In the dark, she might have looked Oriental. <laughs> but, um... Did, 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 yeah, did you notice that, like, now that we've done this a bunch of times, 
it's not as uncomfortable like they're sort of used to us and we're yeah. used to them. And yeah, I know what he's oh, talking so about. So there wasn't that uncomfortable yeah. moment? There, there was, there was only standing. one thing wrong with the whole party. What? what? We got there at about 11.30 and we're waiting around till 12 till the girls come in. The girls were already there. And you know what it is? And then Lonnie explained he waits for the guys to finish eating. And I said, Lonnie, I'm not here to eat. I have limited time today. <laughs> You know, can, yeah, listen, he, can the he, girls come in the second we walk in? You know what? ate into your... Well, I lost a half <laughs> hour of time. time. I lost a half hour of time yeah, because I had to leave ahead of all these guys. Lunch. Yeah. You know what happens, Howard? What happens is I have to wait for Lonnie to give me the money to distribute it, and I feel uncomfortable walking yeah, well, in Lonnie, going, well, hey, cough it up. I'll, I'll arrange that because Lonnie, Lonnie, you know... He no, Lonnie was know standing, Lonnie want, was standing sure. around waiting for everybody to, like, to stop eating. That's when I ran in and said, everybody, yeah, did the you table. eat? I don't eat. No, I, don't I didn't eat. eat. I ain't looking. In fact, from now on, tell Lonnie we don't need food. <laughs> uh, oh, right. some food in the outside room or something. Yeah. Yeah. Some crackers yeah. and cheese. Yeah, get no, you can't have girls and food at the same time. One thing is, I'm not there to eat. If I want to eat, I'll so go to a restaurant. the girls have to wait until the food is yeah. gone? It should be I don't know. No, what happens is all the guys, like what happened even the other day is all the guys sit down, they start eating. Then the girls came in and the guys will have plates and... The guys just don't want to leave their plates. Yeah, it's fine with me. Don't leave your plate. That's your business. Yeah. That's your business. I know. Thank you. The last time I went, though, we sat and waited for them to bring the food out. This time when we walked in, the food was already there and yes. hot and ready to go. Yeah, so. but I, it still killed a half hour. I and didn't quite know frankly, that I wouldn't have, was holding you up. I wouldn't have cared, but I had to get home. How much time Sit did you have? Get going. Well, the party didn't get going until about noon, so uh, I had till 2 o'clock. No, you left at like 2.30. I did think. I? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I kept going. It's what time? But you know what? My last half hour was like, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. And you're constantly rushed. watching. Yourself. Yeah, yeah. I need to relax. <laughs> and I'm wind. It's you so funny because your hair's all disheveled when you leave. Yeah. There's a lot of, you got you to gotta fix yourself up when you, you go home. like you've been through a war. So I, I came home from scores and I was like all sexed up. Uh, you know, because I was really, I mean, imagine being aroused for over two hours. Well, just think of it. First, you had all those girls in here that you yeah. painted their breath. Right. And then <laughs> yeah. you went over to scores. Exactly. So I had had a full day of sexuality. <laughs> so I get home and uh, I see my wife. She's getting ready for the company and the kids and everything are all over the place. Just how angry did you get at her? I, get I walked in the house and I said, you know what? I've, I've been I'm going to be honest with you, Allison. I've been staring at a lot of naked women today. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. I'm completely charged up and I need to release. Uh -huh. So, you know, get, out, get in the bathroom and bend over the sink. <gasps> I'm going to make love to you right now. <laughs> yeah. So she goes, not now. I only, you know, I want to, I want to meditate. You know, we meditate. I want to meditate. I'm very tired right now. And I go, Allison, don't you understand? I'm in a sexually aroused state. You need state. some tantric meditation. Yeah, I need, I need you to help me out. She goes, I need to rest, and I, and then the kids, and then. Nah. So I, you know, what? I, I couldn't believe this. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I said, you know what? I'm going to take a shower. So the stink all these girls' perfume is off of me. <laughs> and you're going you're gonna to prepare yourself. I come out. She has the door locked and she didn't want to hear from me. You're kidding. No, no, she wouldn't give me sex. Well, I don't blame her. No, no, it wasn't because she was mad at me. It was because she just doesn't give me sex. The no, I think that when you come home and say, I've no. been looking at a lot of other naked women getting no. dressed up. No, turn around. It wasn't that. It wasn't that, Robin. Well, uh, let me say She's something She's just too here. busy. She goes, you come home. I'm in the middle of getting ready for your parents. Your parents are going to be here soon. You can't just walk in the door and, you know, and want to have sex. But let me say something to you. This is not a one-time thing with you. This is, you know, pretty much your lifestyle now. That you get all sexed up in here from women, and then she's supposed to do something for you. And I think it may have an effect. Then Saturday I wake up and I said, uh, hey, let's have some sex. Oh, no, we don't have time in the afternoon. We have to get going. Blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, no sex. She goes, Tonight, 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 Saturday night. Oh, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Saturday night, I'm half asleep. So I'm completely aroused and, you know, and twitching and everything. You My never uh, got a release? Never. <laughs> I'm surprised your head didn't explode. I think I might have released myself. I, right say, yeah, 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 I think I did. Yeah, yeah. Is there anybody did. here that didn't? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Hey, did anybody see Einziger once during the whole bachelor party? It was his was bachelor party. There? I was. I wouldn't even yeah. know. I didn't see any. I saw Ralph for about 13 seconds when I came up for air. I know. I, I saw. I noticed Scott once. I think. Yeah. I saw him from time to time, but every time I saw him, he had this big, goofy, drunken smile on. Even though he wasn't drunk. No, he wasn't drunk. And these girls at scores, man, they really know what to say to you. Like you know, I go. Uh, I go, boy, you're, you know, you have to tell this uh, black girl. 
I'm really into black women, evidently. <laughs> she was, she you was are great. Into she was smoking. Her. She was, uh, yeah. I mean, and she, boom, right? She didn't even know who I was. Yeah, she said, yeah, she was. She just came in from Florida. Yeah, I don't know. I liked it. She goes, I don't know who you are. I go, doesn't matter. I go, you know what? I like that. I give her an extra 20. I said, here. (laughs) Not for knowing who I was and being so nice. Well, I don't know who you are. She goes, I know everyone's telling me you've got some kind of show. She says, but I, you know, I'm from Florida. I don't know what's going on. I get up late. So then what did she say to you? She goes, uh, I go, yeah. I said, uh, Florida, huh? That must be pretty hot. I said, uh, boy, I wouldn't mind uh, taking you on a vacation somewhere. She goes, yes, but you'd have to bring along a white girl, too, so you have black and white. I was like, okay. Whoa. Hey now. She goes, my black skin against her white skin, that would really turn you on, wouldn't it? I said, yes. Oh. Look, out. Look out is right. <laughs> Look out. Look out. Oh, my goodness. All the weirdos she must have been. Oh, yeah. Weirdo. <laughs> Nothing weird about that. Yeah. It's unbelievable. She had nice everything. She's good. <laughs> great assortment of women. Really, just yeah. a great assortment. Yeah, Lonnie outdid did himself over scores. Best ever. I think everybody agrees. Yeah. It was also good. It was and like, were they new girls? You didn't see the same? lot of new girls. All new girls. Were, yeah. I saw like there two. Were a of favorites. I saw two that I remembered. Girl with black hair. Yeah. And it was I, darker than usual too. Which yeah, yeah, like, no, yeah. I told Lonnie I want to pitch black. I don't want to see anybody. There was Joe a Lynn call. wasn't there. Joe Lynn, my girlfriend, Johnny. wasn't there. She's good, but she's got to wait for the rotation. (laughs) I don't know why she wasn't there. You know what the funny thing was? You know, we're we're all in, you know, it's a regular thing now. So when the girls were starting to come in, we were, before they walked in, we were chanting, like, because we were done with the food. And it's like, girls, girls, girls. And he was yelling out, whores, 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 whores. Like two girls. He's like, you got to, that guy's nuts. He gets belligerent because, I I don't know why he gets belligerent. Next time we're doing Robin's thing, we're going to, we're going to wear togas. I decided. (laughs) Oh good. oh, good. We gotta find an excuse to go there every day. Jackie, how'd you like it? That, I loved it. You, I saw it because you stayed later than me. Well, I only stayed about five or ten minutes later. Than oh, really? Me. Didn't but he when, have some place to go? <clears throat> no! Oh, <laughs> when you were walking out, he had like one of the girls over his shoulder. Did you see that? Yeah, so, yeah, he doesn't actually get dances and stuff. He just takes them he like. He just takes them like me. He, okay. he is a third grader. He is. He had a girl over his shoulder. He says, I'm taking this one home. <laughs> it's like a caveman. <laughs> was dragging her out of the place. Right, that's the only way he can get one. Oh, yeah. And he's the only way. He, like, watches everyone else. He's not really, doesn't appear no. to be into what he's doing. Well. Yeah, he does it. He is sort of. And everyone's starting to think like Neil's a homo, but it can't Look, be. All it can't I know be. is it that the be. only time Neil got a lap dance, it was from Gay Rich. Gay, and Gay Rich wasn't there, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, final. It was a shame. Yeah. <laughs> Which ruined Neil's day. Scott's still getting married, huh? Yeah, yeah. Douche. So what did you do there, Stupid. Scott? What was that? What did you do? I was talking about Scott with someone. Scott had a few drinks. Did you toast him? No. No you one paid no attention to him. I don't care less if he was it there. It didn't really matter if I was there or not. I don't think I saw you once. In the yeah. beginning, I think I saw you. And when you were leaving, I thanked you. Did you? Yeah. And I didn't even know that was you. He was too dizzy from women to even Was that you sitting next to me on the couch or was that no. guy Doug there? Doug was there, but I don't oh, think he was, was sitting next yeah, to me. Yeah, he sat next to me. For, I looked oh, yeah. over to see if Ralph was there. It was Doug. Oh. I didn't know who it was. I thought it was you. Yeah. So did you get to see all 40 women, Howard, or did you stick with I went through them? quite a few. Yeah. What, yeah. What, you, what you do is you sample like three or four of them. Until you, you find one that you really click with. I mean, you don't like go. You stay with it for about an hour. I told you I spent, with, I spent most of the day with the black woman. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Dion. <laughs> oh, no, you, you kept, I just kept hearing this mumbling from the corner. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Shut up, Ralph. Is Stupid that his idiot. lame attempt at a joke? Yeah, that's Rob joking. <laughs> Actually, Robin, it was pretty funny. Uh, I was handing out the money. Uh-huh. So Ronnie had that big, beautiful blonde. And I remember her from last time. But you couldn't get near her. You know, song after song after song. And Ronnie kept Ronnie's saying it. And I said, Gee, he's got to get sick of her soon. And then Ronnie goes, Gary, you got more money? So I must have fed Ronnie money for like the third time, and he goes, you got more money? I said, not unless you give up that blonde, you're not getting a dime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only way you can move him along. Well, well I, I was late, room. and I had to leave, and Ronnie, uh, I said to Ronnie, right. I said, yeah, Ronnie, get the, his good time. No, I said, get the car. He goes, I can't right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> but I was like, no, I want to go. You were at the front door, and Ronnie was still in the yeah, car. Yeah, right, and I'm like, I'm looking for the car outside. <laughs> 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 so I don't know. It was pretty wild. I was all sexed up. I can't take it after a while. It always goes the same way, though. There's 40 girls, and there's like 15 of them that know what to do. And the rest And the don't. rest of them get like all pissed off. You know, they get, some of them were like in they the They don't get any money? By like one. I know. You know what? They're, they're, like down, they're down in the lower room, like smoking cigarettes right. and hanging out. They're like in the dugout. They're like the 17. Yeah. 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 But they're like, they, you, you could tell when they've given up because they actually go and get plates and start eating. Yeah. <laughs> if you snooze, you lose. 
I know, there's some girls who just don't know how to work the room, and there's some that do. Say, don't they realize this is a competition? It's not like... Uh... <laughs> yeah, this want... is exactly what Darwin had in mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> girl played me like a piano. Just said that she liked me, and, you know, it's like, yeah. I'd stay with me the whole night. I know. Well, Ralph what you got to do with these guys. Ralph was in a corner having a great time with one of the dancers, you know, and Ralph goes, you got to have this one dance for you. But she came over to me, she seemed more into Ralph, so I just said, go back Let to Ralph. Go. I was having a perfectly fine... Ralph seems like... Yeah. Why does audition. he want to deal you? I don't know. Girl? Ralph had one girl. I don't know if it was a dance or a date. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh-oh. That big, tall blonde. She was incredible. I'm not <laughs> thinking about her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we're just like horny guys. Oh. Oh. Einzinger, how could you get married, man? You know what? You're not a bad... We were discussing you mean someone else. Yeah. You're not, you're real, I think you're a good, I don't know, Robin, isn't he kind of a handsome guy? He's a cute guy. He's a cute guy. Thank he has you. real bad posture and carries himself bad, like right, kind of a wuss. Right, he's kind of yeah, a... If he stood up. If he stood up and like got into some... Yeah, look yeah he doesn't have much of a spine. Yeah, and stopped acting like a girl. <laughs> I don't do that. You know what it is? You've been working at E too long. You're too oh, damn effeminate. I think he was this way all along. Yeah, right, but he's not a bad looking guy and everything. And he can be getting dates with different girls, you know, he's a TV producer, <laughs> executive <laughs> producer. <laughs> he's got a show he could get women on. Dude, you're making a big mistake. I'm telling you, I know. Well, you didn't convince him at the bathroom no, no, party. You, you told had me that your when I got the scores. Yeah. No, for, you didn't even say, hey, how you doing? No. Huh. What did what I say you to you? said, dude, what are you, what's going on? What are you doing? Yeah, but wait a yeah. second. If it wasn't for Scott, we wouldn't have been there, so. When I was getting married, you know how many guys came up to me? I mean, Allison's uncles and said, stupid, what are you doing? And I didn't know. You know, I didn't I, know things you know could change. I gotta tell you, you you told me all that when I was getting married. Yeah. So you know, be three years in July. Yeah. I think when I think you said he was getting married, I said, "Welcome to the club, sucker." Yeah. <laughs> I know. I don't. But you guys, I don't understand. You guys were already older, and you were starting. You know, you, Gary, you were getting tons of women off the show. I don't get it. Well, I didn't, I mean, it was a lot of things, but mostly, you know. I met somebody that I really liked, and also I don't want to be really. I don't want to be the grandfather of high school graduation either. You don't want to start a family. I don't want to be. Oh, you even you were dying to have kids. Yeah, I wanted to have kids. You had you a know? nesting instinct. Well, I don't know, man. Kids. Yeah, right. A party your whole life. Yeah. I gotta tell you, I, I got the I got in the car and you I got went, a point of view. I got in the car and I went home and and the whole car reeked of cheap perfume. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I say to myself, oh man, when I get home, you know, what am I gonna do? You do stink like the like the girls. Yeah, because yeah. as soon as your wife smells it on you, then it's like you know. Arr. So I got in. And I was smacked into reality by my wife having a play group with a bunch of little kids. So I ran upstairs and changed all my clothes and threw them in the hamper. <laughs> Burned your clothes. And when they That's get funny. Home. <laughs> nah. It was a good time, though. Did anybody, did what was that? Time? What? Did anybody get a hard time? No. Jackie, you get a hard time uh, from Nancy? No. Nope. Not really? She don't like the idea, but, you know, she rolls with it. Yeah. They throw comments in. And hey, it was all... Hey, you can't get in trouble for just checking out a few girls. Jack, but Jackie hit me with one that his wife gave him that I get all the time. Yeah. It's like, hope you had a good time at your bachelor party. Like, yeah. not mine. Yeah. Always your. You know, enjoy your hey, party. Man. How were your girls I was going to diss Einziger and not go to his bachelor party. Oh, it's bad yeah. enough I'm not going to his wedding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh right. Oh, God. It was a social etiquette thing. Hey, you do what you have to do, Robin. <laughs> so, um... So, well, and then my brother-in-law was over... Yeah, once in the Oh, you didn't right. even invite your brother-in-law. No, well, he wasn't available anyway. Uh -huh. And I wouldn't invite him anyway. He's, he's my wife's brother, and I'm not going to have him sitting there watching me watch girls. He's a big damn for our party yeah. for you. Yeah, I wouldn't go. Wouldn't go. You couldn't do that. Because she said to me, yeah, it sounds like a pretty good party. I said, y you'll never go. <laughs> and you'll what? never know? Yeah, that's just what I need. As far as I'm concerned, as far as you're concerned, me and your sister are what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> now, did Einziger get lab dances and stuff? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. You were loaded, weren't you? I had a couple of drinks. You know what was weird? Yeah, never mind. No, I, I, this is all another story, but I get home like Saturday and uh, Saturday night. I was playing pool with my brother in law. Yeah. You know, my kids were around and stuff. Emily and Deborah were watching. They like to rack the balls up and, uh, you know, do the whole thing. Yeah. So uh, all of a sudden I got in the mood for a beer, you know? But I haven't had a beer in like 10 years. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. But I was in the mood to drink beer. So I go get uh, two bottles of uh, beer from the refrigerator. And me and my brother-in-law are shooting pool, having a beer. And all of a sudden, one of my daughters starts crying hysterically and screaming at me that I'm going to die. Because you see, the schools fill them up with uh, information about drugs. Uh huh. And they told them that for every drink that you have, you know, alcoholics, every time they have a drink, it takes an hour off their life. Ah! Uh so oh. my daughter was yelling and screaming at me, <gasps> freaking out. Now I'm running through the house trying to calm her down. <laughs> my other daughter, my youngest daughter, starts crying because she thinks I'm going to die. 
Ooh. from the beer. And she doesn't want me to die. And then my other one was like, you better stop drinking. I don't care if you die because you're doing it to yourself. And I was just like, oh, my God. I mean, oh, I had the worst beer of my life. <laughs> you can't even have a drink. No, I mean, you know, I said, you know, kids, if Daddy had drinks all the time, you guys wouldn't even be thinking about this. I said, I have a, if I have one beer... This once... doesn't mean Daddy's going to be a lush. Yeah, I said, yeah. Yeah, and they were like, well, this is the start of it. And I said, I'm 41 years old. You don't stop being a drunk at so 41. So they think one drink and you're drunk. Yeah. You're a drunk. And it was the, I mean, Does it was horrible. Does about Uncle Jackie? Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> it was just really bad. Who else sing along goes just like this? Coco Mix, all way to free time. Coco Mix, be back to your prime. Whiskey's for celebrating beer. It was unbelievable. I, I just wanted to drink a beer. And then I had, to, and then, hold it, stop for a second. You know, and then because I have such an austere lifestyle, like I won't even eat nuts. Yeah. I had some pistachio nuts. You know how beer and nuts go together? So I'm eating some And then my daughter starts screaming at me, You're showing off for Uncle Bruce. Oh, You're eating nuts and drinking beer. Well, they have a point. And it was just like, Oh, I got to get over the scores. Isn't it, don't you think it's funny? Yeah. Don't you think it's really funny that your kids think you getting out of control with one beer and yeah. peanuts? Yeah. I said, They should go to Uncle Jackie's house. Yeah. <laughs> they heads on call. Yeah, yeah. Here's some pot, beer, loose. They come home and say, Dad, loosen up. Yeah. Yeah. Peanuts. <laughs> Peanuts and cashews. Lose it up and do it, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Be like Uncle Jack. Yeah, I mean, I was trying to explain to the kids that I'm a very controlled person. That's why they're... And even my wife is trying to explain to them, Dad's just trying to unwind. <laughs> what beer? One beer I was getting yelled at. It turned into a fiasco. Were you even <laughs> able to finish the beer? Or did yeah, you I, I, and, and then they accused me of chug-a-lugging it. <laughs> because I finished that. I was a half a bottle ahead of Uncle Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of school is I'll that? tell you one thing though, that cold gold makes you old oh, way before oh, your prime. <laughs> the kids know it. <laughs> it really does. As Jackie sang in the legendary beer song. Cold gold makes you old way before your time. Cold gold makes you sleep right through your prime. Now, whiskey's for celebrating. Beer just gives your body weight and comes out of your ears before you're drunk. Yeah. Sit back, plug it by the quart. Guzzle it by the gallon till you start to snore and snort. Got a belly like you're pregnant. All right, go sleep. You can't even keep up with that. I can't that even thing. keep up with that. Sometimes. Hey, you're wrong with it. <laughs> you gotta get loaded. <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason to that song. <laughs> he was loaded when he wrote it, and he was loaded when he sang it. That's right. All right, so anyway, that was, uh, so we were over at the Scott Einziger bachelor party. Well, you know, I remember one How do we get said, to go back? You know what? I don't need to be, I don't want to be a glom to Lonnie. How many times have we been there this year so far? Was this the second? Yeah, but I want to go like every week. The first thing he said to me when we walked in there, he put his arm around me. He said, Jackie, what you guys do for this, what how it does for this club is unbelievable. He says, you got to come up with a reason for you guys to be here every week. Right? Really? That yeah. was him talking. Oh, really? Yeah. That was Lonnie? He said, he said, he said it's your week. job, Jackie. Come up with some reason for Jackie you guys never to be had here every a bachelor week. party. Yeah, but you see, it's not even so much come up for a reason for Lonnie. It's come up for a reason for our wives to oh, accept oh. that we can go to the bachelor party. Oh, well, you've never had a bachelor party. Totally. Fred's got a good one. Jackie never had a bachelor party. Neither, Neither did I. Yeah, none that's of you true. have. You don't, he don't oh, I would love to have a bachelor party. <laughs> See, that's a I thing. Like a bachelor party. Imagine if I was the bachelor and Jackie. Perfect. Yeah. Two founding fathers. Well, you don't have to do it all at once. You spread it out. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Whenever the guys start complaining and stuff, that me, Jackie, Fred, and uh, Gary are having too good a time, we, uh -huh. just go, we just say the words founding fathers. <laughs> and that shuts everyone up. <laughs> We're the founding fathers. So you know what we should do? Here's an easier way to do it. Like Doug works on the E Show, right? Mm -hmm. You can just say Doug's getting married. He invited us to his wedding. You know, you tell your wife you're not even going to go. But hey, we got to have a, a bachelor party for All right. Doug. Fine. All right. Doug's bachelor party. Yeah, nobody knows. We might, not, we might not know him when he gets you married. You know what? Right. Every guy who comes in here, <laughs> you have to have a bachelor. Party. Every guy in the E Crew's getting married. <laughs> it's, it's true. My, it's my Doug birth. will eventually get married, yeah. and we probably won't even know him when he gets married. My birthday next. And week. if we don't know him, how can we throw him a bachelor party? Hey. What? From now on, only hire interns that are engaged. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to take a break. I wish you would go every week. Get this out of your system. Oh. I don't know how long. How many weeks do you it. think it would take us to yeah. do that? We want to do an experiment. We would never get bored. We would never get bored. Go for more than what? what? I would. You wouldn't make six weeks. Uh, you're right, I'd be dead. <laughs> My head would explode. My wife would kill me. 
<laughs> let's have a bachelor party for Scott Salem, and he can't go because his wife won't let him. <laughs> uh, one less guy. You never got to have a bachelor party for Scott. <laughs> right, and you know what's great about the girls? They don't even care why we're there. They don't even ask. They don't ask who's the bachelor. They don't ask anybody. Right. I, I pointed out Scott being the bachelor to two girls, and they're like, oh, okay. Oh, right. who's they never who left cares? you. They stayed with yeah, you. Yeah, who cares? That's what was really funny, because usually oh, when you go to a bachelor party, the girls come out, and they go, okay, who's uh, the groom? And who's uh, the best? They don't even care. Yeah, don't care. Groom. <laughs> Groom could be out, outside for all I care. The truth, the truth of the matter is they don't even know why they're there. Like, they just stay there for you. They're they there know, for they're money. They don't money. know it's a bachelor party. So what's the deal on this girl from Playboy? Well, you see in the letter at the last paragraph... It doesn't say we can do anything to her. It just says that she wants to come here. Well, the last paragraph of the letter said that, that they asked her what she wanted to do, and she said she would be... Want to do the Howard Stern show any time. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that we can do That's stuff. We could get her on the phone and ask her what she would be willing to do. Okay. Why don't we do that later in the show? Okay. Why don't you line her yeah. up? I can't make decisions. I really wish you would go to scores every week. Oh, thank you, Robin. I wish I was married to you. <laughs> You'd be a much easier wife. <laughs> Bolt the door. Hey, it's my birthday. Oh, shut week. up. Come on, man. Birthday. Homo. Come All right, on. let's uh, take a birthday break. Birthday party. Let's take a break, and we'll be back right after these words. Everybody's scrambling around trying to get a tuxedo for Scott Einziger. Our e-show uh, executive producer is, uh, is getting married on Saturday, and... Gorilla got together a whole tuxedo just from borrowing different elements from different people. Is that right? Yeah, I learned of this when Ronnie the limo driver gave him a bag with a shirt in it. He, Ronnie had a tuxedo shirt, and uh, Gorilla got the pants from somebody else and got a jacket from someone else. I mean, I think he's about to get some shoes. People have parts of tuxedos? Evidently. Well, you know, stuff that fit him. I, I don't know. I guess nobody wanted to give him the whole tuxedo. <laughs> It's like a scavenger hunt. Oh, yeah. He says, yeah, I saved a hundred bucks. I don't have to go get a Doug Zito. Doug Zito. And, you know, he's a guy. He doesn't make any money, and he's a college student. Did Did uh, Scott really want him at his wedding? I don't know. That whole tuxedo thing really bothers me when guys have weddings with tuxedos and get married. I mean, there are two things that really bother me about Scott's wedding. One, they get married at midnight. No, no, they get married at nine, but you'll eat by midnight. Yeah, right. I can't go for that. I mean, you know, that, that kills the whole weekend because then you can't get up out of bed till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, Stutter and John's out there complaining because, you know, we all got uh, free tuxedos when we did the New Year's Eve show. Yeah. So John, of course, went to look for his and he can't find it. So now it's Thursday morning. He has to rent a tuxedo very quickly. Yeah. You mean he thought he had one, but he just didn't bother to look for He's it. He's got so one. Now. Just God knows where it is. Yeah, right. Did we get free tuxedos? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I did. I'm wearing mine. If I don't eat between now and the wedding, I'll fit in it. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, you've gotten really heavy. <laughs> My butt. <clears throat> what? What's that? that? <laughs> What's going on around here? I didn't do any. I didn't do testing. This but... <laughs> <laughs> I think my button's screaming for help, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, Jackie, you said you hadn't gained weight. He lied. <laughs> I noticed it the other oh, day. He's back down to losing weight again. Yeah. So. I was actually yeah. skinny when we got those. Yeah. Bad move. Mm -hmm. The uh, tuxedo thing really turns me off on a wedding. I, I just think that's so... I mean, I, I think he was royalty, maybe. <laughs> it's one thing for the, the bride and groom to have to dress up. And, you know, I guess the mother of the bride and, you know, some of the <clears throat> members of the party. Yeah, let know. them do it. But why does the the uh, extent go, you know, that go to the guest? Because it's obnoxious. What happens if you go to the wedding... And you don't wear a tuxedo. Nothing, but then they're all insulted because you're you ruined, the only one who isn't. Because you ruined her perfect day. Yeah. You know, she's en envisioning herself getting married in front of people in tuxedos, and it's like you know, get with it, thinking you guess a little bit. Well, you know, it's a really strange. His move? wife thinks that she's marrying royalty. She doesn't realize she's marrying a guy who, up until a couple of months ago, was going to be working for the World Wide Wrestling Federation, yeah. editing tape. You know, what's a really weird move. What? You know the guy that works on our crew, that guy Eric. He's like uh, in the Marines or something. Yeah. He's wearing. Or he dresses like he's in the well, Marines. He's wearing, you know, he is. He's wearing his dress uniform. Exactly. He's gonna be dressed as a Marine at the wedding. No. Yes. Yeah, so a Marine. What's he's he doing? In the he's in the reserve or something. Or he was in it for a while. Or I don't know. Where is he? Once hey. a month. He is he goes here now? To do yeah. maneuvers. Hey Eric, come here. But I mean, I said, is that the one with the sword and everything? And he goes, well. It does have a sword, but I won't be wearing it to the wedding. Oh, you should wear the sword. <laughs> yeah. Might have to cut, cut the, the cake. cake. Dude, you're in the Marines? Yeah. Oh, no wonder you have that goofy haircut. Oh, yeah. yeah exactly. Oh, I didn't. I thought you were doing it for a fashion statement. No, no. I've been in for about five years. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, you're a man. Thank you. Yeah, you're a real man. That's not an easy workout, that Marine thing. No, it's a lot of fun, though. Yeah? 
<laughs> You're the only but guy Eric I know who likes it. Fun. Eric likes it. Yeah, he's he's typical marine material. Well, yeah, you got to you got to be physically fit and strong, and then you would like it. <laughs> so they watch it there. <laughs> it's hard to believe that Eric has a creative bone in his body. <laughs> Which was it? Ainsley asked me to wear my uniform. Really? Yeah. Because his wife will really she'll think she's marrying Prince Charles. <laughs> you know, there's men in uniform here. So what are you going to do? You're going to wear full dress marine? Uh, is that all yeah, white? dress blues. Oh, dress blues. Right. But isn't that all white? No, it's no, blue. No. It is blue? <laughs> now, officers wear uh, dress whites when they uh, graduate OCS. Oh, what are you? I'm a uh, corporal. He's a grunt. A corporal's a grunt? First guy they send in when they... Every five years right. and you're only a corporal? Well, actually, I just picked up sergeant, but I haven't pinned it on yet. So. Oh, you haven't. Right. So you'll be acting as a corporal the night of the wedding? Exactly. <laughs> Won't you be embarrassed being a, dressed in a corporal's uniform when you're a sergeant? No. I earned it. Really? Yeah. No, you, you earned being a sergeant. True. So why don't you show it off a little bit? No. Flaunt it. How often do you get to flaunt your, your full dress uniform? Uh, I didn't pick up the warrant yet. Oh, I pick see. up the warrant, then you can rate wearing the sergeant uniform. Mm -hmm. I see. It's the whole thing. Ooh. What do you do for us again? I'm uh, your tape operator engineer. No, that's all right, as long as you're not directing. Who <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, so a Marine wait, directing wait, you? Wait a second, you know, if the director goes to the bathroom, he directs. Is that right? Exactly. Are you, are you capable of that? Sure. All right. I'm just kidding. He no, I'm very proud of you. See, you. see, I hope the people at home realize that I employ the Marines. Because I, I believe in our... I'm, he's only a weekend Marine. Well, hey. whatever. Hey. Hey, easy. He's a, he's a sergeant. <laughs> they give those things away to those guys. It's like camp. <laughs> Is it? It's like uh, it's like the militia. Everybody just get, if you buy the uniform, you can be a sergeant. Everybody's playing dress up on the weekend. <laughs> it's not easy, stuff. right? No. What? It's not easy, right? No, not no. at all. Right. Actually, right. very challenging. Right. <laughs> so, uh, getting the haircut alone. So you're gonna wear like like a full dress uniform to Einziger's wedding? Exactly. It's almost worth going just to see all these people. <laughs> and you and you uh, you're gonna have a sword? No, no, we'll be bringing a sword. But you could. I could. Do you the sword. have a sword. What? Yeah. Why don't no, you do the sword? sword? Actually, sword. I don't have the sword. They're on back order, believe it or not. Because you have to get the proper length for it. <laughs> you got size. For Can you wear hand grenades and junk? Uh, if I wore a different uniform. Really? <laughs> yeah, the dress uniform doesn't come with hand grenades. Right. Yeah. I don't know where to put them. Our e show looks like an army training film. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll see. Like, I won't recognize. Well, I'm not going to the wedding because I'm boycotting because it's so late at night. I just can't stay up that late. I just can't. I can't do it. I feel kind of bad, but Scott knows I love him. Well, I'm out of town, so. Me too. <laughs> I actually am out of town this weekend. No, I really am. Yeah. I, I would He's be. leaving just because of the wedding. I'm going to be in Los Angeles. What? Is that the truth? Yeah, that's the truth. I'm going to be in Los Angeles. So you and I aren't meeting on Sunday? Right. Okay. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Caught on tape. Los Angeles. Yeah. I'm, meet, I'm meeting some film people. Yeah. <laughs> you guys will have a good. Actually, it sounds like a good time. Like everybody getting together and socializing. Everybody all dressed up. But uh, you do say, uh, in the case of a gorilla, a guy who has no money, it's kind of a burden to tell him he has to wear a tux. Yeah, no kidding. And it's obnoxious. I mean, who is Scott Einziger that everyone should watch him get married in a tux? I mean, his girlfriend's totally delusional. You know, it's tough. It's tough. So is he, because he says, oh, my girlfriend planned it. Y he knew. But you don't ask you don't ask people to go out and rent tuxes. It's so archaic. He knew, but he doesn't care. He, he's right. taking care this of This is everything. his wedding. He'll just sit back. But, no, but the problem is this isn't his wedding. In other words, she picked everything, and he's just going to be quiet. No, but it's like, he's you know. He's showing up. Yeah, it's just, like, it doesn't matter... You know, I'm getting married, and uh, let everybody else suffer. It's like, it's like, a t like and I don't know what she's thinking is happening. This wife. You she know, really... she's gonna. You, you know, a couple of days later, it's gonna hit her that she's married to Scott. Hmm. <laughs> Not royal. Yeah, it's a joke, <laughs> and everybody's all dressed up for the marriage of Scott Einziger. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> suddenly, everybody's not gonna be dressed up, and they're Scott. <laughs> Another meaningless wedding. But it's really annoying because it's prom season. Right. So. No tuxes. I went available. out yesterday. It took me like all day to find a place. And you mean they roll out of tuxes? They were out, and it's really annoying renting a tux because oh. It, oh, it's just it's bad. Yeah, and you're gonna look stupid in a tux. Uh, I never understood that, I, that idea of but renting hey, your clothes either. Yeah, it, it's real. Ralph, what, are you, what are you gonna What are you gonna do? You're not gonna renting. look cool in a tux. Well, I wanted to try and get something different, but yeah. you can't find anything different, you know? So what are you going to do? You're going to wear a regular tux? Yeah, well, I, I think I found something good. But, you know, it's basic. I mean, I can't... But you're going to look like a douche. Yeah, I know, but so is everybody else. 
I can see Are you, you like, going to shave that little thing off your chin? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Why? He's not getting married. <laughs> Why should he have to shave? He'll mess up the pictures. Yeah. I don't think I'll be invited into any pictures. <laughs> I don't think I could do anything. I don't know. I don't know, man. Just like the, some women, you know, they think like, oh, boy, I'm getting married. I'm going to make everyone wait till midnight to eat. I'm going to get them dressed up this in a tux. This is their moment. Yeah, it's a well, big moment. Scott did tell me there'll be a lot of hors d'oeuvres up until the meal. Yeah, great. So plenty of food. Fill up there on better that. be hors d'oeuvres when I walk in. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Nine, <laughs> yeah, I mean, 9 o'clock is when no, people eat. You can't, you know, you can't eat until after the ceremony. There's no food or drink until after the ceremony. Oh, is that right? How long does the yeah, ceremony last? I, went to, I, I thought you just said there's going to be hors d'oeuvres from the time no, you walk in. No, no, after the ceremony, which is very quick. The ceremony, it starts at like quarter no, to no, nine. Here's what happens. And it's like 15 minutes. No, it's not. That's he's he lying. He, he doesn't know what he's talking about. It doesn't start at quarter to nine. Well, it starts uh, right after dark. Oh, they've got to wait for the sun to go right. down. Right. Oh, I mean, oh, you mean, you mean, he's such a religious Jew. <laughs> this is a guy who's over at scores with us. You know, I, I think the problem... He's got to wait for... Scott Einzinger can't be married until the sun goes down. <laughs> What'll happen if... It... What is he, high? Dracula. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what is this? <laughs> Let's see. For the sun to go down. His wife has to be bathed in milk before the ceremony. <laughs> right. He's going to have, what do they call that? A mikvah? Mik a, mi a milk bath. <laughs> she's going to be in there with all the ladies. So she'll be clean. Yeah, yeah Robin, you're going to have to go over and bathe Mrs. Einziger. <laughs> Mrs. Einziger. <laughs> milk bath. Oh. <laughs> Where is he? Don't let, don't let us talk about you. Yeah, just sit out there. Stay away. No, you stand there. You're going to be dressed in your Marine uniform. Yeah, I wish you had worn it today. Where tomorrow? He's out all week. He's preparing for the big day. No, I think he's going to be here today. He's still not here yet. He's not here yet? He gets in around 6.30 now. Oh, he does? Well, he's got preparation. Good. The show's running so smoothly that he doesn't have to be he here. He has to be bathed in milk. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize you did Why don't we have Eric wear his dress blues tomorrow? So we yeah. Why would you wear it for Einziger and not us? <laughs> you never asked. Wear your dress blues tomorrow. We want to see. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's right. I can't wait. That's scary. That's cool. Hey, at least I save 100 bucks in the tux. Huh? And what's the whole Marine scene like? Were you always just a weekend Marine, or did you uh, ever act to be in the active Marine? Did you ever do active duty? Uh, I was active duty six months, and that was during Desert Storm. Did you go to Desert Storm? No, my unit oh. did, I didn't. Oh, it was during Desert Storm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, they called up your reserve unit. Is right, they were saying? activated yeah. uh, there you go. that time. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I'm a I'm a vet. I was uh, my unit was called up during Desert Storm. Oh yeah, how long were you there? No, I didn't go. My unit was called up. I, they left me behind. <laughs> Did you get one of those ribbons anyway? Oh, uh, Firewatch ribbon. Yeah, it's one everybody gets. Yeah, because your unit went. I mean, you well, get no, to uh, uh, nation went to war. It's called national defense. Oh. You get you get a ribbon the same as if a guy went over there. Oh no, they get a whole bunch of ribbons. Oh, they yeah, do. They oh. <laughs> how else are you gonna get a guy to go over there unless you have a bunch of ribbons? <laughs> That's a cool thing. Like you give a guy ribbons. It's you know, I ought to do that with the interns because they don't really get paid. <laughs> but in order to motivate them, maybe I should give them ribbons for excessive duty. But it is the Boy Scouts. You yeah. do a Stars few things and, and you get a yeah. couple of um, It's not as medals. bad as the Army, though. Army gets, uh, they get a medal just for graduating boot camp. <laughs> right. well, so maybe I ought to start a, start a system with the interns where they get ribbons and junk. That'll be cool. That way, when they do something good, like they, you know, they... pins, and then they'll have their their pins. My gorilla should be highly decorated for getting my breakfast and being here early in the morning. When they and then when there's a big amount of time. when there's a big like uh, thing where we go out and do something, he can wear like dress uniform. Yeah. And uh, not only that, if you have been a part of you know one of the funerals or something, you get a special award right. because you've been serving during wartime. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like I would give. Uh, I give Eric a ribbon just for his bravery during this interview, for coming in and, you know, that kind of thing. Give, get, yeah. give, him, a, give him a medal. There it is. Yeah. Put it on yourself. There you go. There if, you go. If that's the case, I want the Congressional Medal of Honor for taking a punch for you during your... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you would get a big... <laughs> but you're an employee. You're not yeah, an intern. Yeah, you're paid. You don't get yeah, it. You don't get ribbons. How are you, you know, it's... It's really funny because with Eric, he always tells us all these kind of stories, these war stories of being in like gas chambers and being with like bugs all over him and all these different. Oh, is that how they train you? <laughs> well, they they ask. Yeah, kind of. What, what do you mean? Now you got Now you got to tell the truth. It's not so easy, is it? Would well, you no, tell Sutter and John they put you in a gas chamber so to see if you could live? No, it's part of training. Oh yeah, you were in a gas chamber. Yeah. And they put you on a gas mask and stuff? Well, yeah, they train you how to use a gas mask properly. How many times do you think you'll be put in a gas chamber and you'll be allowed to have a gas mask? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? During war, you I think in World War II, they put you in, they didn't give you a gas mask. <laughs> That's no, no, the no, whole no, concept. No. The idea is this is what it's like when the gas is around. Uh, so when you're being oh, gas oh, you'll put it on. Trust me, you'll put you're it kidding. You'll know how to put this uh, gas mask oh, I didn't realize on. that. <laughs> Thanks for explaining that. <laughs> Thank He's you, Rob. He's a veteran. Yeah, right. Yeah. I've, I've uh, watched these people go through I see. 
state. She was actually an officer. <laughs> Captain Quibble. I had dress blues at one time, yeah. Can you get a, you get a special ribbon for... Uh, being in a gas chamber? Oh, no. <laughs> no? No, I read You get a mask. Because I was going to get Fred and, I was gonna give Fred and Jackie a special we need, ribbon. We they're need in, one. Uh, they're in a gas chamber every day. Oh, after Jackie goes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> You're not kidding. Now, what was the thing about the bugs? Oh, no. It's just uh, during during boot camp. There's uh, It's down in Paris Island, South Carolina, which has a lot of fire ants. Uh -huh. And if you're sitting down, you don't move. Uh -huh. And so if they come on, you know, marching by and they see you, they're all over you. Yeah, you don't oh, scratch, so they, you don't move, nothing. Uh -huh. Oh, I thought you made it like they bury you with ants. Yeah. So to see if no, you can, your net, no. See if you can survive that. <laughs> there, there were just bugs around where he was training. So for you now at this point, it's kind of cool because um, like once a month on weekends, you get to go hang out with a bunch of guys and do cool stuff, right? Yeah, it's like getting paid to go camping. Right. And then what do you do? You go out in the woods and you guys bond and uh, build stuff, latrines. and. Well, we train. You train. We do the job the unit uh, is supposed to do. What is your unit supposed to do? We're communications battalion. So you sit and you communicate. You guys rap to each other. <laughs> well, we provide communications for uh, other units. So you're a marine, like I'm a biker. I kind of look the part. <laughs> I tell you something, Howard. He right. must dig it because he just rejoined for another five years. Is that right? Jesus. And what do you do? You get extra money for that? Well, you can, depending on your job. They right. pay for his college. Oh, is that right? You didn't yeah. go through college yet? Aren't you like 40 or something? No, 25. <laughs> How old are you? 25. 25? And now yeah. you're going to go to college? What are you, huh? No, I've been going to college on and off for the past oh, couple okay. years. <laughs> How long is it going to take you to get through college here? <laughs> He'll be 50. Gas mask college. Gas mask college. What college are you in, man? Uh, I was going to the same college as Gorilla. Hunter. Hunter? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you having trouble getting through that? No. <laughs> How long is it taking you to get through that? <laughs> well, what age did you start going to college? Eighteen. Oh, eighteen, and you're twenty-five. Twenty-five now. Yeah, let me say, I stopped for a year and a half when I joined the Marines. Right. Then I uh, worked for two years, went back for about another year. And what degree are you going for? Communications. I was, I was going for a communications degree. Why bother? He's forgotten it. Exactly. So that's long. why I'm reevaluating. You're that. in. You're in communications, right? Dude. I mean, that's it. Yeah. You know what else? I keep hearing all these really funny oh, things. Oh, great. Thanks. He's on his way to do some <laughs> cold weather training. They're going to send him to like Iceland oh, right. to teach him how to survive in forty below. <laughs> That's something you'll probably really need. <laughs> you know, isn't that funny? None of this will ever happen. They send you to a cold place to see if you can come back. Yeah, and none of this will ever happen. <laughs> He'll never go to a, a cold place, except for training. And by, probably five guys will drop yeah, dead during ice training. Wars. Yeah. Who's going to call a war up there? You know, it's just like a bunch of guys hanging out, acting tough. Yeah, but it's cool. Let's see you sometime, Ralph. Yeah, let's see you do it, Ralph. Yeah, Ralph. Big you'll pussy. I could go to Iceland Ralph, and I could break you within five minutes. <laughs> see, see that? See that's the mentality. It's I like know, I know. Big dumb retard. Oh, he does have that murderous instinct. Oh boy. Oh, boy. No, but Marines but do. See, that's the first thing Marines he says. are tough, though. Yeah, yeah. They're tough. They got to psych themselves up. And I'm sure you could, but that's not the point. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Let's see you survive up in the ice. Now, are they going to give you some clothing? Jersey? Oh, sure. Oh, no. wait, wait, you guys are all talking at once. I'm sorry. W what did you just say? I said it gets cold in Jersey. Oh, you said it gets cold in Jersey. You're going to learn survival in yeah, Jersey. Yeah. And then, Robin, what did you say? I said, is, are they going to give him clothes or do they send him up there naked? I mean, is there a real challenge? Yeah, that would be the challenge. <laughs> Why don't you go up there naked? Yeah, that's not naked for a while. Yeah. <laughs> See you done. When you got called in in Desert Storm, what did you do? For that Eric hates Ralph. No, I was out in school. I was out in California. I was in radio school at the time. Eric hates Ralph, you can tell. Really? Yeah, like, you know, because Ralph, Ralph's a big pussy. <laughs> and he's, like, putting Eric down, saying, yeah, you, what you do is for pussies. And, Ra and Eric retard. now wants to kill Ralph. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean now? Because <laughs> Ralph's one of those guys, like, hey, I could do that, but I just don't want to. Yeah. And Eric knows it's hard. <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying it's not hard. I would love to see you try. I'd live for it. <laughs> oh, maybe we should send him ah, on a go. weekend. <laughs> hey, can Ralph get in with the battalion for a weekend? <laughs> Looking like this? You know how Marines respect hairdressers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, are you using right. the cursing? That <laughs> <laughs> shaved head of yours. What with it? Look at the haircut. Yeah, that's great. Maybe we should send <laughs> Ralph... Forrest Gump over there. <laughs> Ralph and Eric on a survival weekend. Do it together. Oh, no. I think no, that no, two no. of them at the same table at the wedding would be a survival <laughs> Hey, what's the seating chart? Did anyone know who they're sitting with? No, but you know what? When I got the invitation to the wedding, I felt really I felt really great. Like, I'm being invited to his wedding. This is really nice. And then until I found out, like, 
everybody's invited. Like, yeah, well, but what do you mean know? everybody? You thought it was special. Well, I thought Ralph? it was like no. I just thought there were. It was a little bit more hand picked, but it's like everybody. Well, who's everybody? I don't know. I think he, I don't know interns and just people he bumps into in the street practically. Go on, you, you don't gorilla, want to make me feel bad. Yeah, Gorilla and Ganji are invited. I think. Rich in the back is invited. You know, Rich Christian. Yeah, well, that's what, what, right. what, he hangs out with those guys. Yeah. He works. No, I just thought they were like. So, what are you? Why high? is that b a bother to you, Ralph? If it was more exclusive, you wouldn't be invited. <laughs> I know. I guess. <laughs> well, I I know some of the seating. How high up in the chain do you think you are, Ralph? <laughs> Not very. <laughs> I mean, seriously. What was he thinking? I don't know. So who's sitting with who? Well, I know that the Delabates, the Martlings, the West. And the Cronins will be sharing a table. Oh, Mark Cronin's gone? Yep. Oh, I didn't know Flying that. Flying in for it. Oh, wow. I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because the wedding's just a couple of miles from my house. <laughs> <laughs> and then I know there's a whole table of people who are bringing dates, which is almost everybody else here. Like John won't be there with a date. Ralph. Uh, won't be there with a date? Right. Because oh. he wasn't invited. Because, you, you know, I guess if you're not married, you don't get invited with a date. Yeah, well, it costs a lot of money to right. invite people. So I think, like, Robin and... Or you're not with a date, right? No. So I think there's a whole Ralph, table. Two I'd tables, like to volunteer. I think there's, like, two uh, tables of, like, single people that work on the show. <laughs> Ralph, you want to go with Eric? Yeah, I'll wear my dress. <laughs> <laughs> much, you can look much better. Hey, you think they'd mind that in the Marines if you dated Ralph at the uh, Iron Go wedding? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make it work out. Yeah. You sure you don't know any gay Marines? Hmm. I know none. <laughs> well, you know of none, but I'm sure there are some. Hanging out with guys every weekend, yeah, that's not the place the gay guys would go to. Ralph, is that a fantasy of yours, Ralph? No, no, not at all. I'm just saying. It probably disturbs you. Hanging out with guys, you're a hairdresser. <laughs> but I don't hang out with guys every weekend. No. All right, you two. <laughs> Take it out in the hall, will you? <laughs> all right, anyway, so... Um, I'm sorry I'm not going to see you in your, your dress uniform. No, you're going to wear it tomorrow. Gonna wear tomorrow. Oh, you are going to wear it tomorrow? All right, cool. All right. All right, yeah, I'd like to see that. Cool. I didn't realize Eric God, was in the Marines. I wish he had that sword. <laughs> I didn't know Eric was in the Marines. Oh, you didn't? No. Oh, he talks about it a lot. Not to me, he doesn't. Oh. No, maybe you don't talk to Eric. No. Why would I talk to Eric? Because <laughs> he's cute. I, I see him in the bathroom once in a while. Yeah, well, I don't go that way. <laughs> yeah, Robin really digs Eric. <laughs> Ralph, wear a dress tomorrow, and Eric, you wear your dress uniform, and then we'll, we'll see how you two look you. together. Crap out of him? <laughs> yeah, you'll beat the crap out of him. <laughs> That'll be good. You guys learn uh, self-defense techniques? Sure. Yeah? How to beat the crap out of dudes? He's always throwing people stuff to do in the hall, like well, he also drop says down. He's, and he's some kind of martial artist. Are you? Really? No, I used to take uh, kickboxing when I was in college. Oh, yeah? So you're not a kick-ass? Yeah. Yeah. Does your, does your uh, sergeant or whatever ever tell you to, like, take one guy over and, like, start fighting with each other and stuff? No, never. Never? Never. You guys ne have guys have never gone down to bayonets, huh? You guys never spar? <laughs> uh, actually, that training we don't do anymore. No? No. A wrestle? Do you guys ever wrestle? <laughs> like gladiators? <laughs> ever have blanket parties? No. Where you guys get your jammies in the cold weather and <laughs> little green jammies. <laughs> Sergeant. What are you guys sleeping? On the bivouac. Oh. Sleep bags. You sleep, no, but what do you sleep in? I mean, like. Oh, and you're in a sleep bag? Yeah. Shorts. Shorts? Yeah. A pair of gym underwear. shorts? Uh, sure. A little green shorts, a little t-shirt. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could you wear that tomorrow? <laughs> well, you're sleeping. You're going down, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's going to bayonet you. <laughs> All right, you two. Go ahead. Dismiss. Dismiss. Can I wait a second and let yeah. him go first? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you behind me, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dudes. Good luck at the uh, wedding. Hope you stay awake. He's waiting for you, Ralph. <laughs> I just can't believe a, a schlub like Einziger is like going to sit there and have like a royal wedding. Einziger has probably never been in a tux. No. He's probably going to look it's real... It's not his usual dress. Yeah, he's usually in a dress. <laughs> All right, Robin. Let's take a break and then come back right after these words. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks for helping me out on that song. So, so, uh, oh, oh. I forgot, are you going to Einziger's wedding? No, I'm out of town. Where are you? I'm in Rochester. Oh, yeah, me too. I'm going with you. <laughs> you going to get Einziger a gift? Oh, sure. 
We were just talking about that in here. How much money? Are you going to get money, I assume? Yeah. No one's going to go shopping. And plus, he's a Jew, and Jews like to um, get money as gifts. I know that. They always appreciate money. That's what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> what do you think? 300 bucks? That's what we were okay. talking about, and Jackie was like, 300 bucks? Wait a minute. Well, you know, in Jackie's world. You don't know him. Jackie said the rule of thumb is... You got to figure out how much I it costs. Asking. A, I, I didn't yeah, how, how much a plate? Right. Well, I said to him. But I'm not going to the meet. What is he paying for his dinner? Yeah, well, he's saying <laughs> you're supposed to figure like what it's. He says it's a fancy wedding. He thinks it's a fancy wedding because it's black tie, which is obnoxious. Uh -huh. I have never been. You're to paying for the tux. Do you know it? Have you ever been to black tie weddings? Yeah. I haven't. I think Donald Trump's was black tie. Never been to one. Uh, that to me is the most obnoxious thing in the world. Well, our executive producer for the E Show is getting married. Great guy, but his his wife totally pussy whipped him. <laughs> Just, you talk about a guy under control. <laughs> if you think you're pussy with... He has learned his lessons well. This guy has to carry a beeper so his wife can get in touch with him. He's well trained. Yeah. He hears that. That beeper goes off, he sits up and begs. This is oh. before he's even married. Yeah, I heard his wife's a real nag. It's going to get worse. She can really nag him, but that's what I heard. I don't know, but well, maybe not. How do you hear that? How do you get to hear that? Some people talk behind his back. Rumors. Well, you've heard the rumors that, you know, he has to pass every decision through her and everything. Yeah. Even career decisions. But I don't know if it's true. And then, and then I've talked to other people about her and said she's the sweetest girl in the world. Doll, yeah. doll face. But didn't she tell him she didn't like him appearing on this show? I don't know. I never heard that. I thought that was one of the things. Did you get a rap where you're not supposed to appear on the show? No. You will. <laughs> you're not marrying it. She'll get you there. Who tells you that she's an actor? I don't want to say, yeah. you know. I ask people. I say, "Hey, because you know, I'm worried about you. And I like you. You're yeah. a lot of fun. I don't want to get. I don't want you ruined by some girl. I've seen. You know, I saw Jackie get ruined for about two years until he snapped out of it. Well, he's still a little gun shy. Jackie used to be so much fun. We used to jump into a tub with Jessica he? Hahn, and then his wife yelled at him, got him so oh, crazed yeah. that now, for a while, he couldn't even go to a bachelor party. Now it's sort of back on yeah, track. Part of my problem. I apologize to my wife Nancy Did for you hear him uh, Jessica morning? Hahn death. Of what do you say? This morning you were talking about shaving, and then he said I shouldn't be saving. Yeah, I know. He's just get afraid to say anything. <laughs> Guys who are afraid to say anything. And I see you already like that. Imagine when you get married. But when do you see that? Give me an example. Uh, I don't know. Just all the time. I, I can't think of... I'm trying to think of a specific example. I just see you're, you're a little gun -shy. I thought that once when he was on the air, she started calling. Yeah. She did give him a beep. But I don't have the beeper expressly for her. Mm, sure. Well, of course not. Yeah, you give <laughs> out the number to other people. Yeah. Who's trying to get in touch with you? <laughs> you know, doctor. I've never called you on it. I mean, who's calling you on it? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's for the wife. Ah, Wait a second. Uh, who's uh, in to yeah. testify? They're coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> well, here's a pal from the E Show. Are you the spy? Yeah, I'm the spy. <laughs> what what happened? A lot of times, Scott's in the office. Yeah. And uh, I'm sitting at my desk, and the phone will ring in Scott's office. Don't be nervous. Yeah, this is his boss. He's talking about. This is his boss. Don't worry. I, I, I promise you, you will not be fired. Go ahead. Is that it? You won't fire me? No. Right, okay, right, go I won't be back. Right. So uh, what happens is the phone will ring and Scott's on the line, so he won't pick up the phone. Right. And then my phone rings about 10 seconds later. It's the wife. Where's Scott? Is he around? What's going on? Who's he talking to? Right, oh, right. Oh, boy. That makes a sweetheart, too. Right? <laughs> right. Look at him turning red. You nervous? Ooh. Am I nervous? No. I mean, you're nervous that, that he just said he just said everything that's true? That, like, she calls on the... Yeah, she calls then, on occasion to find me, sure. Yeah. And then a lot of times Scott's in the office and he'll be on an important call, probably with you or someone, and then the phone will ring and be like, Honey, not now. I don't, oh. I don't think oh. 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 Honey, not now. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's always honey. <laughs> honey, call oh. back later. And you can tell she like she thinks she's marrying somebody. You know, this, this is a guy who is going to be working for the World Wrestling Federation editing yeah. tapes. A tuxedo? I I don't know anybody who's ever been married in black tie. I mean, really, who are you? Did, I heard Prince uh, Charles. That's wearing the dress, though. Yeah. I mean, hey, that'd be funny. How do you get to that? Scott, you ought to wear the dress. Let <laughs> your wife wear the tux. How uh, do you get to that decision to have people wear tuxedos? It's, it's, that's something you, you really carried away with yourself. I mean, super carried away. I mean, to get to be, married at, to get married late at night and make people sit there and, and first eat dinner at but midnight is really the, carried away. How the conversation go? It, I mean, I had no input in that whatsoever. I mean, I will admit that there's a definitely a level of a dude. Of you a have no input in anything. Oh, what's this? I'm not paying for the wedding. You have more input on my show than you do at home. <laughs> how you know what is it's like? It's like a you know, it's a wedding gift plus another hundred bucks for a tux. You know? I'm better to Scott than his wife is. I always say to Scott, hey, you do whatever you. I trust Scott totally. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the E show, he. Had, I'll tell you, man, him and Robin do the whole edit. They do the whole thing. And I trust them. I've worked with them now for how long? A year? 
Yeah, and I worked with you before. And that. I don't even have to watch them. I mean, I had special computers put in by IBM so I could stare at what they were doing because right, I didn't so trust them. See them. And now I don't even hardly use the equipment at all. I haven't used it in months. But if his wife had that equipment, <laughs> oh, she could watch him 24 hours a day. Forget about it. She's trying to get that. The funniest thing is when you would, you know, call and tell his wife a nag. Yeah. Doug's in the back and goes, "Oh, I can vouch for that." Yeah. Oh, Doug. God. Doug, is that true? Yeah. Did she nag him? To be honest, though, well, you know, I don't mean that she's a bad woman, but no, did she nag him? Bad woman, though. Did she nag him? I guess she nags him. Yeah. Like, well, well, give me an example. I'll give you, no, I'll give See, example. I told you people talk behind no, your back. I'll give you an example. All right, give me I'll an example. example. During the, day, during the day, I get a lot of phone calls at the office. Right. If they're important. We do a daily TV show. you got to take care yes. of things. And you're right tied up with it, yes. So I have two lines. So on occasion, she'll call, and it's to me at that moment... It's a bad time. It's a bad time. So it's like, hey, you know, I'm in the middle of something. i got to... So it might that. sound like to Doug, like, like she's saying, hey, come on, I want to talk to you. And meanwhile, you're in the middle of something yeah. important. Yeah. I you know, you know what the funniest thing is, is that you know exactly who it is, because so Scott's mm. voice goes up, like, extremely high. Oh. Yeah. Ah! Honey, 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 I'll call you back. It's like he's castrated. Dude, just show you, seriously, back out. I'm telling you, I'm back out. I mean, it's going to be embarrassing to back out, but it's better than going through a whole divorce. No, it'll make you a hero, little man. Yeah. <laughs> Who's your best man? I actually have two best men. No. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, well, one I couldn't trust. One is her brother. No, 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 no. Oh. Two, two best friends. They both live in L.A., but one works um, on films. Like who is it? John Ryber? No, his name's Viggs. Michael Viglietta. And what does he do? He's an assistant director. And can he help you in any way? Uh, you should have John Ryber. Yeah. John's your connection at E. If you're going to no, I, invi power, no, uh, I invited Fran and John and Marta. But are they coming? They're not, coming. John's they're not coming either? No, well, John's in Cannes uh, for the film festival. Yeah. Yeah, you're not giving Mar that up for you. Yeah. yeah. Marta's just... Look at me. I'm just. I'm not giving up a free night at home. I'm going to be sitting at home. Fran's but not John's over there with those bikini babes. Yeah. yeah. Fran's not coming, but send a nice gift. Fran's the head of the E-Network. Yeah. And Marta just RSVP'd that she wasn't coming. Did you invite Lee? No. Stupid no. ass you are. No. Does your wife think... No, I mean, I know you're not thinking. Lee, Lee is the guy. Network. Yeah, but Lee is the head of the network. Yeah. You always invite the head of the network. You got to kiss ass a little bit. You're probably right. Tell your wife she's got a new power oh. broke. All you, she's you know? thinking about is where's Scott? Yeah, she's thinking about tuxedos. <laughs> and get everybody in tuxedos and make them eat at midnight. <laughs> what kind of gift are you giving, Doug? I'm going to give Scott money. What kind of money? Just, what, the price went up today, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah like money. Yeah, you better get a lot. Bribery money. Yeah. Uh, probably a couple hundred dollars. Really? How much? Yeah. A couple of hundred. Yeah. What are you giving? Yeah. What are you thinking of giving? Two. Yeah, I bet you every, everyone is having. Maybe my, I said to my wife, I want to give Scott a gift, but I don't want to go overboard so he thinks I'm showing up, but he is my executive producer. But I always end up over. She says, so listen to this. I said, eh, what a grand. So my wife goes, what are you, crazy? <laughs> That's a lot of money. That's it is. I go, but the guy's like, I don't want him to think I'm cheap. And then he, she goes, 500 is more than reasonable. And I said to Jackie, we think about 500. Jackie was like, <gasps> I, don't I, don't care. I don't care what you do. You can call me all the names you want. 500, you're crazy. <laughs> I did give that speech, but that was over 400. Yeah. <laughs> that was 400? Oh, I thought yeah. you were screaming about 500. Well, you know, it's funny because John's down. like sort of experienced. What's it cost a plate, do you know? Um... I'd say... Jackie says she's supposed to, you know, each person supposed to pay for their own plate. It's a lot. It's it's like... I think you should give more because how well, else do you have to give? Well, then we're the wedding. Yeah. It's like probably two and change. Two and change? Yeah. So a, a typical gift for a couple couple would be 400 Yeah, but... Gary, that's is that what a, you were thinking? No. That's a lot. Yeah, that's right. A lot. Wait, it's two and change ahead? Well, if you factor in, I guess... Oh, don't I factor don't, in your honeymoon. Oh. Just tell me what no, it costs no, no, no. to eat. <laughs> I, I don't oh, what's know, it a plate? I don't, know what the, I don't know what the breakdown is for the plate. Howard, let me Could you list that at the door? I looked at some of the finest places in Manhattan, and yeah. I think the highest price ahead I saw was like 140 Well, let me but tell you something, dude. years ago. Dude, you Three haven't years. been where I have been. I have a friend. This guy's like loaded and really into showing off. Right. He threw a wedding for his daughter at the plaza. Right. Are you talking about that one where the that, flowers cost 80000 80000 oh. for oh, the flowers. Yeah, that's true. It was a $300,000 wedding I went to. I couldn't find a thing to eat. There, you can, it I, was, could, it was three, I think they spent it all on flowers. I could buy a florist on Long Island for eighty grand. 300000 The flowers were it was flown in from France, I think. Oh, that, Switzerland. That was necessary. Switzerland, yeah. yeah. That was necessary. Three hundred grand. I didn't know what to give. And I, and I think... They thought I was cheap. I think I might have given like a seven hundred or a thousand. Or thousand. No. I mean, I didn't know what to do. Do you realize eighty thousand? And, and I never got like an outrageous thank you. Do you realize eighty thousand dollars is no. more than a healthy down payment on a great house? No, I know what I gave. Oh yeah, I know. But these these are wealthy people. You know, they, they don't worry about eighty thousand. Because not. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I, I don't care. Eighty thousand to them is flowers. If I had fifty million dollars, 
I would still not spend eighty thousand yeah. dollars on flowers. That's right. just the right. way I am. That's silly. I just I, I would I just couldn't do it. I know of one wedding where they made them take up the regular carpeting in the Waldorf Astoria yeah. and put down their own carpet. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, I know it's a lot. Of, it's a lot. That was the Norris wedding, right? <laughs> so let me tell you something. So then you're sitting there wondering what to get. I think I gave like five hundred bucks because I said, first of all. I don't know. I, I don't want to be seen as some imbecile going overboard. And I spoke to some guy who does business with him, and he was given a thousand. So I said, "Hey, five hundred bucks. That's it." Yeah, you're a client, right? Yeah, but I'm a friend. I mean, what? I oh boy, I, I don't think uh, they you were didn't pleased make at it all. Ooh, that's a, that's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah, but I think they look at me like you know, hey, he's on the radio. He's doing real well. No, but it's no matter how much money you make, so say if you're a millionaire, what do you Scott, what do you want for a gift? You? Seriously. I'm not going to give you a price. Oh, come just on. come on. Eliminate the, the guest list. What do you, uh, Gary, what are you giving? Price list. Oh, I was thinking about giving 200 but now I'm feeling very cheap. But that's an, I think that's a nice gift. Oh, you do? Like I you do. would think that was generous? Uh, oh, good. I you just saved me a bundle. It's all... 200 Jackie's I don't know generous? why all of a sudden I didn't ask his God to get married. Why is it costing well, me money? Didn't you? Yeah, why are you getting married and giving everyone... <laughs> hey, first of all, <laughs> what did it cost to get you the... Uh, oh, you had a tux. I had a tux. So that, yeah, I would first of all, do you know the height... Here's Scott <laughs> getting married, right? And hey, it's important to Scott and his wife, but really, in the great realm of the world, no one's going to notice that Scott's getting married. I think going out and asking people to rent a tuxedo, which is a ma you know, for working guys, a man, it's a major undertaking. Who has time? How could you annoy someone more on their weekend? Yeah. You make them stay out late. Right. Get make them midnight. Wear a tuxedo and rent a tuxedo and give you money to do it. That's why the drinks are free, so you can get loaded and forget what happened to you all week. <laughs> Uh, you know what's asking a guy to go out and buy a tuxedo so you can lot. get married I, is a lot, lot is a lot and so that it'll look pretty for your wife I mean you know a guy can yeah, wear a suit she's gonna turn around and everybody's well dressed at her wedding first of all if I was going I wouldn't wear a tux I know exactly what I'd wear I have what I wore to Trump's wedding I didn't wear a tux mm -hmm. I wore a pair of nice black jeans with a pair of boots and uh, a nice really nice sports jacket that looked like Dracula do you, do you own a suit I have a suit do you have you ever worn it I wear it with a T-shirt. I refuse to wear a tie. Oh yeah, that's a nice suit. Yeah, yeah I wore that to uh, Robin's party. What, what? Not the suit that you wore when you. Yeah, but that wouldn't be appropriate to a black tie affair. Yeah. So you what? wear black. Right. But you wear. I wear a nice pair of black jeans. My wife like the, the, the housekeeper presses them. Not my wife. She could do this. She's a crease meat. Yeah, crease. Uh... <laughs> so in recent years, you've never worn a tuxedo. To a, uh, um, no. You, did you no. wear one on New Year's Eve? I mean, but was, yeah, oh. that was a goof. Well, right. Anytime he's wearing a tuxedo, it's a goof. Anytime right. we would do right. those Channel 9 things, you yeah. on a tuxedo. That's because it's a goof. Like yeah. right. I mean, I get away with it because of who I am, but if I was any of you, I wouldn't get a... Uh, well, you know, I have, we have one for free, but it would have mm. cost around between 75 and 100 bucks. Yeah, but it's not, it's not the cost. It's, it's the grief. And yeah, the inconvenience. Right, right, right. You got to go get fitting. You got to go get yeah. fitting. Oh, but not only, that, not only do you have to get fitting, Dude. But you have to pick it up on Friday afternoon at the latest, and then since <laughs> yeah. you can't get it back on Sunday, you have to return it on Monday, which is a work day. And it's a it's prom season to boot, right? So it's always a crowd. What are you thinking, man? Why are you ruining people's I, weekend? I apologize to every one of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I, he's a nice, I like I love Scott, man. <laughs> I love you, man. I love you too, man. I mean, we think alike. Believe it or not, we are perfectly in sync when it comes to work. Amazing. And that's, that happens very rarely. <laughs> I was complimenting you all weekend to a bunch of television people, but not too much because then they'll steal you. Steal you away. But, uh, but I complimented you all over the place and everything, but I still think it's obnoxious the way you're pussy whipped. And I hate it. And I wish you, I know it's going to ruin you. No, it's not. I just don't, you know, well, first year you'll be all right. But then I'll be it's, done with yeah, you. Yeah, because it took Jackie a while before he mm. got. Uh, oh, Jackie was so pussy. Jackie under. used to be so much fun. You know what I, you know, when I do autograph signings now, people ask me, hey, say, hey, my friend's getting married, could you sign a picture to him? You know what I write now? I write, sucker. welcome to the club, sucker. Yeah, that's what everyone told me. <laughs> but I remember you having this conversation with Gary and, and he wouldn't And now him. Gary is, you know what, <laughs> Gary is so upset that he's when married. When I hear no, Gary oh, oh, man. Oh, come come on. On. I am not upset that I'm married. Not, How not jealous were you when Ross called you the other night from Los Angeles? <laughs> Excuse me, yeah. I sit in there yeah. and I can't believe it's Baba Booey bonding with Howard over these oh, stories yeah. about married life. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Last week we were complaining about our wives make too much noise while they sleep or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just, you know. Yeah, the, the alarm clock. Oh, yeah, right, right. Our Baba Bowie said to me when he was getting married, I really gotten it all out of my system. I'm yeah. like, no, you haven't. <laughs> you don't know your system. You don't know. <laughs> no, no, I'm not sorry that I got married, but it's a club. There's yeah. no doubt about it. It's a club. There's those who are and those who aren't. Ba -ba 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 There's just things you'll never understand until you're married. And I got to point out to you, because Jackie <laughs> is the worst example. Jackie is the guy who fell the hardest. Oh, oh.
He hit the ground and he's never recovered. Hit the ground. This took morning, eight years to get engaged. I this know. This morning, he said. You know, the one thing minute, I can't stand minute, is the way that you minute, pompously attack the whole minute, marriage thing and you don't even me. date. She's excuse smart me. enough not to. Stay out of the conversation. What did he say? I can observe him. He just, I just pointed out that he said I shouldn't be talking about this. Yeah. And he didn't even know he had said it. He looked at Fred and said, "Did I say that?" Because yeah. we did talk yes. about it. God forbid he says his wife shaves right. bad. He's he's chastising himself and he doesn't even know it. Yeah. Well, he'll be apologizing all day for his wife won't talk to him all weekend. I just want to he apologize won't get to my wife Nancy for uh, the Jessica Hahn death of incident. It's stupid and I'll never do anything like that again and I love you and I'm very sorry. I'm very sincere and don't please don't make a mockery of this. I'm serious. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to bring the show down. I just wanted to apologize. Yeah. That is that. Sorry, that yeah. is the eulogy of a former party animal. Wake, welcome to hell. <laughs> and then in, in your family is not like terrible. I invited my family over for Mother's Day. Uh -huh. My sister walks in. My sister loves to sabotage my marriage and ruin my weekend. <laughs> my sister walks in. She says she sees my wife and she goes, "You look great. You look fantastic." Yeah. I don't know what he's talking about. You know what, Howard? If I hear you say anything bad about her figure, oh, no. I'm going to yell because she looks gorgeous. What's, you know, you better not say a thing. Oh, boy. I said, holy <laughs> mackerel. Let me, true story. And my sister don't even know what she's saying. I, I mean, God bless you. She must either hate me. I was like, Woo! That was through the door. Right in the house, started right in from zero to sixty. God love her. Isn't Happy that a great Mother's thing Day. to say? Happy, happy Mother's Day. My sister, I God love her. I hope she has a happy life because she's making mine hell. I don't see red. I don't know. I should be I'm in hell, but I don't see red. So do you have to address these issues later in the day? Oh, so wait a second. So I go I go, I blew up. I said to my sister, I said, Ellen, what are you saying? I'm not saying my wife looks bad. You say things on the radio and ain't it. I go, Ellen, you walk into my house. The first words out of your mouth, Allison, you look great. I don't know what he's talking about. You're killing me. Why don't you put a... You. I said, wait a second, where's your husband? I said, hey, Peter. <laughs> hey, your wife looks great. Why are you saying she has a fat ass? <laughs> I said, Ellen, why don't you rape me? Why don't you pull down my pants and, 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 just, and just do something rude to my backside? <laughs> this is my sister. <laughs> this is my sister who, I, you know, who I, I, if I, if I have any ounce of love for anybody, I show it toward her. And I barely have love for anybody because I don't know what happened in my bizarre upbringing, but I feel little compassion for any human being. <laughs> I don't. Need, I have. I'm incapable of full out love. But wait a minute. Now later in the day is what I, you know. When everybody's gone, does Allison say, "What have you been saying?" Oh, <laughs> Welcome to my nightmare. What are you doing to me? The gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, what is that? What? Is, wh why don't you kill me? Why don't you walk in and do an OJ on That's me? That's the kind of thing your wife forgets about, right? Yeah, I mean, and it's just like, and then all of a sudden. You know, and my wife will at me and go, I know what she meant. I know, I know, oh, you know, and, like she, and then she's not. that's the And I go, you do? Because I don't. Mm. But even though my wife understands that my sister didn't know what she was talking about. She still. She still, it's still upsetting. Yeah. Why don't you just cut my throat? Why don't you cut my throat off? Oof. Why don't you come into my you house know, and make my life... You know, you feeling bad for you. Thank you. And that's tip of the iceberg <laughs> with the whole friggin' lot of them. <laughs> Had it with everybody. You, your wife, Einziger, and everybody else. <laughs> I never even met the woman. <laughs> <laughs> but he hates her. I just don't want you ruined because I have a nice relationship with you. Well, you can't ruin, Scott. I mean... Oh. You, you, <laughs> what? What could happen to us? Watch and see. Tell me what's going to happen. Uh, what's it's, gonna I'm happen? not going to predict... You don't know. If your wife came to you and said, all right, we're getting married, all the men are going to wear tuxedos, what would you have said? I would we've have said, problem. we've got a problem. Yeah, like my friends yeah, and my no, family, I am not going to. I said, I would say, Allison. I can't put them through that. Let's go in front of the mirror, take a good look at yourself. Do you see a crown on your head? <laughs> and when she didn't see the crown, she goes, no, I don't. I go, well, that's exactly it. People with crowns on their heads get married Somebody with tuxedos. At night. The, yeah, <laughs> at night. And we don't eat dinner till midnight. And then the wedding's over at four. It's not over for You're nuts. What, and you think people are standing around? whole weekend's going to be devoted to the Scott Einziger wedding. Have compassion. If you were invited to a wedding, what would you want? You'd want to go in the maybe, you know, maybe later in the day, 6, 7 o'clock, go there, have a few hors d'oeuvres, 
be done by 10, 11 o'clock and in bed, right? You'd be thrilled. I'd be happy to have spent the... You think people are going to want to stay up till 4 in the morning celebrating your uh, nuptials? You're crazy. Eat, I'm going to wait for my dinner plate till midnight? I don't... Who do you know eats dinner at midnight? But there's food before that. Jackie, who's completely out of whack, doesn't with, eat till midnight. I've never heard of a wedding with tuxedos, and I've never heard of a wedding with dinner at midnight, and this is both. Yeah. So Jackie... I said to Jackie... I, I said, said to Jackie, I never heard of Jews doing this. So Jackie goes, I thought it was a whole Jew thing. <laughs> I was all thinking. <laughs> so I go, these things always do that. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. And then uh, I go, no. As far as I know, Jews, Jews don't do this. Nobody. I don't think Einzig thinks of himself as Jewish. Because he's got a... He's like Presbyterian. Yeah, he looks kind of waspy. <laughs> do I? German. Yeah. You look Germanic. Mm -hmm. Like, you'd be thrown in an oven, but you'd be like one of the last. <laughs> yeah, you know, they so might they let you push the other people. <laughs> yeah, right. You might be one of the like one of the Jews that helps push <laughs> other Jews into the oven. You're one of the good Jews. You're going to last. <laughs> they didn't even give you a uniform. It took us years to figure out that you are a Jew. Are you sure? You, you had a, a buffalo. You really are a Jew, huh? Okay, goodbye. <laughs> well, this is a shame to lose you. But you have to go. <laughs> yeah, too bad. You look like us. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> have a nice afterlife. You're one of the good Jews. <laughs> too bad. You will be a mountain of ashes in about two minutes. Oh, th there'll be plenty. Any gold in those teeth? <laughs> I'll take this beeper, though. <laughs> Let me have that beeper. I'll get in touch, in touch with your wife, Debbie. <laughs> no sense in melting a perfectly good yes, beeper. While, while Scott's pushing people in the oven, Debbie's beeping. <laughs> Honey, I'm busy. Honey, Einziger. Your beeper is worth more than you. <laughs> <laughs> midnight, I'm looking for dessert and a way out of there. Midnight is first. Midnight, you're looking for the bed. Yeah, yeah for REM. <laughs> I think there's food when we show up. There's little snacks. Great. <laughs> Gary thought there was no food before the ceremony. There, I think there's rugula. Oh, they oh, oh, super. That's what everybody wants. Food they can't figure out what it is. <laughs> or how to say the name. <laughs> All right, good luck. Thank you. You're having a disco guy or you're having a band? A uh, band. Or are you having both? Band. Well, if you're wearing a tuxedo, there better be a band, Howard. Yeah. Orchestra. Yeah, orchestra. Violins and stuff? No. Horns. You're going to have, like, a ceremony where, like, all of a sudden, like, after the wedding... Okay. Everybody, uh, you know, eats hors d'oeuvres. And, and, of course, you're not allowed to come out during your hors d'oeuvre eating. Do you know that? I think you come out after a couple right. minutes. You know, no, you come out... Oh, you come out. After you like could come out for a couple minutes, but then all of a sudden they have to introduce the new couple. So everyone's sitting down at their table, and you two come running in. No, no, no. We'll be involved in the cocktail hour, which is right. No, you'll be involved with that. But then all of a sudden the, oh, the, yeah. the bar mitzvah right. guy goes. I think you're right. Ladies and gentlemen, now that you're seated at your tables, I am proud to announce the new power couple, Mr. and Mrs. Scott and Debbie Einziger for the first time seeing her with her new name, Debbie Einziger and Scott Einziger. The new couple. The new couple. Here they are for the first time as a couple. We're seeing them as a couple. May I present? I am proud to present. Meanwhile, Jackie's under the table, you know. <laughs> Am I going to eat? What are you that joint, Lancy? <laughs> he's drunk and he's melting all the gas. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, Jew. Hey, hey, Jew boy. Come here. Uh, the band's got some reef. <laughs> How many juices does it take to cross the street? <laughs> Are you guys going to be introduced? I, I think you're right. I yeah. think that happens. And once you say, see, you got to to think about it. Don't you, you say to your wife, hey, I don't want to be introduced. I don't want to be embarrassed. Speaking of wives, yeah. yours is on the phone. All right. <laughs> Hi, sweet. Hi. Oh, wait a second. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> Hi, sugar bush. <laughs> <laughs> What's you happening, baby? Howard. $500 would be more than enough for this situation. That's what I said. Yeah. I think I'm right on target. Yeah, I'm way overboard. I was at 1000 Well, we could go, we could compromise. All right. 500 <laughs> 250 <laughs> Jackie's giving 200 yep. And a blue nightlight. <laughs> what did you want, honey? I just want to say, you're making a home mockery of, of marriage in general. Well, yeah, marriage. that's the idea. And we have we have a wonderful relationship. Who said we didn't? You. What did I say? I don't know. I just kept No, you don't know because I didn't say anything bad about our relationship. I was talking about his wedding. No, you You think everything about... is a personal attack against you? Soccer, wait for the club, and all this kind of stuff. And I think that's extremely insulting to women. And extremely <laughs> No insulting... offense. No, you know what it is? He's in show business. 
He's going to have women throwing themselves at him. He's a really good executive producer. There's going to be tons of women who want him. Oh, God. And in 10 years, he's going to be going, oh, man, uh, look oh. at these young girls. You know what I mean? Who needs no, to live I'm in that? I'm just hoping for poor Debbie. She's not just the first wife. No, believe me, she is. <laughs> Oh, I don't... <laughs> hey, one thing you got to agree with me, Allison. We would never have made our friends wear tuxedos. No, no, I'm not into that. Her father wouldn't even wear a suit tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we had a really fancy wedding. Her father walks down the aisle. aisle he's wearing a sports coat and right. flats with those with those wallaby shoes. Oh, man. But my brothers wore suits. And even everyone at the... You know, I never told Allison this. Everyone at the wedding was like, oh, my God, the guy's not wearing a suit. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was like a major topic of discussion. Oh, good. I mean, everyone. And I just said, don't say anything to Allison. She'll get all upset. <laughs> her father walked it down the aisle. The guy couldn't buy a suit. He just wore a suit. Yeah, I mean, you'd think if he's walking his daughter down the aisle. That's my mother's problem. Like... And your mother was completely frustrated, but he wouldn't. He's, her father's like real cheap. He wouldn't buy a suit. <laughs> well, he, was, he, he paid for the wedding. I think that was enough. Yeah. Then he was supposed to pay for my hotel room that night. He didn't pay the bill. Oh, no. <laughs> Tried to bounce out of it. No, I think it was a home misunderstanding. Yeah, it was. It was a misunderstanding. But he didn't wear a suit, and like it was a major scandal. Like, people are still talking to me about it. <sighs> well, my brothers wore suits. They looked gorgeous. You sound so sweet. I'm going to get home. I'm going to do something. Uh, listen, Howard, I, don't really, I really don't feel you're portraying... And my wife's jogging, man. And the other day, I'm like checking her out. She looked really cute. Oh, yeah? Oh. Are you, are you, are you jogging now as you talk? <laughs> Dude, I want you on that track. I told her I want you jogging three to four times a day. Because you look really rather shapely. Jogging constantly. Yeah, more jogging, honey. Constantly. Up and down, up and down. Mm. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you back up on that sink again. You ever do your wife on a sink? No. He's not married. Yeah, well, whatever she is. She's been there for a long time. Yeah. What I time asked. does the way high? What time does it start? Uh, Midnight. I think, uh, <laughs> I think 9.15? Yeah, like 8.45, and then the ceremony probably starts a little bit after 9. You see, if you had done a regular thing, yeah. we would have come. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you want to know something? We would have. I'm sorry I'm not going to be at Scott's, because I really like Scott. But I know. I, I, you know what it is? I told you you would regret not going. I'm working this weekend. You think, you, then... could, you, think you could change the time? Could you <laughs> drop it down? No, you know what? I feel kind of bad I'm not going, but... But there's a reason at that time. I, I love sunset. you, though, man. Just know that, okay? I know, okay? because it's sunset. Give right. me a hassle. God comes well, out. Yeah, Scott Einziger, he's getting all of a sudden a religious Jew. He can't get married until <laughs> after sunset. Not my rule. Oh, please. Well, what happens at sunset? He turns into a vampire. <laughs> no, you know what it is? You can't get married on the Sabbath. Right. So when the sun sets Saturday, mm -hmm. the Sabbath mm -hmm. is over, and then you can yeah, get married. God will punish the marriage. Right. Pull It'll be a bad down. marriage. Yeah, pull the shades down and pretend it's night. I got married on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah, why couldn't he wear, marry on a different day then? Why is he choosing the Sabbath? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, better you're in that because who would want to ruin their whole Sunday after yeah. being locked inside some temple? Well, you know, you, we wish you the very best. Thank you. And, well, uh, I do too. I, I hope it works out. And it's a wonderful club to be a member of. Oh, please. I happen to have been very happy so far. Of course. Look at the lifestyle you have. So far. She's in her car phone, probably on her way to tennis. <laughs> Where are you on your way, though? Getting my hair colored. Yeah. Is she gets her hair colored. Are you having your nails and feet done? No, no. How no, come? Not today. <laughs> Jeez, that's another day, Howard. Yeah, that's some day. All right, baby cakes. Well, I try to look uh, good for you, Howard. Yeah, I keep trying. And learn how to shave. <laughs> she still has... Discuss this with Robin for two seconds. I don't know what her problem is. Allison, you go in the shower, and then you soap the area, and then you shave? Yeah. But why is there so many bumps? And so, I Robin, told you. No, you have to oil the area. But she needs a tougher kind. She has tough hair. Maybe hairs. you should need, use some kind of shaving cream. I do, I do. I bought. I use bought a gel cream. because it should be smooth and texty down there. None of the girls have that. All the strippers I see don't have that. Use Noxema shaving cream. Right. Noxema? And Nancy's hairier than you. <laughs> no, I bought. And Jackie's wife uses uh, Noxema shaving cream. And she has I tufts of hair. And a weed whacker. He told us she has tufts. I bought a uh, shaving cream. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Adele. Make sure the water's nice and hot and really lather good. Oh. Do soap and then and then. Yeah, you gotta have cream. a nice little soap there, a little lather there. Yeah. Oh, believe me, I am. <laughs> he, he's being he's looking for things to uh, talk. No, about. I'm telling you, the tops of her thighs. <laughs> he's got a magnifying glass. The tops, the, the tops of her thighs look like Al Roker's chin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, you. You ever see a black guy when he shaves? The shaving bump. They have really <laughs> tough <laughs> hairs, black people. And they they shave their necks and they get those bumps all over it because it's like pulling like steel out of their necks. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's, that's not the reason. That's the bumps. Ingrown hair. Oh, get out of here, ingrown, schmingrown. I'm telling you, I know about black people more than you oh, do. Oh, very well. 
Jackie's wife called angry, but she wouldn't come on the air. <laughs> What's her problem? No. She said she shaves every Friday and she wishes he would notice. Yeah. No, he notices, all right. She didn't hear the earlier part of the He'd show. He'd to sleep with me to notice. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Welcome to the club. What is you, you supposed to just go up and say, can I see if you shaved? No, but I get excited. Like, I take off my wife's panties, and all of a sudden, even before I take off the panties, I can see that there's been a rough, oh, it's rough and red and everything, and I go, honey... What are you doing down there? You're mutilating yourself. <laughs> you are so wrong. You and are take, so and by the way, use scissors and trim everything. And the, you know, this should almost be like what a landing strip, right, Robin? Well, that's what you say. I'm just uh, that's what you interpreting have, right? what you say. But you have a landing strip. Uh, I don't have to go. I'm not mean? interested in this discussion anymore. No, I want you to be nice and groomed for no, me you today. Know what? I'm completely. I'm going to come home. I'm going to be surprised. I'm completely turned off right now. Put a little perfume on there. And whatever you got to do. Perfume. All right. Yeah. Why not? Oh God. Go wild. He is so out of it. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. All right, I'm not out of it. Did you tell her about Miracle Bush? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw this commercial on TV. Miracle Bush. You can grow flowers in your bush. <laughs> Wonder what color her hair will be when she comes home. <laughs> it's always a different color. It's she not quite hair color today. Yeah, it's not quite brown. It's not quite blonde. Like white roulette. Yeah. One day she walked she's, in with red. She's giving you a new woman uh, every time. What? My wife once walked in, she had bright red hair like Bozo. Oh, we man. missed that. Oh, you missed didn't it. let us see that. I, I said to her, I'm going to tell you what, Allison. I realize you can't go back to the beauty shop now. It's closed. <laughs> Tomorrow morning you go back and you become a blonde again. And I'm going to tell you something else. You look so... Re the kids started crying when oh, they saw her. Oh, stop. I should walk around the house tonight with a hat on. That's how bad it looks. <laughs> you look like Lucy on, 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 on drugs. You, you, you never let us see. You got to have the skin tone to match red. Are there any pictures of that? Oh no, I would not allow it. No, he made her get it redone the next Ooh, day. Yep. He didn't let that happen. There was last no time to buy film. Hours. <laughs> <laughs> I I freaked. I said, I'm. I first of all, I won't be seen with you. <laughs> yeah. And it was the weekend. She had to go in on a Saturday. I said, I said, I don't care if you got to bring in twenty colorists. Yeah, you said you wouldn't go out with her. Said, they told me in the shop it looks really good. Yeah. That's like, you know, when they, they say... Wanted you, to go home. They wanted to go home. They say a pair of pants is three sizes too small, but they want to make a sale. Perfect. Hey, good luck, man. You'll have stories. Hey, good yeah. luck with the wedding, seriously. Because I know you're not coming in tomorrow. You have to prepare for you. What are you doing tomorrow that you have to prepare for the wedding? You need to take it two weeks. Is it rehearsal day? You need to take it two weeks and go to Hawaii. Ooh, a whole two weeks? Yeah. Who takes two weeks? With our money. Don't right, you get sick of her after a week? Oh, no, we're going to Hawaii, two different islands, so you got to... Yeah, but it's your wife. Now you have to go with her. You well, he your doesn't girlfriend. realize that yet. Yeah, he doesn't get it yet. <laughs> you don't know, man. I'm telling well, you. Well, you know what? It is enticing to men to want to be a part of these kind of stories. Yeah, they you think know, they it's great. With and you. they go, oh, yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> you're going to know you, you, what I'm saying now. You're going to see. I'm yeah. not kidding. It's hard to figure out right now. but You're going to see. Every day. Every day. <laughs> and then when you don't pay attention, you're going to accuse you of being not into you're it. You're taking me for granted. God forbid you want to go away for two days by yourself. Not allowed. Remember how your mom used to yell at you? Yeah. Your wife's going to yell at oh, you. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, <man>. You're getting <laughs> almost too much pleasure out of this. Oh. And, you know, just imagine the anniversaries and the oh. birthdays and the, all that stuff you got to now remember. Oh. And she's on good behavior because she wants you to marry her. Oh, so it, all, it all changes afterwards? You're sunk. It happens. <laughs> good luck. Thanks. I'll be thinking about you. Hey, Scott Salem, why don't you come in here and let Scott Einziger look at you? Gee, this is what a married guy, this guy's been married longer than all of us. Talk about a ruined man. Scott, come in here and let Einziger stare at you. Just look at him. Okay, watch this. Just look at him. All right, this is the okay. ghost of marriage future. Honey, can I just use the computer by myself once? No, Honey, I just want to use the computer one time, go on the chat line by myself. I want to go to scores with your the boys. Head, Scott. Honey, I just want to go to scores and see strippers. I'm not going to touch anybody. I'm like a, I'm, okay, I'll I didn't home. get a massage. I'm not Drum here. Roll, here. Take off your hat so he can see the Look your face. What to you? Remember just that face. Scott Einziger just wants to stare at you, Scott. This is before and after, Howard. Yeah. This, this will happen to you in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, when's the last time you were allowed to go to scores? I am allowed to go anywhere I All right, want. Why haven't you gone to scores with yeah, us? Why couldn't really you come like to my bachelor party? I'm busy. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> He's avoiding his wife. I'm the voice of marriage future. <laughs> <laughs> when's the last time you were allowed on the chat line by yourself? Uh. I told you I can do anything I'd like. I can do anything I like. It's looking like my wife. I just don't want to do anything. 
<laughs> anymore. <laughs> I have no reason to live. I have more important things to do. Look, at, look at his sad, sad three chins I and see. tell me that's what you want to look like. That's I the see. good life. I All eat right. too much. I get good home cooking. Is yeah. it Dr. Ed's guy? Want a cigarette? <laughs> Marriage. You'll be back there smoking with Scott. When's the last time? Marriage is a wonderful institution. T tell Scott how you weren't allowed one. to go to our Super Bowl parties. I was at every one. Yeah. I remember. And what happened to you when you got home? What happened? Were you accused of getting a massage? I was accused of it, yes. Even <laughs> when we did the, oh, no. the Channel 9 Super Bowl party, his wife got upset. And that was yeah. on TV. Yeah. He did nothing. She did not. Oh, well, come on, Scott. I remember all of this. Stuff. No, that was Jack's wife. Was that Jack's wife? Yeah. yeah. My wife, no. She All right. Well, I do remember the day that we were going to Philadelphia. Scott wasn't at the Channel 9 show. Oh, yes, he was. Because I, I remember those you purple mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you did get in trouble. legs of his. But you're don't, right. That's don't ask right. me about the time I took a shower before I went home. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but I remember the time we were going to Philly and we took one of those stops. <laughs> one of those strip clubs. We stopped off at a strip club. I, we were in a bus. Everyone was just feeling giddy. And we all just said, hey, let's run into this strip club. Uh, I'm I not can't. going. I can't go I in. I can't go in. <laughs> <laughs> he, stayed, he stayed in the car. I'll have to sit on the yeah. bus. He had to I catch up on his readings. <laughs> yeah. Very busy. Let's just put it this way. He right. stayed in the bus, okay? <laughs> You'll love marriage. Yeah. Hey, wish him luck, Scott. Come Are you on. going to the wedding? No. You're not invited? I got a gig. I got to do it my own wedding. Oh. Not my own wedding, but... Right. Nobody asked me. <laughs> Were you invited? Yeah. Oh. I have well, a, I, and I have a tux and everything. Well, why don't you congratulate him and tell him how great marriage is. Congratulations. I'm sure that you'd be very, very happy. Wish him to be as happy as you are in your marriage. Uh, would you really want me to do that? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> May you have as many joys. <laughs> so, just wish him that. I got to hear that. I, I would wish you to be as happy as I am. <laughs> With your wife. That was hard to get out. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, good Thank luck. You. Thank you. <laughs> good luck to all of you. <laughs> You're a beaten man. <laughs> you really are. Life is over. <laughs> uh, see the oh, black and blue mark? Uh, uh. <laughs> you guys go ahead in the strip club. I'll just sit on the bus all by my lonesome. Yeah, I don't really want to see a naked uh, girl. I don't want to see that. Here. I would love to go in, but uh, I can't. I, I can do what I want, but I remember, choose to be here. <laughs> remember the card game? I didn't lose. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was great. Tell Scott Einziger about how when you come to one of the card games and you say to me, Howard, for purposes on the air, would you say I didn't lose? I never said that. <laughs> Good luck, man. <laughs> You're going to be answering to a whole new force. I deny everything. A higher authority. Just, just say, Wait, I you deny start everything. talking about how, how your job isn't any fun and stuff so your wife will get mad. You go out there, you're having fun, I don't know. <laughs> I swear to you, it's not fun. It's not fun. It's work. It's work. I swear. Oh, well, honey, I don't even want to do this. <laughs> I hate I'd my job. I'd rather stay home with you, dear. Right. <laughs> and when you, you guys get massages in the studio and I run the board, keep all the women away from me. <laughs> I don't want them. <laughs> not interested. <laughs> all right. No matter how young. If Scott ever wrote his biography, his wife wouldn't recognize his life. <laughs> She'd be like, I didn't know any of this. I kept it all a secret. <laughs> No. You what, you lost the cards? You tell me you always had a winning streak. She knows I've, I've lost. She knows I lost. <laughs> Salem, a tragedy. <laughs> All right, very good. Good luck on the thank, wedding. Thank you. Everything, you know, Thanks, I, you know I care about you and hope it doesn't ruin you. Thanks. All right. I'll be laughing at you Saturday night. <laughs> we all will. That's Jackie. why everyone's smiling. Jackie, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a thousand if you yell stuff out during his marriage. You don't have to. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Just, I just want to hear one. <laughs> yeah, just one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and do you, Scott Einziger, take this beautiful Debbie to be your wife? Oh, 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 mazel time. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have wedding vows you're going to make? Do you have special vial, vows? Or did your wife write them for you like mine did? No, I, I'm supposed to write something. What did you write? Let's hear I, I haven't written yet. Oh, liar. Do you want us to help? <laughs> what are you thinking about? All right, now, a spur of the moment. What would you say to your beautiful bride, Debbie, in your marriage vows? My darling. Honey. <laughs> Be serious. Probably mention uh, uh, trust, mm -hmm. um, love, right, 
Uh, you better put scores in there, too. <laughs> and the ability to go to scores every once in a while. Sex. Do it now. My marriage vows, my wife wrote them for me. Yeah. They, it looked like a laundry list, and my wife had nothing on her. her. <laughs> she promised nothing. I had a promise that forever I'd be with her, never, ever, ever <laughs> cheat on her. We're not. I mean, did you say it during the ceremony? Oh, yeah, I had to read oh, it I'm to not her. doing that. What oh, I had to get up that? and read it in front of oh. everyone. What are you talking about? Oh. Just give some a couple words to the rabbi, and he, like, Oh, you're gonna let the rabbi in? say it? Yeah, we're not gonna. No, say that's, that's a douche thing. move. No, it's not. Goofy. I think what you did is goofy. <laughs> you mean you're gonna let the rabbi give your wedding vows? Yes, yeah, just. just Scott has not... promised to never cheat on the beautiful Debbie princess. Come on, you can't have a rabbi do it. Yeah, you gotta say this. I, you better check with your wife. I bet you. No, that's no. We I bet you ten that. billion that no, she that, wants that you really doing them. Like oh, no. I never heard of that. I can't believe you did that, Howard. Yeah. Oh, you boy. You stood there and did that? Mm -hmm. oh, it was, boy. It, I was told. Oh, boy. You want her, you got to do it. You got that on tape? <laughs> Unfortunately not. They didn't have VCR things back then. <laughs> really? No. Oh. It was 20 years ago, yeah. my man. They didn't Break even film? they didn't audio tape your vows? Nobody cared. No one knew I'd be anything. It wasn't like yeah. someone they they weren't waiting waiting for my every word. <laughs> I gotta take a break here. We gotta do the news. We gotta get off the air. It's really a mess. Yeah, because Scott's getting married. Yeah, we're almost at the wedding. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, take a break. We'll be back. And by the way, that guy who works for us on the E show, that guy Eric who was not I don't know if you heard the show yesterday, but Eric's in the Marines. And I heard that he was, we, our, our executive producer of our e-television show was getting married. And I heard Eric was going to show up at the wedding, not in a tuxedo, but in full marine dress. Dress blues is what yeah. yeah. So I was goofing around with him yesterday. I said, hey, why don't you wear those in here today so I could see what they look like? He took me for real. I hear like he's, a good Marine, he followed orders. Yeah, he's walking around in his dress blues. Everyone says it's hysterical. Have you seen him yet? Have you seen him? I think I just saw him from the back. Dress blues are weird. Like, they look very out of place here. He's Gomer Pyle. Remember Gomer yeah. used to wear those when him and Sergeant Carter went out on dates? Yeah, right. That was always good with Lou Ampuvi and uh, <laughs> that, that other woman. Bunny. Bunny. <laughs> and they'd go to a bar and they'd be in their dress blues. Right. It's the same exact outfit, though. But what's weird yeah, is... Yeah, they when don't it, change that. What's weird is when you see it in this environment. Yeah. It doesn't belong. On him. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't belong on anyone in this You fear him in the outfit. Yeah, though. Eric, where are you, man? Come in here and show it off. This is how they get guys to be in the Marines. They get all excited when they get dressed up. <laughs> Let me see this. <laughs> <laughs> is it wild? Hey, man. <laughs> wow. Are you back there like? Do, are you back there working on the television show like that? Sure. Yeah, are you? <laughs> with the gloves? Oh, uh, no, no. You took the gloves off? <laughs> no, you can't do little buttons with the gloves. They slip. You love this uniform, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's outstanding uniform. Yeah. Did you get a fresh haircut? Yeah. You've got a fresh you haircut? You have to have a fresh haircut to... To wear the outfit. Exactly. But you have to respect the outfit. Absolutely. Hey, um, I uh, check out the shine on the shoes. Let's see. <laughs> I, you know, I, I hate to run an inspection here, but your belt <laughs> is getting a little tight and it's wrinkling the coat improperly. Get out. Two demerits. Two demerits for that. Let me see your boots. Let me see that shine on those shoes. Oh, whoa. Did you shine those? No. Those are tuck shoes. You had someone shine them for you? Core frames. They're what? Core frame. They don't require any polishing. Oh, is that, that right? Keep them clean. No kidding. Right. So you wiped them down? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. What do you mean you weren't serious? And metals on? Hey, hey, what's that metal for, my friend? Which one? The uh, the big the big ribbon there. This, okay. this, or this? Oh, let me see, see. They're all different. Well, those are different. Which one is it? What are you talking about? Well, this one is a uh, meritorious unit accommodation. Yeah. This one's a national defense ribbon. Oh. But everyone gets that. Everyone gets Just about everybody gets this one. <laughs> the national defense one? With the <laughs> big cross? The thing that hangs no, this down. is a sh uh, shooting badge. Oh, for, for a good you, shooting? You qualify on a rifle range, and then you get, depending on how you qualify. Right. Cool. Some guys have a lot more, right? Uh, there's three types. I see. So you've got them all. Uh, no. no. You get one. Oh, I see. Either you're an expert, sharpshooter, or you're a marksman. And what are you? Sharpshooter. Uh. You're not an expert? No. Missed it by a couple points. Pussy. Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're going to do something. Do it well, man. <laughs> so are you a wolf, bear, or lion scout? <laughs> <laughs> I never took the bear test. Hey, man, you look pretty sharp in your I'm uniform. I'm surprised that he put his hat down on the desk. Usually they keep it under their arm. Yeah, how come it's not under your arm? Come on, soldier. Soldier, why did you put your hat down on the desk? Hey, let me check out that hat. Can I try it on? No. Oh, man. Come on, dude. You dirty hippie. Did you really go and get a haircut? Uh, yes. You did? Actually, because uh, also for Enzinger's wedding, because it grows in real fast. I see, because your head is practically shaved. The guy has hair, and his head is practically I know, bald. I know. <laughs> it's a real shame. Guys who have hair shouldn't be allowed to cut it that short, because it pisses off bald people. Yeah, look at what he's doing with that hair. He's like, look at that guy. He's got a full head of hair, and he's just yeah. shaving he's his just head. He's showing off, because it grows so well. Who did that? 
Uh, go down to Astro Place. Didn't mm -hmm. get cut. Astro Turf Place? <laughs> <laughs> I used to go to this little old guy in the village. He's all, he used to do a straight razor. Yeah, right. Do the sides. That's pretty cool, though. You know, like, you know, guy, you see, I'm just glad. You can his rank on the side. Let me see. Yeah. Look at that, Corporal. Yeah. But now, you're but really. You're sergeant, what do you get? Three of those? That's correct. Okay. That is correct. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's even acting like a military guy now that he's in his uniform. Cool. Hey, man, you look pretty good. It's, it's a pretty intense uniform. I think and look that... at those stripes down the side. Now, where would your sword go? Um, actually, <laughs> the sword's in his pants. <laughs> the sword hangs on the belt on the side. Uh -huh. You know what's kind of cool, in a way? You should wear that every day. We should all get uniforms because then we wouldn't have to worry about what we're wearing to work. We, it would be easy to get dressed in the morning. And you couldn't make fun of people like Jackie wearing that stupid shirt. Yeah, I mean, everyone is talking about Jackie's shirt. It's just the most hideous shirt on the planet. This shirt? Yeah, it is so ugly. We just got here. Everybody's talking. I know. <laughs> Every, everyone is talking about it. I like this shirt. It's very comfortable. Yeah. And uh, if we all wore uniforms, no one could make fun of what we wear. And we wouldn't have to have any, we don't have to put any thought into it. No right. I'm thinking of, uh, you know, on, on the design of Eric's outfit, <laughs> of designing a Howard Stern Show uniform. You know, uh, there'll be special woman's uniform. Wait till you see yours, Robin. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Not much cloth. I'm going to rebel. <laughs> You're almost a little Annie Fanny in this thing. Oh, yeah. Two, just two little patches for your breasts. Yeah. <laughs> crotchless. Yeah. yeah, easy access crotchless <laughs> underpants. <laughs> Yeah, certain things that you'll need for the show. Do you like those waitresses I met on that night? I was trying to trying to decide to be a stripper. Yeah. She wore a belt and two bracelets. Yeah, that's what you need. <laughs> that's going to be your uniform. You're finally going to get to wear that. That's pretty cool, man. So where do you wear that uniform besides, like, Einziger's wedding? I uh, use ceremonies. So All right. The Marines have a ball once a year. And mm -hmm. you wear that? Correct. Do you bring checks? Uh, one. You're allowed to bring a girl? One that's girl for Who do you wear? What's your story, man? Camp. You're not married or anything. No, I have a girlfriend now. You do you? Yeah. She hot? Oh, she's gorgeous. Yeah, because you're a pretty good-looking guy. I mean, that's what all the girls say. Right? Yeah, he's good-looking. Wish I was good-looking. <laughs> there you go, guy. What, you got an Oriental? Yeah, uh, she yeah, is Filipino. Is that right? That's the whole deal, Howard. What? Is, I mean, not all the time, but 90% of the time, he dates, um, like, Asian women. A lot of guys in the military do. Yeah, he's he got that typical <laughs> military I, I think he gets them out of, like, soldier of fortune. Well, you know what it is? They're very oh. subservient. They're very subservient. Not this one. Sir, really? Subservient? Oh, no. Subservient. What's that? Subservient. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, she's real smart. She's real smart. <laughs> what is she? Oh, yeah. But I knew military guys <laughs> who brought their wives over and wouldn't even teach them English. Yeah. So they'd be running around. They had to they rely need a, on them for everything. But they need a woman who's into the orderliness of a man leads the family oh, and the yeah. woman does everything else. Yeah. And that, that would fit the Filipino profile. Yeah, lots of those Asian uh, societies, yes. Plus, they like to hump the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Close to the enemy. Continue to punish them even after the war. Yeah, they like to sleep with one eye open. <laughs> <laughs> the enemy. <laughs> uh, uh, that's cool. All right, man, so there you are in your uniform. No, so you gonna, can I get out of this now? Side? So you're going to wear that at uh, Scott's wedding, huh? Sure. Cool. And well, actually, Einziger requested it. Really? Yeah. Now, are you going to stand around like that all night? Because he's standing at, at ease oh, position. Yeah. So what, man? Well, this, this is a Marine. This is actually the most comfortable position you could be in right now. Yeah. Sitting doesn't work. Right. What, in that uniform? Correct. Really? Because the belt is tight? Well, it's just it's a form-fitting uniform. So right. you're meant to be standing, not sitting. I can't believe he works on my TV show. <laughs> now, snap to attention. I want to see what that looks like. What's that? Snap to attention. Give me again. Come on. Come on. And salute me. Come on. Would, I'm your general. That. Why not? Well, I'm a captain. She's a captain, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uniform. Why can't you salute me? Seriously. I am the general of this show. Right. And you You're work for me. You're the king of all media. That's right. And that's your commander-in-chief. <laughs> <Not the> general. <laughs> salute you your commander-in-chief. <laughs> let me see. Let me see. What, let me see. Ten chun. Ten chun. Ten hut. Oh, ten hut. Ooh, whoa. Ooh, whoa. <laughs> yeah, put on that face. Put on the face where you don't... Uh, you were smiling. That was bad. <laughs> don't smile. Do a marine face. Wait a second. I'll give you the full effect. All right, yeah. give me the full effect. Take that stupid headphones off. <laughs> okay, Mickey Mouse. All right. Let's see. Yeah, okay, good. Oh, now he looks like a marine with the hat on. Look at Tom Hanks with the hat on. <laughs> That's why they call him Pump, I guess. All right, here we go. You ready? Ten hut. Annie! <laughs> what what's the command when you want him to salute? Salute? Oh, no. Goodness. Uh, I don't know what that it's would be. It's not for that arm. No, it's not that. That's good. You have a rifle. There you go. Uh, Ten hut! Ten hut! Salute me! 
<laughs> Don't salute me. All right, I didn't say Simon Says. You lose. No, no, no. You were trying to salute, and then oh. he can put his all right. arm down. Oh, okay, all right, all right. All right, put it back on, Eric. Still going? Uh, Turn hearts! Are we still going? Yeah, yeah put it, put it, it back on. on. I want to do the whole <laughs> thing. I want to command somebody. Talk some about faces and stuff. Okay, okay. Oh, wait a minute. Ten hut! Wait, yeah, yeah, take, take them off. Put on your stupid hat. Go ahead. Let's do that. All right. Move no. <laughs> <laughs> the chair right. to the march. Soldier, ten hut! At ease. Ten hut! About face! Knock it All right. Ten hut! Salute no, me! Okay. Your turn to salute. <laughs> you can uh, stop saluting. You can stop saluting. Sal I, I saluted you back. Now you can put your hand. <laughs> he doesn't even know what he's he doing. He doesn't know what he's doing. Are you the one that you're just a, a lieutenant or whatever the hell you're Give him a right face and a left face. Right. Ted Hut. Right face. Left face. Left no, face. Give him another. Oh, give right. him. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you do it, Robin. Okay. All right. All right. Go he ahead. Hear me, right. He can't hear me because he doesn't have headphones on. All right. Here, listen to Robin and follow her commands. <laughs> Go ahead. Ted Hut. Wait. <laughs> you say what I'm saying. All right, right, I'll do it. We take off your headphones. Do this take off your headphones. I'll do it. I'll do it. Ten. Ten. Hut. Right face. 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 <laughs> <laughs> march. Boy, march. You can't march right into the microphone. <laughs> Present your medals. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, thanks, Eric. Oh, goodness. Oh, now you kick me out. Yeah, so what do you want to do? You want to stay here? Fall out. All right. Just says you know what you do, Howard? Not. Give him the directions. To <laughs> march out. Okay, because <laughs> okay, he won't know how to do it otherwise. Uh, Take your head Left face. <laughs> no, you got to put him out of tension. All right, Ted Hut. <laughs> and let's march him out of here. Ken Hut. Walk with this. Uh, <laughs> go. Left face. Left face. Come on. Ten hut. Left face. <laughs> <laughs> hut. 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 Hut
Let me see. So, you know, he's a nice looking guy. Wife, very pretty. Let me see. I've what, never he needed seen this? her. She's cute. She's I good. I don't know who the lovely Mrs. Einzinger is. She's good. She's good. She's good. Scott looked great when he came out. I didn't even recognize him. Yeah, he didn't wear his glasses. He wore contact lenses. And he stood up straight. And who's that guy? This guy right here. Uh, oh, he used to work on our old e on the interview show. I forget his name. Hmm. I don't know him. But is he in a wedding party? Show Robin uh, the picture of Scott's wife. You can't really see too much. Who is the photographer here? Uh, Mel uh, sh shrink. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't hire him to do your. No, work. I don't know who. I don't know. It's a fine photographer. It's just that it's a. It's like a crowd of people there. Wow, I didn't even recognize Scott. Looks handsome, right? Yeah, who is that guy? Hey, so but anyway, concentrate on this, Robin. I want to yeah. tell you a story. All right. So as I predicted, the wedding started at. First of all, you got to understand something. Forget about old people. Old people cannot take weddings that where they serve the dinner at midnight. That's what they call the dinner for at midnight. The wedding is supposed to take place Saturday night. Black tie. Can you imagine? This, guy, this, this guy's not royalty. Neither is his wife. A black tie affair. They're asking people to go out and rent tuxedos. Now, really old people, like his grandmother, his grandfather, his aunts and uncles, these people can't stay up all night for a stupid wedding. While it's an important wedding to Scott Einziger, it is not important to everyone else. To the rest of us, it's like, hey, isn't it great? Scott's getting married. I wish him a lot of luck, and God bless him. Let him go go off into hell. <laughs> you can't tell who the groom is from these pictures, because everybody's all dressed yeah, up. Yeah, but Robin, let, yeah, yeah, everyone was as dressed as the groom. Yeah. This is a tremendous inconvenience for people. You know, weddings have to be made for the convenience of your guests. You're there to throw a party for your guests. The women think, oh, my God, this is my big moment. I want it to look like Lady Di and Charles coming down the... Please, hoofa, use your brain. Was it obnoxious or what? Well, I mean, it was... I mean, come on. It was a good wedding, but, you know, we didn't... Well, no, okay, So, listen, listen. Yeah, take a guess what time they actually took their nuptials. The actual time they got married. All right. It was called for 845, which is right. way too late. I would say they probably got started around 9.15. 9.30. Um, no, so it was around there. Between 9.15 and 9.30, okay? Okay? Because they always go off late. I told you it would go off late. What time did they serve dinner? So when did you eat dinner? Main course. Midnight? 1.10. Are you <laughs> kidding me? One ten. I would have been out of my mind. I would have been out of the meeting. I would have been out of the reception. Of course you would have been. <laughs> and the point is, you had a whole bunch of guests sitting there. Now, can I say something? There's a lot of people who have children mm -hmm. that you have to get up at 6 so, o'clock uh, in the in morning. In other words, children don't come to these no. weddings. No. Like Baba Bowie left Baby Jackson at home. Yeah. And baby, you got to get up for the baby. I saw Gary on Sunday. He goes, oh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I go, what happened? Baby woke up at six. His wife made him get up and be with the baby while she well, slept. She slept. Oh. I said, "Dude, you are an a-hole." I said, "You gotta start talking to your wife." This guy, this guy gets up for a living every day. Never wakes up without an alarm clock. What's what is going on with you? And he can't talk to his wife about it. She yells not. at him. She didn't yell at me. I'm so glad she you're just, in hell. She just said, "She no no." My wife said. You want the six o'clock feeding, or do you want to get him when he wakes up? So I was and you drunk. Said, and you should have said, "I don't want either." I was drunk, so I said, "I'll, I'll get him when he wakes up." But I should have taken a six o'clock feeding because it's ten minutes long. Then you go back to sleep. Instead, I was up at eight o'clock. Why are you taking any feeding? Do you know I never fed my kids once? Are you never? Ever. First of all, is your wife breastfeeding? Yeah, so well, partially. Then why? Then why the are you feeding? Oh, no, no, she's uh, you know she's breastfeeding, and we're also giving a bottle. Don't her breasts hurt? Sometimes. Yeah. Does she have to relieve her breast? We're weaning. Oh, are you? are trying to cut back. <laughs> We're cutting <Okay>. back. <laughs> you know, I never once got up and fed the kids. Never. Never. What is never. It? Zero. Wait, Even when we didn't have help. I don't believe you never did it. You never, I'm t call my wife. I'm you, telling you. you never if I did it, it really, I only did it like once or twice to see what it felt like. And then, you, and then it not, like, wears off. It's boring. Stay in and bed. you say to your wife, <laughs> you, you stay in bed and you say to your wife, you know what, honey? I get up every day. Your job is to take care of the kid. You're not working right now. Your job, you're working. You're working with the kid. I what get up is early. What happen when Gary's wife goes back to work? Gary's wife will become even more of a help. Oh. 
<laughs> and I show Gary. My oh, wife, oh, oh, we're oh. sitting by my pool, right? She's not at work. I'm sitting with Gary and Ratso on a Sunday, talking to them about uh -huh. something. My wife walks in, we're in the middle of working. <laughs> she brings the baby. And she goes, the kids want to go swimming. Would you watch the kids while I go? I said, Allison, see, I'm sitting by a pool. When a person is sitting by a pool, it looks like they're having fun. <laughs> I said, but this is not fun. You have to explain to her I am, how this is not fun. you got to teach your wife. I go, I am working now. Kids and work don't go together. You can't watch them and work. Leave. He, you Howard, didn't throw her out. Howard snapped at her, and I couldn't figure out whether Allison just was laughing at him and ignored him and walked away, or whether this is just regular he snapped. around there. Of course I snapped. Yeah, I got limited uh, time for nonsense. Uh, 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 he told her to leave, and then she left. That's all. And I, and I turned to Gary and go, That's embarrassing. That's how you that's talk to your wife. That's humiliation. <laughs> sure. And that's wrong. Of course you it's wrong. You don't snap at her in front of Baba Booey and it's Ratso. Like, I only did it so Gary could learn how to talk to his wife. <laughs> You're making an example. Huh? I'm the king of mine castle. <laughs> <laughs> you get away from mine pool. Yeah, get out and out and see at the pool. I am relaxing now. Of course, five minutes later, it was us who left the pool. Yeah, well, the kids came in and we left. He did, make, he did make his point. He did. You didn't see me feeding them. Man, oh, man. Now, let I me can't tell you. believe it. Let me tell you something. Napping. And my yeah. wife, God love her, she got minimal amount of work to do. Once or twice, she's got to be involved with the kids. Let her handle it. All I know is, the one thing I will say in your wife's defense is you couldn't possibly replace her yourself no. you have no idea what she does let me tell you something i get i could hire someone for about a hundred grand <laughs> pay them way too much they could do three times more than my you wife do that doesn't matter exactly. if she left two today people 50 and grand you a piece. had to replace her yeah. you wouldn't even know what you needed you know what it's every man for himself <laughs> i'll get through it i know what she doesn't do that's one thing I can tell you. <laughs> I'll hire someone who can think of things to do. <laughs> All right, listen to me. That's your... You seriously? I saw the way you were with your wife. I met baby Jackson for the first time. Oh, yesterday. did you? Oh, yeah. And how is he with the wife? Oh, his wife got him trained. He, he's jumping through wow. hoops. He's I jumping through hoops. Figured. She comes out. So Gary's now got a family man's jeep you know oh yes he got the jeep car. is loaded with the baby seat and all the crap in the back right so the wife comes out and she says to him hey she's snapping at him hey listen to this she goes she goes like this hey i thought you were supposed to be the man this is a man's jeep and load the car up with all this stuff guess who ended up having to load it oh now personally i would have taken her like this i said i'm going to tell you something you see it's sunday this is my one day off i have to work today with howard <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I busted my balls right in front of everyone. I would have dressed it down. I would have said, listen, <laughs> you had to lift three things and stick them in the car, and you're going to sit here and bust my balls? Get the hell in the car. Go home. Already, get, already. get yourself home. I would have. <laughs> you look at in the car, and you see Gary stripped of all his men. Yeah, I mean, and Gary, and then she stands there. I was stripped before I got the car. And then Gary's like asking permission. He goes, uh, why don't you hold the baby, and I'll hold the bags so I can go, you know, get the car set up. Please. Then the wife comes, and she's stands there. God love your wife. She's got you trained like a puppy dog. She's standing there holding baby Jackson. And baby Jackson's no lightweight. No. He's no. a big boy. He's a big boy. Beautiful boy. And she's holding him. And she's sitting by the she's standing by the car seat. I see what's going on right away. I size her up in two seconds. Baba Booey's in a coma. Oh, I, I could tell this right away. He's, stand, he's standing there. And she's going to hold the baby until Baba Booey comes over and sticks the kid in the baby seat. She's not moving. She don't move. <laughs> and I'm watching this battle. I see the battle going what? on. There's a power play. There was a battle going Did I catch this? Absolutely. All right. Now, Absolutely. no one knows what's going on. I'm watching. I'm watching to see Baba Booey. Right. What happens? He's back there. He's talking to me. He's avoiding, avoiding, avoiding. He don't want to put the kid in the car seat. Because I know. Putting the kid in the car seat could take hours. It's, it's a, not You know, it, it wrenches your back. you got to wrench your back. <laughs> it's, it's a real pain in the ass. And my wife's whole rap is that. Since she wrenches her back all week, can I wrench mine on the weekend? Yeah, well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And she's standing there and just standing there and standing there. She has nothing to do. Going to stand there. And finally, Baba Boo gets over and puts the kid in the car. He doesn't look at her and say, what is wrong with no, you? Get no. the kid in the car. He goes oh, over and does his job. Let me tell you something about Baba Boo. <laughs> Baba Boo gets no sleep now. Baba Boo has no life, and I love it. <laughs> Baba Boo used to have the perfect life. I used to say it to him. I warned him 900 times. I said, you have got some deal going. You get to have sex with all the girls on this show. You're shop. living in Manhattan. You're living in Manhattan. You have a great apartment. Yeah, I said, you're in love with Mary now. I said, you'll get over it. 
And you know what? She'll hang in there and just be your girlfriend for a while, and you can cheat on her. It used to be, yeah. should I go to the screening of Planet Hollywood, the Nick game, or just go and hang out in Central Park in Chiefs Meadow and look at the women in their bikinis? <laughs> or go bike riding <laughs> or do whatever you want. Yeah, Gary yeah. can't go bike riding now because his wife bah, 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 has decided How that... How many nights if, a week did he go out? I mean, we used to scream. He out every him. night. Because he was always groggy and had no voice. Never had a here. health problem, nothing. Now he's on three different medications yeah. for headaches. <laughs> and you, you should see, we're sitting by my pool. He's I look at, No, I look at Gary and I'm watching him. And all of a sudden, there's blood trickling out of his nose. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, Gary, let's stop for a second. There's blood trickling out of your nose. He goes, really? He goes, you know, all the medications I'm on, I think they dry me out. And he's blowing his nose and blood is all over the place. I mean, there's blood on the napkin. You're going to explode. I personally think I have a brain tumor. Yeah. He is having the worst this nightmare. This pressure's going to kill you, Gary. I can't wait to get married. What? I can't wait to get married. <laughs> yeah. That sounds great. <laughs> you know, Howard usually, Howard usually embellishes. He hasn't said one thing wrong yet. <laughs> I mean, what happened? I wish I could say he I was watching that thing. battle of the baby seat, the car seat. And I just said, you know, i got to tell you something. I love the whole thing because I love watching guys who, who ruin their lives. And, I, and guys I've warned. <laughs> and I said, you know, I didn't just, I, I should think, Gary, here is what's going to happen in your life. It's all going to end. Yeah. Everything that you can do is going to end. Stepping out of the house, or carrying, and Mary's gorgeous. I'm going to tell you something. But, but, you I saw her. She looks better than ever. Everything she also enjoyed. was very smart about it. You know, the whole time they were dating, oh, go out with your friends. Yeah. No problem. I told you. And I said to him, that's all going to stop? And he said, no, it's not. Mary's not like that. I said, she is like that. She doesn't know she's like that. Wait till you have a baby. Oh. You know what my favorite room in the house is now? Yeah. Take a guess. Basement. No. What? Bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, you can no go hide you. in there. Long, long, you. like 20 minutes. I sit in the toilet. What concerns me is you're on the medications now, and your nose is running with blood. And this is early. <laughs> and <laughs> and it's, it's all because you got to get your wife in line. And I'm going to tell you something. Early in their relationship, <clears throat> Howard, this isn't a long time in, and he's already cracking under the pressure. Wait till they decide to have a second kid, which they will. I've told them not to, oh, but yeah. they will, because this is going to go on again. And let me let me say something. Pe Robin was asking me this uh, last week when we had the same discussion. She says, "What is the ideal wife? What is the person? You know, if sexist, be sexist if you want. Tell me what it is you want. Let me yeah, hear. What is it you right. guys want? I made a list. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> All right, <laughs> I made a list, and I'd like to read it to you. Oh, now. go ahead. Right. I'm, I'm interested. I'm all ears, and right. so is every other woman out there. Let's call this how to be a good wife. Well, let's not call it how to be a good wife. What would be a good wife to you? Okay. <laughs> First thing, have a dinner ready. Oh. Right, Plan right, ahead. No. <laughs> Plan ahead. Plan ahead for what? Plan ahead, even the night before, to have a delicious meal on time. You don't. You don't have to be last minute. Was I yelling at my? You know what? I yelled at my wife a good half hour after you left. I said Gary and Ratso were over, and there was no appropriate lunches for me to serve these guys. Man, I guarantee you, you come over next weekend, there'll be lunch. I, I would deal. Understand how Plan. Allison deals with you at all. Because she's got it made. Every ten minutes All in she has house. to do is pick up the phone and say, "Excuse me, Mr. Butcher, can you send over a few cold cuts for my?" Yes, what are you, her daddy? No. <laughs> I'm a guy who works his balls off so yes, she can so be what happy. What are you yelling and snapping for? Otherwise, you end up like Baba Booey. <laughs> I want food. I want the things I like. Oh boy. You got to order the food too. Go on. What else is on the Prepare list? Prepare yourself. For what? Number two, take 15 minutes to rest so that you'll be refreshed when he arrives. <laughs> Touch up your makeup. Oh, yeah. what? Put a ribbon in your hair. Be fresh looking. That's great. <laughs> your man has been with a lot of work-weary people. Be a little bit gay, a little more interesting. His boring day may need a lift. Oh, gee. <laughs> really bad. Number three, clear away the clutter. Oh, tidy up the house? Make one last trip through the main part of the house just before your husband arrives. Gathering up school books, toys, paper, etc. I can see it now. Come on, kids. Daddy's about to come home. Let's pick up our toys. Run a dust cloth over the tables. <laughs> now you're getting crazy. <laughs> you know what? And your husband will feel like he's reached a haven of rest and order. And it'll give you a lift, too. And let me tell you something. My mother did all this stuff for my father. Remember, girls, it's all for him. Right. Prepare the children. What are they supposed to do? Take a few minutes to wash the children's hands and faces. If they're small, comb their hair. And if necessary, change their clothes. They're, they're little treasures, and Daddy would like to see them playing the part of little treasures. <laughs> and see that things are in control. Don't I kid yourself. You. you come home and see your kids a mess. Is this what you have at home? Yeah. 
I, no, I don't have it, but I'm working toward it. Well, after 20 years of marriage, you're finally going to get her in shape. Minimize all noise. <laughs> Minimize noise? Minimize all noise. Kids can be trained. At the time of your husband's arrival, eliminate eliminate all noise. Throw them out of the house if they're running. No, 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 no. They're not actually about kids. Eliminate the noise of the washer, the dryer, the dishwasher, the vacuum. Oh, in other words, none of that stuff should be still being done. Yeah, get, when you right. Get print, get Try to encourage the children to be quiet. Be happy to see your man. Greet him with a warm smile and be glad to see him. You want to keep your marriage together. This is what you do. Baba Booey would run home. Be happy so and here's some don'ts. For Baba Booey to do, he'd be happy to come home. Ba, 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 here's ba. some don'ts. <laughs> Don't greet him with problems or complaints. Don't complain if he's late for dinner. Count this as minor compared with what he might have gone through that day. Make him comfortable. Have him lean back in a comfortable chair. Where did just you read this? I'm not reading this. I'm, you, you told me you, to make a list. You got this out of a book. No, are you no, not? I tell you, you didn't make Have this Have a cool, up. warm drink ready for oh, your husband. That's going to work. You've got to say for Arrange your man's pillow. <laughs> Offer to take off his shoes. Oh, this... Would you run home? I know exactly where this came from, you plagiarizer. Where is it from? It's from the Happy Homemaker. That's right. <laughs> What's the difference where it came from? It makes I sense. I knew you didn't write this. It's from the 1950s high school home uh, economics workbook. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Keep going. All right. Speak in a low, soft, soothing, and pleasant voice. <laughs> Allow him to relax and unwind. Man, I'd run home. Right. I, I would, I, I'm thinking about getting married now. And yeah, listen to your man. You may have a dozen things to tell him, but the moment of his arrival is not the time. Let him talk first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and now bark and roll over. Oh. <laughs> Make the evening his. <laughs> yes. Never complain if he does not take you out to dinner or to other places of entertainment. <laughs> Instead, try to understand his world of strain and pressure. When he hits you, take your punch. Sometimes your man needs to be home and relax. <laughs> All right, well, maybe that one's a little off. <laughs> try to make your home a place of peace and order where your husband can renew himself in body and spirit. Who cares if he comes home? Well, yeah, 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 I notice you're not married. <laughs> but anyway, seriously, Baba Booey, you're in bad shape, pal. If you get married... When there's blood dripping out of your nose, you're in yeah, bad shape. And, and you've only been married how long now? 53 years in July. <laughs> yeah, but I know what Baba Booey's problem is. Seriously, like they got married and real quick they decided to have a kid. Tried to delay that. Yeah, but Wait, Baba Booey didn't anybody. want to be an old man when Baby Jackson Buffalo plays Buffalo. baseball. That's right. But now, what now his life is... But now his life is, hey, get up early at 6 in the morning. Don't go out because you got to watch Baby Jackson. I'm not going to do this alone. You've got to help me. And he's miserable. I know my house is going to be. What? I'm going to say, hey, Baby Jackson, I'm still a young dad. Let's uh, throw the ball around. I'm, gonna, I'm not interested. Yeah. <laughs> we'll It'll be fun. gay or something. You know? Yeah, you never uh, want to play right. <laughs> yeah. He'll be addicted to drugs. He'll be like, I want to hang out with Mom and wear her dress. Well, I've got some news for you guys. Hey, you little bastard. I worked my ass up, and I'm waiting to play ball with you. Did you think that your parents <laughs> considered you attractive children? No. You, Gary? Uh, yeah, you know, I guess they're, you know, biased. Mine didn't. You sure? You sure they thought you were attractive? Well, well you mean, do they tell me I'm attractive, or would they say different in When you were Paul? a baby, did they find you attractive? Well, they didn't send any pictures What's of your any, point, any contest. There's an article in the paper today that says parents, especially moms, respond to their children differently depending on whether they're pretty or not. Yeah, well, Gary was no doll. <laughs> but here's the point about There's it. There's a whole study, though, that wow. says that it affects your life because your mom treats you in a different way. She doesn't give you as much attention. Wow. And if you're ugly, she <laughs> considers being with you a burden. Wow. <laughs> and everything you do is considered, you know, some kind of a problem as opposed to, oh, isn't that cute? Look at how smart he is. It's like, wow, that's incredible. Who are you staring at before? I don't know. I, I was working. I was working you into a fit. <laughs> but I'll tell you something. Believe me, Gary, you were a hairy baby. Your mother, <laughs> your mother didn't, didn't find you a pleasant child. But let me tell you something. You're on your road to ruin. I see it, man. And it's, I know. I know what you're going through. I empathize, I empathize with what you're going through. Very happy. I really. Okay, I know. I know. And your I nose saw is it. bleeding. Your nose is full of blood. <laughs> so anyway, Einziger has this wedding, and of course, Gary had to get up at 6 in the morning to feed the baby Jackson. This is before the wedding. I thought this was Sunday morning after. This was Sunday, Sunday morning, morning after. Oh. Did you, uh... I got it at 2.30. Yeah, so you had four hours sleep. And what happened? Baby Jackson, of course, didn't want to go back to sleep. 
Right, so then my wife got up and I went back to sleep. For At 10 o'clock. Half, exactly. Yeah, so you stayed up and probably had a headache and had to sit there with the kid. And what did you do while the kid was up for three hours? Well, you know what's really funny? Remember how, like, you you were saying the other day that your father never did this? Yeah. And Tom was saying, you not. know, how his, his mom raised eight kids? Yeah. So I got up at like, you know, I got up early, and I'm running around, I'm feeding the baby, and my father-in-law is sitting there reading the paper, yeah. and I know he's looking at me like I'm like some sort of a person. <laughs> yeah, you're like an idiot. <laughs> your father-in-law never did. He's reading the paper, and I, I, he's almost like, you know, I, I thought he was going to turn out to me and say, why don't you go wake up your wife? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, what's your problem? I so, uh, believe that the guy gets I mean, the your wife gets to sleep every day. late every day or sleep whenever baby Jackson gets up. She gets up at 6 o'clock. No, she yeah. gets up at 6 o'clock every morning. But she can go back to sleep. Yeah, yeah when, he goes, when, he, when he takes a nap. Sometimes he doesn't go back to sleep. But when he takes a nap, that's time to do the housework. Because you can't do housework, you know. I don't know. That's what, Why she, he, that's what she says. I don't know. I don't know. i got to put a video camera yeah. around the house. Yeah. Just to check her work. You know what I would do if I was you? I'd get a hotel room every day and just cop some sleep after you're done here and then go home. That's what I would do. You didn't do it, though. You you really didn't get this when you went home. No, I and did. Allison first oh. had the first child. I sure did. a lot of help. And you know what I did? I hired help. <laughs> I said, you better get help or it's the end of our marriage. I'm not going through this. I said, I'm not going to work my ass off. And you know what it was? We just fight. I wouldn't do anything. I would just sit there and yell at her. Oh, so it'd just be a big fight. Because she would yell at me. She'd be whining. I'm tired, the baby. And I said, you know what? You wanted to have a baby. Leave me alone. <laughs> You're the, this is what you want to do housework. I don't want to do it. And she'd be like, can't you go shopping? I go, no, I'm too famous. Uh -huh. I can't be seen in a supermarket. Go shopping. Well, you watch the baby. I go, I'm not watching the baby. i got to get ready for my next day show. i got a full-time job. I don't know what you were thinking. I told you, I have to have help on Sundays. I know. I have to have help 24 hours a day with Allison. Allison can't handle it. She's incapable of handling three children. She just didn't know it. Your wife's totally incapable. I see what's going on. She's depending on you too much. And what, she's being stubborn. She don't want help. She don't want to have to see a stranger no, in her house. We're, we're getting help. You better get a stranger in the house. Yeah, they will be a stranger after a certain amount of time. You come to love strangers. After, you know what? After there, isn't a like place, a there isn't a place I walk in my house <laughs> where I don't have someone observing me. And you know what? At first it used to bother me. Like, you know, oh, gee, I want to eat. Now I'm like, hey, how you doing? You know, I, I thought about that the other day. There's people all over your house. There isn't a room that I go into that there isn't people. And you know what? Thank God. There. Because I would have taken, I would have done an OJ on Allison years ago. <laughs> <laughs> because she can't handle anything. And look out. She used to be like, I can't go shopping. I got, you watch the baby. I need some rest. I want to exercise. You're going to go out and exercise? I want to exercise. I was like, you want to exercise? Not my problem. We got a problem. It's not my problem. <laughs> I need, you know, I told you I don't want to be involved but I don't in child think care. That, I don't think that you can tell Gary this all you want. Yeah. I don't think that he's ever going to go home and say anything. Uh, hey, I'm helping him. That's all I'm doing. I, I as a friend, am trying to help him. You're just I making him more aware of how bad his problems are and that he's never going to do anything well, about it. Well, maybe it'll help him with his headaches and stuff because at least he'll know to blame, he'll know what to blame things on and stop masking it. He'll know he's unhappy uh -huh. and why, uh -huh. and maybe his headaches will disappear. Anything mm -hmm. to help the guy. The guy's blood, he has blood dripping out of his nose and he don't even know it. Yeah, but it's, it already sounds like, you know, Mary doesn't even have to Who yell. Is? She just no. says, you're doing this and he does it. He's hopped too. <laughs> I am. I am hopped too. You're Gunga Din. I'm hopped too. Hey, Gunga Din, go put the baby in the car. <laughs> And you, you should have been like me. You, car seat? I used to go, my wife. I put the baby in the car seat, and she'd say, you have to buckle it in. And I'd say, how do you do that? And I just couldn't do it. Uh, uh, uh. And i go, uh, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> that is the absolute truth, because I saw him pull that move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah how many times did he get away with it? Till they, hey. He it will up. never he learn. He just, he, every time he had to do mm. it, he just couldn't get it buckled. Yep. Throw the kid in the car. And yeah, and then I said, she'd go, well, the, if we short stop, the kid will go flying forward. you got to buckle him in. I go, well, I don't know. Well, then you do it. Yeah, I go, then you do it if you don't like the way I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fine. I think the kid's fine. I can't do it that fast. Don't <laughs> get all just... concerned. I'm telling you, I pulled every stick. <laughs> What was it? We were over the house. I, I, I pulled the move. You said, yeah, I, I, that was a pretty good move. I did something real good. I thought it was when you yelled at Allison at the pool. No, no, I did better stuff than that. Gary's got to stay with you and learn. You, you need to take him into your home for a while. Yeah, you, you need help. He needs an apprenticeship. i, I got to call my wife now and tell her I need to be at your house for a week. <laughs> yeah, just I'll give you a lesson. I need to just observe. <laughs> we're doing work. Yeah. Talk about avoidance. Because you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna get work, then you're going to get back pain and you're going to get everything else. You know what you did, Gary? You went home and you did too good a job. You can change baby Jackson's mm, diaper. Right. You can change his clothes. Never you do can it do once. all this. I changed the Duke diaper maybe three times. Period.
That was the end of it. And then you do it so bad that the baby really gets messed up. You know, you know what you do? You wipe real hard. The kid gets a rash. They'll never let you touch the kid again. <laughs> Super hard. Get hemorrhoids. Do a two-year-old with a hemorrhoid. Or you turn the clothing around like this. Like you don't know right. how to get a minute. Yeah. And oh, they just here, grab it from you and take it over. Yeah. yeah. you got to mellow out. You're being too good a father. You, you don't know. need to be there for the kid like that. Yeah. You're a little too much there. Jackson won't appreciate it. I'm sorry, what? Ralph needs to be quiet. Yeah, right. Yeah, be quiet, man. <laughs> nothing worse than a single guy sitting in the room. I don't, mind getting, I don't mind getting it in stereo, but I'm getting it in quad. Yeah. <laughs> be like Ralph's dad. Leave. Leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, like, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? I love my kids and everything else, but you, there's got to be, otherwise you're going to lose your sanity. I know what it is. Well, you want to, you know, I was telling Gary, hey, I went for a bike ride on Sunday, and I went Saturday. She was like, oh, and he's my God. Jealous. And he's jealous. And I love that he's jealous of me. I do have to say, I mean, I was, I was at Howard's house from noon to 6.45 yesterday, and I believe the total amount of time of interaction with his children was under three minutes. Right. <laughs> well, I don't think that's anything to emulate. But. <laughs> Gary was jealous. <laughs> I got it worked out. You could work it into ten. Yeah, and it was enough. The kids know I love them. You, you, you. I, when I see those three minutes, man, I make that quality time. <laughs> I, I kiss them, I love them. Those are Kodak moments. Yeah, those three minutes. They're beautiful moments. How much do they want to see you anyway? They don't. They're busy. They, you got to teach your kids to be independent. That you, you coddle that baby Jackson. No wonder they used to take me over when I'd come. There was somebody to pay attention to. Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, you know. Don't worry about anything, man. You just got to mellow out with that. I'm Get your worried. wife under control. Ooh, I'm not worried. No, because you're really unhappy. Because it's like I know he wants. You know, in the worst way, he wants to go bike riding. Yeah. He wants to do certain yeah. things. His wife won't let him because she says, "Hey, when am I going to go bike no, riding?" I'm going you bike know riding. what he's going to do? What's father's day? My wife he used to do that to me. To get one of those seats now that they yeah. have for the kids. You can put yeah. on the bike. Yeah. And Gary will be that father <laughs> with the baby well, on the. I'm bike. actually trying to get one of those. Uh, what do they call them? Those joggers. Yeah. You know, right. I could take the kid and jog with him. Oh man. He's going to be one of those. A baby jogger. Oh, God. <laughs> Gary, you, 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 that's a mistake. Boy, you think I'd look like a homo jogger with the baby? It's not even question that. Once you do that, then your wife's always going to expect it. <laughs> I'm being serious right. with that. You see those fathers with those three-wheel <laughs> things running? That. Yeah. Then they have the special seats and the little baby sitting there with a helmet on. Yeah, great. Like... Dude, that's a real manly ride. <laughs> you should lose lots of weight doing that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, a coolie? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you want me to ride you over? <laughs> I got my kid in a rickshaw. Yeah. Build railroad. <laughs> now, you got to work out that whole thing, man. I don't have any more kids. You've had enough. I don't know if you can handle it. Yeah, your wife can. I've seen, I saw for myself. I sized her up in three seconds. She's another princess. Trust me. She does a great job. With I got a princess, too. Do, do you have dinner waiting for you when you get home? Hell no. No, my wife cooks every night. I, oh, I, don't know, I don't know that's waiting for me, but... But you do get a nice hot meal every day. Oh, yeah, definitely. No, you deserve it. a real good cook. You deserve it. You watch Jackson while she cooks? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, great. That's a, that's a fun day. Hey, hey. Uh, parenting is a two-person Look, job. the nose is starting to bleed. <laughs> two-person job. It is. No, it's not bleeding. It's running. See, something, he, said, he was sitting there while I was talking. Every minute he was like... <laughs> <laughs> can't even breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have an embolism. <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> you can stay in the hospital and get away. So anyway, Einziger has his wedding. Oh, i got to take a break. <laughs> I am not got to hear about this wedding I, yet. i got to go blow my nose. You do. You, it's, there's blood coming out, isn't there? <laughs> blah, blah, so blah. how did Mary and the baby get to your house? <laughs> she picked up Gary in the car. Oh, okay. She had the car. He said he dropped off Gary. I see. And, um... Gonna be picked up like a little kid. Yeah, it's just, you should have seen how pussy whip he is now. And this is the guy who had it made, and he knows it, and that's why he's getting all these headaches and stuff. It's and he knows it. The baby. And it's bad that I'm pointing it out. Maybe, maybe I should just shut my mouth because he's really going over the edge. No, this is good because if I ever get any thoughts of you're, you're streaking yeah. out Ralph. Yeah. Huh? All right. But I remember he used to be. You know, he had that whole situation under control. He thought Mary was so different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> him right in. And he got mad at me once. Cause I'm talking about do. privately. I yeah. pulled him aside and I said, "You gotta understand what's gonna happen. She, 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 you know, she's gonna crack from the pressure too." He was like, "You don't understand, man. I love her." And I was like, "Yeah, okay, all right." <laughs> bop, 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 bop. I love her. She's great. And... But he was always telling me how cool she was. Yeah. And that's what made it so great. Yeah. 
because she put no pressure on. <laughs> he had the same life. There yeah. were no orders. Nothing yeah. had changed. He was the same Gary with Mary as before Mary. It's a slow process. It's almost like cancer. It comes on slow. And you don't even realize And you don't know it. And then when you're in the middle of it. <laughs> but when it gets a hold of your stomach, it eats it up real quick. Yeah. <laughs> He's on three different medications. <laughs> what is it called? What is that stuff called again? Ampicillin? No, Amoxicillin. You have... Uh, amp, uh, amoxicillin is for the ear the earache. I've got n uh, neprofen. No, what's it called? Naproxen. Naproxen. Don't you think maybe your wife on a Sunday could have let you sleep because you've got you're on all these medications and maybe we would help you get better? Yeah. Did you tell her you had gone to the doctor? Oh yeah. Yeah. Does she realize that like that's you need rest? She thinks it's normal that you should be taking all these pills. I don't know. No, you know. Go for it, dude. You're you're in great shape. <laughs> Get a note from your doctor and give it to Mary. Maybe she'll maybe she'll yeah, Maybe up. he can schedule you some nap time. Yeah. <laughs> you guys make it sound a lot worse than it is. You got to do what I did when I, I used to have bad backs, and I, every minute I'd be whining about it. I'd be like, Oh, I can't. Oh, please, Alice. Oh. I mean, the truth of the matter. And is, you know what I used to do? I used to go in my room and have to lock the door and lay down on the floor and like rest my back and my head. And that way I got to watch TV un un uninterrupted. That's what I was going to say. That's when he was watching no, the, television. The truth yeah. of the matter is you don't evoke enough sympathy. For the, for the last two weeks, I mean, I haven't done anything around the house because I've been just getting into bed with these headaches. Yeah, good. And then I shook him. I'm back to work. Yeah. But I didn't shake him. She didn't help me out while I was shaking him. On three different medications with blood running yeah, out of his Yeah, he hasn't shaken anything. He's medicated. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right, anyway, let me come back. I'll take some phone calls, and also I'll uh, tell you about this Einziger wedding. Okay. And that kid's coming in, too, right? Richie from the Mary Tyler Moore Show? That's right. The little kid. Little Richie yeah. from Dick Van Dyke? Yeah, he's going to come in and say hi to us. Wow. We're going to take a look at him, see what he looks like now. See if he grew up cute. Mm. We'll be back right after these words. We'll be back with the Howard Stern Show. Don't go away. 971 The Eagle. 817 at The Eagle. This is Brad Bax. It's 822 at 971 The Eagle. Howard Stern in all morning. You'll rock all day. Yeah. 971 The Eagle. The Howard Stern Show. He's Howard. Who does this? Uh, this is uh, White Zombie. They're good. I didn't used to like them, but I've been listening to them lately. They're pretty good. Their new stuff's good, too. Yeah, they're good. White Zombie. That guy's name is Rick Zombie or something? Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie. Yeah. <laughs> Rob Zombie. He's Wears a big white hat. You can't see his face. Did he change his name or was he born zombie? I believe. I believe he took on that stage name. <laughs> you think? Rob Zombie? I don't know. <laughs> I think his parents said, "Hey, let's name him Zombie." Cool. Because he'll be a cool rock star when he grows up. <laughs> he could be a white zombie. Anyway, uh, it's sort of like a chip's enough. Mm. I think he changed his name, too, <laughs> for Enough's Enough. Chip's Enough. <laughs> now, they're not doing so good, but he's still got the name. So, anyway, Scott Einziger had that obnoxious wedding. That I, I love Einziger, and I think he's a great guy and everything, but his wife got carried away. And they made everyone wear tuxedos, which costs a fortune and is inconvenient for the guests. You know, yeah, I believe in Ganges tux, and I'm thinking. <laughs> want me to tell you about that? No reason, there's no reason for him to be. Want to hear a funny story about that? Plus. Okay, it was so bad. Ganges had to go buy a tux. He doesn't even know this. He had to go rent a tux rather for Einziger's wedding. Yeah. Ganges is fat intern that we have. So, who thinks he's good looking? But he, obviously, he's not because no girls go after him. Aren't you shocked? He can't get a girl. He, he, I am really shocked. You know, I was just thinking. I used to get girls off the show, with, really, with no tools. We weren't even on TV. And you know what? He's a better looking guy. But we, weren't on, we weren't even on TV yet. You yeah. know what I mean? I just, I mean, now Ganji's been on television. He's been on the E! Show. He's been on some of our live shows. I you mean, know what, Gary? But we and you're so be, much more popular now. We I have know. to be honest. Gary exercised no quality control. He was strictly a volume man. <laughs> yeah. And Ganji somehow seems to get stopped. Because the first girl who comes up to him isn't a raving beauty. Right, well, yeah. you, got, you got to wade through a lot of. Yeah, but he can't even get the. He, he can't even get the pigs. He doesn't have a rap. He's had girls come up here and he's taken them to lunch on you, and he still won't close the deal because that's not a girl who's good enough. He for had him. he had this one girl. She was real cute. She came up here. I don't know if you remember her. Yeah. And uh, he went to a house one weekend, and he said he was all bummed out because. He thought the only reason she was interested in, in him was because of the show. I'm like, big deal! Yeah, and, and he says that he meets these girls, and then they become friends. When it turns out we've interviewed the girls, uh -huh. you know, this is off the air, 
girls say, hey, I was kind of interested in him. He's kind of cute. But, you know, he became such a good friend. He didn't make a move. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't want them. He feels right. that he... No, is. he wants them. You think so? He told me he does. Oh, really? Well, because he I keep getting this make impression. He thinks that no. spelling should be his. No, no, no. He's given that up. He can't get a girl. He has no rap. He has no rap, and he just... Doesn't make him. Doesn't make the move. Right. He hangs out and talks. So, Ganji, you want to hear everyone goofed on you at yeah, the? Uh, I, I, have like, you heard about this? I, no, I haven't actually. Okay. Uh, so, Ganji has to go get a tuxedo, and he put it off to the last minute, of uh -huh. course. So he went. He was with two people. Who was he with? Uh, Rich, who works on our computer, and Michelle, who's one of our interns. Yeah, Rich and Michelle are with him. All right. All right. So they go into the tuxedo store, and you know everything is just black and elegant and all this kind of stuff. And there's one tuxedo in the corner that has black. And it has this big white, you know, I, I, it was an odd-looking tuxedo. And as Gary had said to, um, what did you tell uh, Ganji when you saw him at the wedding? I said, I know you're Italian, but do you have to broadcast it to everyone? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it looked like it looked like Bozo the Clown. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, they go into the tuxedo store, <clears throat> and as a goof, Rich says to Ganji, "Hey, Ganji, look at this tuxedo. It's beautiful." Are you kidding? And Ganji goes, "You really like it?" And then that girl. M Michelle yeah. said, started to say, Ganji, you can't wear it. And then Rich kicked her. <laughs> and said, oh, and she, she, she oh, and she goes, yeah, it's really nice. Oh, and Ganji put it on and took it. So wrong. Yeah, that it's so is wrong. That's right, because the first thing I noticed in those pictures <laughs> that is wrong. Rich, was dead Gar right. that Ganji had on the worst tuxedo in the place. Well, yeah, he bought it from Bozo the Clown. <laughs> but wait, so but the lapels right. were white, his shirt was white, and his tie was white, so it was just this big schmear of white on right, the front yeah, of him. Right, yeah, he like was a huge. Yeah. Oh, what am I going to say? <laughs> so yeah, I look like an idiot. I you didn't know you looked like an idiot? You hate Rich. Everybody looked good. I'm going to kick him when I get out of here. Yeah, so it was like a big goof. Oh. When you walked in, you thought Ganji had a special function at the wedding or something. Because he, like, he, look, he looked so odd. Yeah, he was the only one who yeah, didn't look, look good. Yeah, right. The official something. You know how they say any man can look good in a tuxedo? Not Ganji. Look Even Gorilla looked I, good. I, I, you know, I you didn't meet any girls at the wedding? Nah. Not in that. Nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the whole thing is, it was a black tie event, and Ganji wore a white tie. Right. And, that, you know, that doesn't he, matter. I mean, you know, he asked, no, you know, a Richard, and she goes, yeah, the white tie looks great. Meanwhile, it looks like crap. Yeah, yeah. So no, just because the black tie event doesn't mean you have to wear a black tie. That's, right. That's, you know, well, that's John's rationale. Well, whatever rationale no, I, there was, you I, had I, none. I, I know. I was just trying you to be different. ridiculous. I, I, maybe I did. Uh, yeah, one thing to look different. I was trying to look different, I guess, you know. Look yeah, at the, those pictures, Ganji. I did. I'm so Ganji, why do you want to look different? You're a guy who shouldn't try to look different. I, you should have blended. I in. didn't. Uh, I, yeah. I didn't want With the wall. I didn't want you to the black tuxedo. I wanted something different. I, I was trying to be different. You, you know, did it. Well, you got it. <laughs> I did, right? It worked. We all noticed you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, see, look, everybody noticed me. I went not inside and said way. everybody noticed. The only way you would look more Italian is if you had red sauce all over. <laughs> Oh, yeah, those big ruffles. Oh, yeah, the pictures must have been taken before the meal. <laughs> so he, so Einziger has this stupid wedding late at night. It's just unbelievable. It's so late. You know, Richard told you to put flowers in your head. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I don't think I would have gone that far. That was I, a good deal. I can't believe Richard of all people would screw with me. Well, I, uh, why not? You're there. Mm. <laughs> Do I look good or bad? So evidently, uh, what, what it was is dinner didn't go off till 1 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, old people can't handle that. And young people with kids can't Were handle it. Were people fainting? It, I mean, but I don't know. Yeah, Everyone yeah. had, like, I've heard of women. I've only seen this one other time. My cousin did it. She had a midnight wedding. And it's just like, you know, people are passing out and they can't wait to get out the door. And it's kind of sad. It's like... Instead of enjoying you, yeah. they're ready to run. Well, the whole time you're looking at your watch, weren't you one of the first people out of there? Yeah, we we left right after dessert was served. And when you tell me you were leaving and then you saw I Ed, the director. We, Ed, our old director from the E-Show, I said goodbye to him. Uh-huh. And then by the time I got out to my car, he was he already, was this was already pulling up. He said, hey, he's got the right idea. But then Jackie, I think, like, I got up and then said goodbye to everyone. And everyone said, well, we're all going with you. What time did you go, Jackie? Uh... Was it 2 o'clock? I'm not sure. It's 2 I mean, Jackie's the kind of guy who would hang out till the end of any That's affair. Right. And 2 o'clock is late for a wedding. It should have been a real good time and everybody was partying. Right. That it's not only that, because... When you eat that late, that makes you sluggish. You know, yeah. instead of eating and then wearing it off and getting the party going, like you're, you're too tired to enjoy anything. You dance a little, but ugh. yeah, it makes for a bad party. People don't understand it. You gotta dance that crazy horror at two a.m. I yeah, I heard they had uh, Uber horror. 
<laughs> they had the um, they had an endless horror dance. <laughs> a horror thought. It went on for like a half an hour. Yeah. Hey, that was fun. And every single that one of Einziger's relatives got to get in the chair. Oh, you know, be carried around. All I know is that uh, when Einziger was walking down the aisle, because his wife, his future wife, is always nagging him and beeping him every minute on his beeper. Yeah. Everybody set off beepers, <laughs> ah, which was kind of funny. But then Ralph, of course, you know, you don't. Everyone came up to me and said everyone hates Ralph, and now I know why. What did Ralph do? Because now? Ralph, yeah. Billy's theory is that Ralph wants to be a performer and never got to be a performer, so like he tries to make himself like a funny guy at these affairs and sort of like the the uh, you know the man who's talked about and. He has to make a scene. Yeah, that's the theory going on in you. I never realized that. I don't know. It. I had I had fun. You know, you you, yeah, you had fun, you but everyone thought you were an a hole. Well, okay. Yeah. Your fun is to stick out. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Your fun is to stick out. <laughs> yes. I enjoyed my time. And Ralph, Ralph, then what, what, the what, beeper what? thing was funny, right? And everyone laughed. And all of a sudden, like this this uh, girl who was making, who was one of the, they had two best men and two best ladies or maids of honor whatever so one of the maids of honor was giving a really passionate speech about her friend debbie mm -hmm. and how she was destined for scott and blah 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 blah, blah. so stupid ass ralph <laughs> finds a pa system <laughs> no. gets a hold of a beeper and starts beeping over the pa system while she's trying to talk oh and like it was the kind of thing where people were like hey it was funny once oh yeah how come you were in the room laughing that because you're a retard <laughs> <laughs> oh, then Ralph decided he had to, you know when they go around and take group pictures at every table? Yeah. Ralph snuck into every picture, so he's in every, he ruined their photo album. No, no, wait a minute. It wasn't every picture. and Single-handedly wrecked a $20,000 <laughs> wedding. That's why you don't invite Ralph. That's and why. And then he's throwing food, food at everybody. And then no, I was Ralph has a thing up, about people, yeah, I heard about it. Uh, yes, you what, what, what happened? Yeah. Ralph has a it's thing where everybody. people who are like in a subservient role, like a waiter or a waitress, he, he looks down on. Badly, he yeah. treats badly, what? which is really obnoxious because he's I in the service. Not. He's I in the service not. industry. That's not true. I heard that you were throwing things at the waiters. I was not. Who sold you? And that? I also even heard Why? at Robin's book party, there was some Puerto Rican uh, woman sweeping up, and you kept throwing papers down on the floor for her to sweep up. Is that Are true? You kidding? Tell the truth. Is that the truth? Is that the truth? No. Oh, no it must oh. be. It must be. Oh. No, no, wait a minute. That was funny. No, <laughs> I'm funny. sure she's laughing. <laughs> no, funny. Yeah. So funny. Goofing on the maid. I wasn't. He, he did, did it right in front of me. He yeah. said, Grillo, watch this. He goes, he comes with your paper. He goes, he goes, hey, hey, you missed something. No. You missed something. No, I didn't yes, do you that. Did. No, yes, you did. No, what I did is I threw the paper on the floor. You go, watch, you'll notice it. And like, then she turned around. And there's another piece of paper. I didn't say. I didn't say pick up the paper. He's like, what? Hey, hey, hey. I did not. You pointed it out to her. Yes, you did. did. Oh my did God. Not. Yes, you did. Liar. Yeah. Okay. He did. Not. did. And and Ralph, you know, Ralph thinks he's funny. And what he does is these pe these poor, hardworking people, like the waiters and stuff, he starts throwing food at them. These are not the people who goof. Who said I threw food at a Somebody waiter? Somebody told me. Hey, you, know, how, you know, he gets on us for acting differently in front of you, but if you were there, he wouldn't have been throwing stuff and being no, goofy. No, You know, but it's only when you're not there. Well, he wants to be a big star. That's not true. Because when I'm there, all he does is hang around me and try to look like and a star. Yeah, you would have just hung around Howard, been real cool and collective, and just yeah. chatted with Gary, correct? That's but, true. But I instead, you were running around throwing stuff. Wait, wait. And every every group picture, I'm like, man, these people are going to hate their oh, photo album. Oh, 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 liar. You're the one. You egged me on to do it, and so did Robin. I didn't, I didn't Robin egg you on at all. I was laughing. I didn't egg you on at all. Robin from the East Show was laughing that you did it. Yeah, that but she talked you into it that you were silly enough to do it. Yeah, well, so would she, would she you, ruined, laugh photo, you ruined Scott Einziger's photo album. In fact, Ganji is the one who talked Ralph into doing the beeper thing during the speech, and then Ganji no, came over to me, and we laughed that Ralph did it and made a fool of himself. I, I, I think when I'm not there, he thinks he's me. Yeah, uh, oh, that's a and then when And when I'm there, he just hangs around me, hoping that he'll look cool next to me, and then the girls will notice. I have tried to impress upon Ralph that he is not funny. Many, many times. You know, I tried to and tell it's Ralph. it's hard to get him, get that through to him. I said to Ralph, you know, these people can never regain this moment. Their wedding and like these pictures. It's a once in a lifetime thing. And Ralph, and Ralph is in every picture. Well, maybe that wasn't such a good idea, but. No. I mean, you just wrecked the guys. At the time, I thought it was funny. And if people are laughing, but I'm like. What? Okay. They didn't hire you to entertain. Yeah, Ralph's going to entertain for the night. <laughs> Come on, that's funny. Jackie tried to get some things going, too. He, um. Look. Well, Jackie you know saw what? the yarmulkes uh, at the okay. at the uh, wedding, you know, because yeah. they were Jews. Yeah. And Jackie acts like he's never heard of yarmulke. Never, never. Didn't the first know time this was going to be a thing. In the yeah. world. And he was like, he, so he's running around everyone. He goes, hey, 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 I got an idea. Let's take these things. You know, you don't even know what they're called. Yeah. Let's take these stupid Jews. <laughs> 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 I knew he, you know, he 
Frank, then he starts to get anti-Semitic. Yeah, right, and he goes... Let's <laughs> his house. We'll all wear him on the show. We'll all wear him on the show. He's a goof. Sure, we're, we're going to steal all the yarmulkes from the temple. <laughs> you know, right away, he's defacing Jew. You know, he's... he's, 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 he's we're going to steal so someone, the temple. So <laughs> someone, comes up, someone comes up to him and says, Jackie... Look inside the yarmulke. It says, The Wedding of Deborah and Scott Einziger, May 20th, 1945, Temple Beth Shalom. Mm -hmm. it's, it's considered a souvenir. A favor, you yes. take it with you. And Jackie goes, oh. Ruined his fun. Oh. oh, we can't steal the yarmulkes. That's no fun. No. Let's do it on the Torah. Let's do it on the Torah. Hey, why don't we put swastikas on the Torah? You know, he made a sailor hat out of the yarmulke in the temple. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. He, <laughs> Jackie, Jackie's like, you know, anything different, he's like, oh, what's this? I don't understand. So evidently, it was like one big mess. Oh, poor <laughs> Jack. He was so nice. Jackie did one thing at the wedding that was very funny, but he didn't mean to do it. They were in the middle of giving their speech, and Jackie accidentally passed wind. Yeah. But it wasn't on purpose. No, no. Let's see. Everybody thought that, including my wife. It, it was so funny. They were making these p impassioned speeches that was unbelievable. Who was? Was Scott Einziger making one? No, but, the, you know, the girl talking to the girl, whatever. And you know those really silly farts that Billy cuts? Yeah. Doing? He did the, the quietest one that I've ever heard him do that you could barely hear, and we lost it. We all lost it. And I realized on you? the reason that, that everybody was losing so bad, I just thought it was funny, but they all thought it was real. It was me, including Nancy. I just thought it was funny because it's so subtle. Really, you blew a fart in the middle? Yeah. Uh, how'd you do it? Let's hear it. <laughs> so we're sitting there waiting the entire time for them to keep doing it, you know. Yeah, right. See, they were wasting what? all their content on us. We were just sitting there this trying to have you don't have these right. beef balls that you yeah, have. I know. It's obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I'd been a part of that. <laughs> we would die. David tried to speak, you know, like in the back. They had this one table that we were at that was like way in the corner in the back, almost in a different room. Yeah, they tried to stick you on that one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what was weird yesterday? So Gary was over at my house and he was exhausted because, of course, he got no sleep and he had to get wake up and get the baby. Right. So we're watching the Nick game and it's coming down to like the last two minutes of the game, which is real exciting. Mm-hmm. But Gary's wife is coming to pick him up with the baby, and Gary's a mess because he's like Howard. You know, someone's gonna let my wife in. We gotta make sure we hear my wife. We gotta make sure we hear my wife. I go, Gary, don't worry, I got under control. Now, how to get your wife in? Don't worry, it's gonna be fine. Then I start working. I go, wait a second, we're in the last two minutes. His wife shows up. Who? I have to go upstairs yeah, and let her in. The on the the game. I said, Gary, hey, if your wife comes, who's gonna let her in the door? Oh, I will. Oh. I said, but wait a second. You go up there and let her in the door, and then you come running back down here again. You're never gonna get to see the end of the game. Uh huh. So let's hope my wife, I'll, you know, I'll get my wife to open the door. Maybe they'll BS for a couple of minutes about the baby. And you'll get to see the end? Yeah, because once you go up, see, this is how you... That was the move that you pulled that I thought was cool. And yeah, then Gary went, you know, you're so right. I if I right go up there, I'll, I'll never be able to run downstairs and see the end of the game because then she'll yell at me. I said, that's how you got, you got to tune yourself to your, you know, you're in a war. You got a pre-plan. For your sanity. <laughs> He was so happy. Saw the end of the game. You were like a human being yesterday. Oh, so I was happy to lift your spirit. He was a guy. Yeah. He was among guys, and he was a guy.